If you're a sewing street or yarn lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Welcome to Sewing Street. Oh, I like that new video. I haven't seen that one before. Very swanky. Um, anyway, what a beautiful morning. If anyone was up early enough like I was to see the sunrise, it was amazing. Tomorrow is the longest day. I think that's the best day of the year. We're kind of building up to the longest day because everything's lovely and sunny and light. And then it all goes downhill after that. So very lovely morning. Anyway, we have got a fantastic show for you today. Um, just so much going on. We've got three guests. Three guests. Um, We've got amazing yarn lane. Can you see the knitted items behind me? We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we've got Tracy back from the owl and the um, and the, <laughs> the pussy cat. <laughs> Tracy's back with us. We, so we've got some great guests in with us today. Um, but let's get the early bird first because I've just tried all of these on and they all fit beautifully. So the early bird today is a brand new product. Now. You may have noticed quite a lot of the, the our sewing bee um, ex contestants who we have on here, like um, Adam and Mark. They they use these. I've always wanted one of these. These are brilliant. So look at them. I've got a whole stack of them. So they are magnetic pin cushions, not cushions, but just magnetic things. And you just look. They go on like that. They're amazing. Now I've kept these. This blue on the top is just like a cling film cover to stop it scratching. I'm not going to take that off because um, they won't go back to the warehouse. So yours will be silver underneath. And now there are one, two, three, four, five. There are seven colors, but yours will be at random. So it'll be a surprise. Just be a surprise. Um, look how it works. So you get all your pins and you stick them all on there so that when you're sewing, you can put it on either wrist, depending on how you're going to do it. It's so easy. When you take your pin out as you're sewing, you haven't got to then put it in the box. You just chuck them back on and they're easy then to get to hand and only 5 99 so there's a green one so they just snap like that so you could even use it as um a pin holder not a cushion on your sewing table so as you're sewing you can just throw them on um yeah so can i just say because it is obviously magnetic if you um do have a pacemaker don't use it but if you don't have one, then go for it. Um, and then they just slap on, so there's the purple one. And they fit all sizes, fit anybody, because I tried, I got them all right to the top of my arm. And then there's a yellow one, I can do them, all of them. And a red one. Now, 
This is a brand new item to us, so, we, so we're not crashing the price because it's brand new. But we've had a look elsewhere. Now, we can't find anything exactly the same anywhere. It's, that's so gorgeous. But we have found some that are similar, work upon the same principle on other websites. There we are, 10. Prim one, 10.99. I mean, and look, it does, you know, exactly the same. It's got the snap, it's got the rubber bracelet, and it's got a pin, pin holder on top, and it's magnetic. And that one's ten ninety nine. Next one, seven ninety nine. And this is that Long River website, isn't it? Where one would think the price may be lower, but no, because ours are five ninety nine. Buy it. Order all of them, or they might then all get the same colour, you never know. Another one, eight ninety nine. They all do exactly the same thing, but we have seven colours. But be, it would be too complicated to work out to choose the colour. And how would you choose anyway? And it'd be a little, a little surprise. They're all nice. So we've got blue, yellow, purple, black, red, white, and green. But you know, if you're doing dressmaking, particularly, maybe you're like um, doing adjustments on things, or you know, you're doing a hem and you cut, you've got your mouth full of pins which you shouldn't do, or you've got your pin box, and like me, and then end up kicking it over. Then you can just pop all your pins on. But I like the way actually I would use it as well, flat beside my sewing machine like this, and then you can just chuck them on. Also, brilliant for if you've dropped all your pins all over the floor. Yeah, because you can buy special magnets for picking up pins but this does everything obviously when you get yours take the blue cover off well you don't have to but it um stops underneath where it's just a plain metal it stops it getting scratched you can keep the blue cover on if you like for a while it's fab though isn't it 5.99 that's an amazing price so this is brand new brand brand new today loads of you coming in for this um very very busy third of the stock is already gone We've got loads of you in baskets you need, you need to check out. You do need to check out because the, a third of them have already been checked out and they are amazing. And obviously, you know, we don't ever know. We buy a certain amount of stock and when it's gone, who knows when we'll get them back in. They are brilliant. If you're thinking about a little gift for somebody, maybe um, you're a super organized person, you're thinking stocking filler, or you know it's someone's birthday coming up or you just want to say thank you to them or someone's helped you out with something, anyone who sews will love one of these. They're just fab, aren't they? I love them, you just want to play with them all the time. Um, but they pick all your pins up off the floor, over your desk, you can even run them over garments to make sure you can see if you've got any pins left. It won't pull them out, but it will certainly stick to them. Um, and then you can keep it on your wrist, and it's a good strong magnet. Look at that, picks them all up. This is fab. I would like I would like one because of the, I think I would, no, I would have it on my, for dressmaking I'd keep it on my arm. But when I'm actually sewing, um, I'd put it by my, Desk. In fact, if you had two of them, it'd be even more useful, wouldn't it? But I know Adam all, always has his round his wrist. I think it's a kind of a sewing bee thing. When I was watching it um, last week, because you've got to work quickly, aren't you? But it's just more efficient, isn't it? So you won't know which colour you're going to get, but it will just be a nice surprise. Buy more than one, you never know. You might get two colours. Half of the stock gone. Half of the stock is gone. Only five ninety nine. And remember, um, your P and P today is three ninety five. Only one P and P for the whole day. So once you've bought that, that's it. P and P covered. Then you can carry on all day. And wow, we've got some fantastic products today. But this is great. I'm really strong as well. I've been playing with these all morning, and they work brilliantly. And I like the fact that they've, there's a nice white. If you look on that side, there's a lot of overlap there, so it will fit bigger wrists, smaller wrists, any size wrists. I don't know which one colour I like the best. Maybe maybe yellow. Because I've got a yellow car. Not, I don't think I will be using it in the car, but, you know, nice, nice colour. But, you know, when you're sort of sitting down and you're doing things like um, EPP, when you're on a bus, train, or in the car, passenger seat, obviously, brilliant to keep your needle on. So it's a really good thing to keep. If you buy a couple of them, we'll get three. One for your sewing. There are loads of you multi-buying, so I would have one for my general sewing, one to put on my wrist, and then one to put in my work box because if you want to you know say you're going on holiday taking you could put a few pins and your needles on here keeps them nice and safe and once you roll them up they roll up like this so they're quite small you've got them um yeah once they're rolled up they're quite small aren't they so for travel they're not very big and obviously you know when you've got them lying flat they're obviously a lot bigger 
but they do pack up quite nicely. Loads of you are multi-buying on these. These are a fab product. I think 5 99 is just a great price. Well, if you look at the ones that we've shown you, well, do they range from 7 8 10 99 And they are just as good as that same, just as the same as any of those. So once you've bought that, I mean, look at that one, 10 99 I know that one's branded with Prim, but it's exactly the same product, really. Does the same thing. It does exactly the same thing. I mean, you know, some if you prefer to work with a brand, that that's fine, entirely up to you. But they do exactly the same thing, and they work really well. And I have been playing with them all morning. They're just a little bit addictive. Things <laughs> you sort of keep having to unravel them and then try a few more pins. I wonder if it will pick up my whole pin. It'd be brilliant. I am constantly knocking over my whole pot of pins. They're fantastic for that. Um, then once you um, check out. It's yours. Just remember, if it's in your basket, it isn't yours. You need to check out. The PMP is three ninety-five for the whole day. So, what happens if you're new to Sewing Street? Welcome, welcome to the family of um, keen, fantastic, and wonderful sewers, or people of interest, or people of interest, people who are interested in sewing, or um, people who love sewing. Welcome to the family. Um, so, if Three ninety five, and then what happens is you put it in your basket and then you can put as many things in your basket during the day, you could put 395 things in. At midnight your basket is closed and at that point the PMP is applied. So don't wait to check out and think, oh I'll wait to see how many things I want. You won't be penalised for that, you will be given, your PMP will be applied at the end of the day. So have a think about it. if you love one of these then you'll know somebody else will love one of these. They're fab aren't they? Good for screws as well. Be really good if you're if you're hanging up lots of pictures around the house. Put all your screws on here, and then you don't have to put them in your mouth, which you shouldn't do anyway. But you know, I was when I'm hanging up loads of pictures, I've always got all the screws in my pockets. But you could have them on your magnetic thing. So buy one for the keen DIY in the house as well. Anyway, seven different colours, but you won't know which one you're going to get because it will be a nice surprise. Which one do you like the best? Don't know. Did you have a good weekend? Gosh, did it rain? Did it rain? I mean, John's birthday was fantastic, wasn't it? We had such a good show. It was lovely. Um, but, oh, wow, did it rain Saturday night? I don't know where you live. Down south, it absolutely poured down. But I'm hoping, hoping it's now going to clear up for the rest of the week. Um, right, these are about to sell out. So please carry on. Um, Check, if you've got it in your basket, carry on checking out because these are about to sell out. Um, so let's see what's coming up today because we've got loads of good things. So we have got now at eight o'clock, we have got a brand new quilt kit. It's, um, it's very limited, this quilt kit. It's the Tula Pink Daydreamer Pineapple Quilt. We've never shown it on air before. It is fantastic. Now, the selling point behind this, because I've had the kit for the weekend, they wouldn't let me cut into it, which is very unfortunate. I was just allowed to read the instructions because I actually would really like this it's because we have a limited number. This is a beginner's quilt. And when you look at it, you think, no way is that a beginner's quilt, but it is. I'll, well, I'll go through all the instructions with you in a moment. When you see how much fabric you get in that and the variety, you get 50 different prints and planes and all you have to do is make one pineapple and then it's exactly the same for all the other pineapples and it's really simple it's just snowballing and um, we're also going to be doing Hannah's fun pineapple facts game so we've got this amazing game where Hannah has come up with fun facts about pineapples but one of them isn't true but she hasn't told me which one isn't true so what we've got to do I'm going to read them out in a bit um, We'll do them throughout the hour and we've all got a guess. I want you to send it in which one isn't true and she's going to tell us at the end. So let's see whether Hannah's managed to hide her surprise one. But this is brilliant. So if you're at the stage where you'd love to make a beautiful, bright, fun, fantastic quilt, but you haven't made a quilt before, you think I'll never be able to do that, this is the kit for you. If you have quilted before, this will be easy. And it's, and it's got everything, including the binding, it just doesn't have the backing and the wadding, but it's an amazing price. It will fit a double bed beautifully, and it will fit a king-size bed with less of a drop, but it will still fit it. So that's 8 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, we've got Emma Brasfield in with us. Yay! Oh, she's brilliant. Brilliant sewer. 
We've had both of these patterns before with a total sellout. So she's back with the patterns again and we've got some brand new kits and colourways of fabric to go. We've got her lovely Luna backpack and her Smitey purse. She'll be on with us at nine o'clock with those. At ten o'clock we've got Tracy from the Owl, Owl and the Sewing Cat, not Owl and the Pussy Cat, um, with bundles of applique patterns and bundles of dressmaking patterns. Um, and last time she was on with a really first show, absolutely wild, all sold out, you loved it. Um, and she has, not only you can I choose between the printed option or a USB option where you print them yourself. And we've got them, we've got both. So if you've made any owl and sewing cat and pants before, send us in your pictures, we would love to see them. Email studio at sewingstreet.com or you can contact us on the Facebook page. We would love to see them. There we go. Message the studio, studio at sewingstreet.com and Hannah will put the pictures on. We would love to see them. But we know how much you love them. Amazing value for money and they are really, really good patterns. So she's on. So we've got a plique and dressmaking. A little bit of both at 10. Um, 11 o'clock, um, Emma is back with us. <coughs> She's got two designs. She's going to be doing the Sunny Days tote bag, which is a Susie Duncan design. And we've got loads of different colourways in that. Gorgeous. And she's also going to be doing um, the Lou Orth applique scissors purse, which is really, really cute. I like that. Then at 12 o'clock, yes, yes, yes. It's Yarn Lane. Don't have to go anywhere. Yarn Lane is on the same channel. I know it didn't used to be, but it got really confusing. So we put it onto our channel onto this channel and it's all on pre-order um so this is brand new brand new west yorkshire spinners beautiful bow peep yarn now jenny watson fantastic really excited about this she is the designer of all of these patterns she does loads of the designs for west yorkshire spinners and she is going to be on air as the designer showing us how she makes the garments they're all children's designs they are beautiful we've got loads of them in the office uh, in the studio all around we had the whole box this morning um, and we've got a baby blanket as well and we've got they're all um ch baby and children's patterns so we've got the pattern book and then we've got kits to make some of them well yarn packs to make some of them so don't go anywhere at 12 this is going to be a great hour it's always lovely when we get a real live designer on air and this one is a bit of an extra special treat Fantastic. Um, so, what, Hannah, what shall we start with? Are we going to, um, are we going to start with fun pineapple fact number one? Because I'm going to get, oh, yeah, we've got, to, we've got to get the kit out before we do the fun pineapple facts. So, this quilt, as I said, is 183 by 197 centimetres, and in Imperial, that is 72 and by 77 and a half. So, I checked last night, because I've done a whole quilt calculation thing ages ago, what fits what bed with what size drop and everything. That's way big enough for a double bed with a 12-inch drop, sides and bottom, and then just enough to go just tuck under the pillows. If you want to put it on a king-size bed, it will fit too, but with less of a drop all the way around, and obviously beautiful on a single bed. I mean, this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now look, look, I love the fact, this is quite a selling point to me, that the kit comes in its own little zip bag. So it's like a little project bag for you to use as you go along and later. Most of them don't come like this, but I like, that means you can keep everything nice and clean and then you can use it later. So let's take out the whole thing. Right, let me take out everything. So there's your free your free bag. Look at that. There is so much in this kit. Now what I think is amazing is um, there's each print is used twice in the pineapples. And then all of the plain fabrics that are used for the leaves and the background are, are all Tula pink plain colours. So they go beautifully. They're not just random. And then the binding is actually in one of the prints. There are 50 different fabrics in here. And what there is in here, there is what you need. So if you try to recreate this self, you, yourself, you'd never be able to buy all of these fabrics in these tiny quantities to be able to do it. It's just, it's just, mm. I really want this. 
Just think, I mean, I, I, it'd be gorgeous on a bed. It'd be gorgeous, the best picnic quilt ever. Lovely as a playmat, even. I mean, it's just a thing of beauty. Or wall art. You know, instead of putting a picture on you all, you hang this up. I mean, this is amazing, 199.99 for all of this. So all of the fabrics come from Tula's um, Daydreamer collection. So let's go through the print. Now, the print fabrics are obviously all used in the pineapples. So we've got the lovely, um, I can't remember their parrots and McCall's. McCall's. It's McCall you later, so it must be. So these are all the fabrics that are used in the pineapples. But you see, there's the, there's the fabric you get. So you get, that will make two pineapples. So you get what you need. I mean, there's obviously a little bit of leeway on that. You can tell from that that, you know, it's not super tight. But you would never be able to recreate this yourself. And it comes in, um, you've got pinks and blues. It's all the same fabric collection. So although there are different colours, all the prints and the colours and the tones all go together beautifully. You've got this one. I love that one. Because when you do your pineapple as well, if you get this one, when you open it, open it out like that, you see, so you can have one pineapple that's the bluey end and one pineapple that's the yellow greeny end. And there's even a complete um, layout diagram. I'll show you how to make it in a minute, but there's a whole layout diagram telling you exactly where to put what pineapple. So, because sometimes they say just lay it out as you want, and you may want to do that, that's up to you, but if you want to recreate it as per the original, that is a complete layout diagram and it's really easy to understand. I've been through the whole thing. Now, I wanted to demo this. I said, oh, please, can I cut it up? But they knew, you see, once I cut it up, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to sell this one. So, because we are very limited in stock, there are less than 20 available now, which is why I wasn't allowed to cut it up. It is beautiful, though, isn't it? So, look, we've got the tiger one. So, imagine getting the tiger. So, can you see on this one here where they've got the tiger in the center of the pineapple? So there's obviously enough to be able to fussy cut it slightly. You've got the tiger and on, on that one as well. Um, lovely fruity one. I love the rainbows. And that's, that looks like pineapple, doesn't it? Then we've got the macaws again. I think the macaws work really well as a, on a pineapple. And tigers again. Oh, is that a leopard? Oh, my God. Yeah, sorry, a leopard does have spots. You're quite right, Hannah. I love them because, because the way that they're fussy cut, they almost look like jars, like glass jars, with just a filled, like this one looks like a glass jar filled with butterflies. It's not, it's a pineapple. And then we've got butterflies there. So those are all the planes. No, all the prints. There are more underneath. Can I move these? Because obviously, as I said, they're all cut exactly. Um, are these in it as well? No, okay. Um, flamingos. So this is where we've got a little bit more. Now there's a reason for, these are the bigger pieces and there is a reason for that. I think maybe there's more in that one. So the binding is in, I think this one. So that you've got one, even one of the binding is in one of the fabrics specifically. So you've got a little bit more of these because these are used in more pineapples. And you've got a pink flamingo. So in it, you've got like some of the fabrics have got half a yard, some are fat eighths, some three quarters of a yard, seven eighths. So you've got exactly what you need to be able to make the whole thing. And then if you look here, it's telling you, look, look at all these fabrics. And everything is labelled with letters, A, D, A, E, A, F, A, G, A, X, so you can see exactly. The backing and the wadding isn't included, but Tula does suggest, tells you how much you need, you need two and a half metres, um, if you're using the extra wide. And she suggests them, and we've got one of them, I'll show you in a minute. So she tells you what you need. You've got the lovely pink flamingos, the blue butterflies, and the super rainbow tiger. There we go. Is that a jaguar? Oh, I'm rubbish at animals. It's called Mick Jaguar. Well, yeah, see, I didn't know that. I thought it was a tiger. Oh, I'm not going to do animals anymore. I don't know them. Right, then we have all of the um, plain fabrics. So the plain fabrics are used, obviously, for the leaves of the pineapples and then these background squares. So look at all of these. You've got all of the smaller pieces. These must be leaves, all the smaller ones. 
and these are Tula solids. These are these have been these colours have been selected specially. They're as part of Tula solids range, and she has had them coloured and dyed specifically to go with her fabric. So you've got one, two, three, four, five shades of reds and yellows. You've got greens. These are lovely leaves. Love, look how bright that one is. You see, so you can see that these go, I mean, particularly if you look at the Jaguar, how beautifully these colours go. So you know that the whole thing blends together. So you've got one, two, three, four, five different greens. Oh, more here. Um, you've got another selection of blues and greens here. These are all the leaves. I love, look at that colour. That is very Tula, isn't it? Like really deep petrol and then a turquoise. You see, but you've just got, this is what I mean about if you tried to recreate this. So look at one of these pieces. I'm not sure you could even go and buy that. And how would you then, even if you get, get the right colour, to create this? Right, only 14 of these are left. 199 99 It's a fantastic price. So let's show you some price comparisons. Oh, look at the pinks. Look at the, look at the pinks and the purples. And you see, when you look at it, before we do the price comparison, you can see that she's chosen like these pinks and purples. They go with the pinks and purples. So the, it graduates from the reds and oranges to the yellows, greens, greens to blues, and pinks to purples. So it's really rainbow in terms of prints and solids. Um, but let's do some price comparisons because we, we had a look around this morning just to make sure that we are competitive, that our price is right. So this is one of them. This is on Cotton Patch. How much is this one? I can't read the 229 219.95 sorry I can't read that 219.95 there we go we're cheaper what's that one on 228 it's a bit fuzzy on my screen, it's probably you can see it more. 228, that one. We're 29 pounds cheaper. Uh, another one, 245. 220 was the other. So all of the ones that we found, all over 200 pounds. So much cheaper. And same kit, exactly the same kit, comes in the same bag, much more affordable. Look at it, it's beautiful. And then you get all these, I love the fact that she's chosen for the background fabrics, the ones that the pineapples are sitting on, are all pastels, but again from her range, because the, the pineapples and the leaves are so bright and vibrant, you want them to sit again. And now she could have just gone white and ivory, couldn't she? But no, not Tula. We've got pale lilac, we've got sky blue, aqua, like a foam green, a pale, apple green and then even a light a pale light these are all pastel lime pastel yellow pastel peach and pink so the middle kit that we showed this one there's 220 mm. and then let's go back to ours ours is so ours is under so that's 21 pounds cheaper is ours already already and we are limp. Ooh. We are. Hannah has just announced we are going to take a little bit of money off that. We are limited, and but you know, we well we haven't found it any less any elsewhere. But it is a beautiful quilt. We are very limited number. It would be lovely to have this quilt, wouldn't it? So let's drop the price. One hundred eighty nine ninety nine. Mm. Wow, so we are now over £30, less expensive, everywhere else. And we honestly have, we have not found it anywhere else under £200. Do have a look, because we have searched, and we can't, I mean, it is a considered purchase, 189 Don't forget that that's also available on split pay, three equal payments of 63.33. No interest charge on that. It's just to spread the payment. So if you think, I really want that, but I don't have 189 this month, then pay the 63.33 now. We will send you the kit straight away. And the next month, the other 63.33 will be taken out and the same the month after that. But you will get it straight away. I mean, I tell you what it... I mean, have a look. You might find it um, as a second-hand one somewhere else or independent, but 
under two hundred pounds, under an eighty nine ninety nine, and you get so much fabric. And let me just show you how easy it is. If you were wondering, you were only only twelve left, only twelve. So all of the I want want to explain about the beginner things. So all of the fabrics are listed with photos to make it really easy. I mean, they have got the list of what they're called, but they have also got photos of them. So you know the N, which is Lucy Lagoon, there's the picture of it. So what I would say to you before you start is lay all your fabrics out, put them in letter order, and maybe label them with a little post-it, or um, you can write on them with an eraser or pen. So you've identified what is what, because there are 50 different fabrics in here including all the solids so it's all in here and it, it just keeps going the two backing fabrics we'll talk about those in a moment because the backing and the wadding is not in the kit the binding is oh hang on just lost my ears that's better um the binding is though now what there's obviously there's a lot of cutting involved so put a day aside or a morning won't take your whole day but put some time and it is wonderful Put something nice on the telly, like Sewing Street, and get cutting. Now, it does explain quite, e quite well about um, fussy cutting, because obviously when you cut the pineapples, you want to place the centre of the pineapple on a particular thing. And what it suggests, so rather than you cut it out and then realise you haven't got enough for the other one, is to maybe draw onto the fabric, the rectangle, with a um, removable fabric marker first, and then you can move it around. Or you could even make a little template from um, tracing paper, and then you could place that on there. Good morning, Rebecca. Loving the show. I've just treated myself to this gorgeous school. I can't wait to start it from Sheila. Sheila, lucky you. I'm totally, totally with you on that one. I really want that. See, when we looked for this quilt elsewhere, £245? And we're £189.99. Wow. So it should be £190. So that's like um, £50, pounds, over £50 pounds cheaper. Single figures now. So label it all and cut it all out. And then actually, all you have to do is make a pineapple and honestly look at the diagram it's easy peasy it is all about snowballing which is basically you get a rectangle of fabric you put squares in the corners and then you sew them together open them out and that is it this is why i want you to realize if you've never made them before spend the time make one pineapple really easy the instructions are very clear then you just repeat it single figures of this left all oh, right pineapple facts Pineapple fact number one. So the game, remember, if you've only just tuned in, Hannah has put, put together five Hannah pineapple facts. One of them isn't true. So we're going to show them throughout this hour. And um, we've got, you've all got to guess. Can you send them in which one is not true? For pineapple fact number one. If you replant the cut-off top of a pineapple, it will grow into a new pineapple plant. Is that true? Is that really? Really? Right, so pineapple fact number one. If you replant the cut-off top of a pineapple, it will grow into a new pineapple plant. Okay. Right. There will be four more facts. Let us know which one you think is false. Carry on checking out for these. Should we go and have a look at the fabrics again? These are these beautiful background fabrics. Look at those, those are the backgrounds and they're all beautiful pastel tones so they look gorgeous together. These are all the leaves, love the leaves. They are just beautiful. My, that's a lot, I mean these are just gorgeous. And then these have actually been paired with the fabrics that they blend with. So you've got this rainbow, it starts at red, orange, yellow, moves down to blue, um, green and indigo and violet at the bottom. So it's like a rainbow pineapple quilt. Who thinks it's true? Rosemary thinks it's true. Okay. I don't know. I'm just not sure about that one. Sue thinks that one's true. Don't know. Hannah is, Hannah is quite good at making stuff up, you know. So I think it will be a bit of a hidden one. I'm, I'm not absolutely sure about that one. Then look at the prints. This is what your pineapples will be. You'll have rainbow jaguars, you'll have teal butterflies, you'll have pink flamingos. This is the binding, love that one, all that sort of red, the reddy and orange clouds. That'll go beautifully around the edge. It's nice when they put the binding in, isn't it? We've got aqua flamingos, we've got orange 
butterflies. I've got to get these right now. Tigers, no, t leopards, leopards, orange leopards. And remember, there's enough fabric for you to be able to fussy cut these pineapples so you can get your prints in just the right place. Glenis says, true, true from Glenis. Mm, okay, maybe it is true then. Well, no one has said false, have they? And don't cheat, don't Google it, because I can't do that, that's not fair. You just got to go with what you think. Are we going to tell them at the end? Oh, right, Hannah has confirmed that fact is true. Okay, I'm going to do that then. How long will it take and will I actually get one? Oh. Yeah, do we need control conditions for that to actually work? Uh, fact number two. Fact number two is a pineapple plant can stay alive and continue giving fruits for up to 50 years. So that's 50, 50 pineapples in total. Wow. So a plant, well, one plant produces one pineapple, but then does it every year? Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. There are 40 in here. So you get 40 pineapples in here. That's almost the same as what one plant gives. 50, okay. What do you think that's true? I have absolutely no idea. Um, we'll do a stop reminder on this quilt and at that point we'll let you know if that's true or false. Look at all these pineapples. Anyway, if you've got any questions about it, you want to know anything else, if I haven't showed you all the fabric, you want to see any of them, any questions about the instructions, just message us in. But we are on single figures of this beautiful quilt. And honestly, it's easy peasy. <coughs> now, we have got backing fabrics. Let me put my thingy over here. <coughs> so the backing fabric that they suggest, was it the yellow one? is the yellow one. You need two and a half metres of this because it's extra wide. So if you've bought, uh, if you've bought the kit, you, you don't have to use this backing fabric, but if you want to use a Tula backing fabric, you will need two and a half metres. Um, so that's five units in your basket. It's extra wide, so look, 108 inches wide. You can use this for anything. Make a lovely dress and just think. Remember, this backing fabric is brilliant for dressmaking and home wares as well. Look at it, so wide. So if you've bought the quilt kit, it's good for that. Use it for any backing. Brilliant, extra wide backing is brilliant for homewares. So if you're doing a fete or a stall and you're making things, maybe you, you know, your thing is making tote bags. You can make absolutely loads. You can make six tote bags, I think we worked out, from half a metre of this. And the quality of it is beautiful. It's very soft. So it's lovely for dressmaking as well. It's 100% cotton, 108 inches wide, which is 274 centimetres. So it's more than double the width of normal backing fabric, of normal quilting fabric. Um, then we've got the same one, but in a, like a, a minty green background, but you've got the same sun. So again, that's um, 13.99 for half a metre, and it's 274 centimetres, 108 inches wide. This is, so you've got the same rainbows, but with like a minty green background. So those are the two backing fabrics. Oh. Lots of people said that was false, but no, Hannah says that one is true. And she has checked that several times, but if anyone's got more evidence to say that Hannah is not checking her facts probably, but the internet did tell her that that is true. That next pineapple fact. Pineapple fact number three is coming up. Here it is. No, that was the last one. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, can we have the pineapple fact? Right, okay. The world's largest pineapple ever recorded was in 2011 grown by Christy McCollum from Bakewell, Australia. It measured 32 centimetres long, had a 60 centimetre girth and weighed 28 kilos. True or false? I wonder how many tins you'd, of pineapple you'd get for that. I have no idea. That could well be true. That could be, that could be Hannah there. Maybe not. Although she does look like, I mean, there is a photo of her with a massive pineapple. What do you think? I'm going true on that one. 
daydream of fat quarter pack this one so all of those fabrics that were in the quilt are also in this fat quarter pack which is 89.99 so you you get how many is in here 20 22 22 fat quarters so all the fabrics well nearly all the fabrics i've just shown you are in this obviously not all of them so you've got the um flamingos you've got the macaws you've got the leopards and the jaguars i'm trying to get the right animals now um but basically they are all the fabrics that i've just shown you so it's the tuliping daydream of fat quarter pack 22 pieces 69 at 20 quid off 69.99 for that only till midnight and then the price goes up rosemary thinks that's one's true rosemary you are a pineapple fat genius well actually no you said the last one was false and Hannah says it's true so what does everyone else think message us in what does glenn think true glenn is from sutton i have no idea i think it's true because there's a photo of her holding the pineapple but not absolutely sure so 69.99 that's 20 pounds off only till midnight that is a special hannah tula pink price should be 89.99 so if you love tula and you want all of the fat quarters and those are all the ones that are in that quilt kit obviously you get more than that in the quilt kit which works out as three pounds 18 for a fat quarter which is amazing because they're all designer fabrics and they are all the daydreamer Tula fabrics beautiful yeah so we have the same fabrics but a design roll this time if you've never seen a design roll before this is where you get they get they get um the fabric and they cut a two and a half inch strip across the whole width of the fabric so it's be 44 inches long and then you get one or two from each of the fabrics all of the ones that i've just shown you and there are 40 in here now Hannah's taking £10 off just for today, only till midnight. It's a special Tula special offer, £34.99. So if you've got patterns that use um, design rolls, this is perfect. Some, some of them you need two, so pop a couple in your basket. Brilliant for bindings, brilliant for edgings. You could even join them all together just to make one big patchwork. But obviously, because they're all... Um, from the same fabric range they're all this tonally they match and they're all the fabrics you've seen although i don't think that pink sunrise was in the quilt kit didn't see that one before <gasps> gorgeous so that's a special 10 pounds off single figures only four of these remaining lady with the pineapple fact was true Ooh. next fact Mm, pineapples are actually vegetables really do you think that's true or false i wonder what defines a vegetable though what's a fruit what's a vegetable well i guess a fruit is like the fruit of something and then that will grow into a seed so i don't know but what's a vegetable then because potatoes are seeds aren't they and they're vegetables not sure is a tomato a veg oh no tomato is a fruit isn't it oh charm pack um charm pack 42 i've got one open here already so there are 42 10 inch pieces now from my calculations i think the 10 inch charm pack is the most is the best value for money from pre-cuts because you get a lot of fabric here so you've got each print, they're all the ones that are in the kit um, for the quilt are all here. I think you've got maybe two of each. So you've got all this beautiful inch, it's all rainbow with prints of macaws and jaguars and leopards and flamingos. It's all there. Aren't they gorgeous? Now, 44.99 for the 10 inch charm pack shades of lime and apple and kiwi and raspberry and um bubblegum beautiful rich shade of orange for the um butterflies but if you love tula these are gorgeous there's loads and loads of different patterns using these charm packs you can make them into whole just join them all together into rows and join the rows together and make an amazing quilt because the colour, the thing is with Tula fabrics, the quality is beautiful, but the prints are stunning. So they just speak for themselves. So that is 
for the 10 inch charm pack. You get 42 pieces. Oh, we're taking some money off this one as well. Oh, 10 pounds off for today only, while stocks last, either or. 34.99, that's amazing value for money. It's really good, isn't it? Judith says, is a fruit. I've no idea, I mean, I never, I don't know. Oh, Melanie says the last fact is false. And Glennis says it could be both. I don't think that's an option, Glennis. I think it has to be either or. Is it a fruit or is it a salad? Is a salad a fruit or a vegetable? See, I always thought that was a separate category. Could be by both, couldn't it? I mean, a potato is a vegetable and that's, oh, I don't know. Don't know. Please keep checking out for this charm pack. Remember, the price will go back up to forty-four ninety-nine at midnight. This is our special because we've got this beautiful quilt kit. This is our special offer for today. Um, hi, Bex. Fab necklace. Oh, thank you, necklace. Um, fruity fact is false. Pineapples are fruits from Catherine above. Oh, good morning, Catherine. Catherine's my next door neighbour. She is, yes. And I said to her when I bumped into her in the woods the other day and she was on the way back from yoga and I was walking the dog, um, message me, message me in. So she started sewing big time, big time. She's learned how to insert zips. She's thinking about a sewing machine. So we had a long chat in the woods about a brother or an Elna. What do you think? I said, spend as much money as you possibly can. It'll be worth it. She was thinking about an overlocker, but we had a long discussion about that. Haven't decided. Anyway, good morning, Catherine. Glad you're watching. Glad you're watching. Do check out for the charm pack, and we'll find out soon whether that fact is true. Because no idea. No idea. Right. The tomato fat. Pineapples are actually vegetables. Is false. Did you make that up, Hannah? She made that one up. But look, she put a picture of a tomato in the slide. Just to just to trick you. <laughs> right, so obviously we know this is true now, but, but this is Hannah's favourite fact. I'm going to read that. Pineapples were so rare on UK shores in the 18th century. If you could afford them, you were among society's elite. Quickly becoming a symbol of hospitality, they were offered by those of means to guests as a sign of respect and to show off. And so Pineapple House, first built in 1761 by John Murray, the fourth Earl of Dunmore, was basically one giant flex. Flex? What do you mean one giant flex? Oh, showing off. Oh, I don't know what that means, one giant flex. Oh, was basically showing off. Actual pineapples were grown on the property nine miles outside Full Cook. So maybe if so if you do cut the top of your pineapple off, they do grow. That's amazing. Where is Falkirk? Is that in Scotland? I would love it. If, if, you go, if, you, if you've ever been there or you've been there, let me know. That is unbelievable. So John Murray was just showing off. I'd quite like that on top of my house. Might look a little bit odd. I'm sure the neighbors would like it. Right, pineapple quilt, pineapple quilt. We are in single figures. And just, once everyone's checked out, there will only be three. Now remember that this is 40 big showings offs. 40 showing offs of make the whole pineapple, oh, there's my phone. Remember you can get it on split pay. If you're thinking, tell you what, Catherine, brilliant quick for you, 189.99. If you want to make an amazing, gorgeous, just think how this would make your bed sing. Pop it on your bed. Absolutely beautiful, 189.99. Do it on split pay if you don't want to pay all the money up front. It is interest free. You get 50, 50 fabrics in here. That's fantastic. And it's all in beautiful rainbow shades. We are on single figures of this. We've looked else, we have looked elsewhere. Some websites it's 245 pounds. We've taken 10 pounds off for today. I don't think we'll have it. We've only got three left once everyone's checked out. I don't think we'll have any left. Let's just open this one. Um, me again, in the 18th century, people used to rent a pineapple for the evening of hosting a posh dinner from Catherine. Really? I wonder how much it cost to rent it. And did you, I suppose you had to give it back. What if anyone touched it? So I'm sorry, um, you can have this pineapple. Somebody had it for their dinner party last night and they may have touched it. Well, 
So this really is the ultimate show-off quilt then, isn't it? But you don't have to rent this one, you can keep it. You can't rent a quilt kit unless you don't cut into it. Can you imagine renting a pineapple for your dinner party? That's yeah, a good idea though. Single figures of this, but it's only to this if, well, if we have any left, which I doubt, that price will go up again. And remember, we are, with some of the quilt, we're over 50 pounds cheaper anyway. We have looked elsewhere, but it is a beautiful, beautiful kit. But they were all of them. Well, you saw that all of them were over 200 and we're 189.99. Do it. Comes with a free bag with a zip as well. Quite like that. Right, we've got some, so we've got some, oh, I've got the charm pack here. So if you love those two solids, we've got a whole charm pack, 10 squares, 40 of them here. Um, they're all Tula, so you've got all of, you've got the super, 44.99, you've got the, um, this bright, strong ones, the ones that we use in the leaves in that quilt. That's my favourite colour, look at that, petrol colour, and purples, and cyans, and fuchsias and orange, reds and orange and yellow. And then you've also got the pastel ones, the ones that I showed you that we used in the background. You've got lilac and pale blue. So if you've got any Tula or you just love her color palette and you want some of her plain, these are beautiful quality. They're obviously 100% cotton, but they're really lovely quality, the two things. Look at that lovely shade. And you know, when you pair them together, they actually sort of almost go together in pairs. So if you take that one and that one, aren't they beautiful? If, you were, if you're doing two-tone things, those go really together. And it's free spirit fabric, so, go, so it is beautiful quality. And then you've got the yellow, the pale greens, the yellows. There's two pale greens as well. So you've got that green, but then this one, that's sort of halfway between the green and the yellow. These are so lovely. And then you've got the apricot. So that is 42 piece charm pack. It's called Mythical, but it's all of her planes in her own colorways. And the design roll, exactly the same, so I won't open it, but exactly the same. You've got 40 two and a half inch strips, and that's all of the same pastels, moving through to all the brights and the deeper colors, all the way around. There we go. Um, right, now if you were watching John's show on Saturday, I was on with, I'm going to move over, just a minute. Um, we, I was on with Amber Makes doing our storage boxes and we sold out and I did, I did, yeah, we sold out like within about 10 minutes. And I did say, and um, Amy put it onto our website the weekend, if we can get some more in stock, we will. And we have. So we have three different, let me explain how it works. You get three different types. You've got the sewing room. In each storage, in each kit, you get enough to make three. So in the sewing room, you've got the big one, which features on the outside, everything is printed. You've got um, the sewing table there. We go all the way round. It's like your whole sewing room. We've got the ironing board. All of the storage boxes have handles which are optional. They're on the panel, but you don't have to put them on. And then if you look inside, it's like the inside of the sewing rooms. It's all printed, it's even got a floor. It's all about attention to detail, it's even got bunting. And then the top of it folds over, so that creates the cuff. Now these are easy, easy peasy, beginner level, easy peasy to make. So on each panel, you get the big one, you get the medium one. So this is the um, shelves of your sewing room. Again, inside you've got the shelves of your sewing room and you've got the floor. And then you've got the baby one, which is your sewing bookcase. So there's books on it that say things like quilt blocks, sewing techniques, sewing tips, quilt, I love quilting. Um, and then you've got the floor inside and you've got inside lots of words, buttons, needles, spools, sewing thread and little handles. So that's the sewing room. That's one panel, okay? Then we've got the potting shed. So that's great for putting your fabric in or your sewing notions, a gift for somebody, because you get all three on the panel. You can keep one, give a couple away. Then this is the potting shed. So the, the top of it folds over, because that's printed on the lining, and it's like the slate roof of the shed. So you've got the door, got a Dalmatian on this one, the little windows. There's um, a bird bath with the little bird in. You've got all the tools hanging up. There's the back of the shed with the bike propped up against it. You can see through the windows all the plants. 
These are all printed already. You haven't got to do any of this. There's no applique involved. You just, this is all printed. And then on the inside, so on the bottom of the shed, look, you've got the floor. So you've got the wooden floor inside, and then you've got the inside of the shed. And look, there's the inside of the door there, which matches exactly where the outside of the door is and the window. So this is the shed from the inside. So if you wanted to give somebody a plant, you could put it in here. You could um, store your seed packets in or your gardening gloves or nice things because that is your little so if you know a keen gardener or somebody who doesn't have a shed anymore would like one that would be ideal then the medium one is all the shelves inside your shed you've got the slate roof again full of plants so this is ideal for a plant and then inside you've got the inside of the shed and then the third one so the baby one it has got lots of gardening words on it grow potting herbs gardens and then you've got the so these that's um, potting shed, and then this one is thatch cottage. This one, they do all have handles, but I didn't put them on there so you could see what they look. That's so it just went, depends. So, look, there's your thatch cottage with a little roof, and then that's all the way around. Inside, we've got all the furniture, it's hard to see that actually, but you've got like the bed and the tables and the flagstone floor. So every theme has three ones. So the so the medium one is all the shelves. And then the baby one last time is all the recipe books. So this is very kitcheny, cottage kitcheny themed. So so all each so these three come on one panel, the potting shed comes on one panel, the sewing room comes on one panel. So we are offering them all separately. But we have got a bundle because when we did them on Saturday, this one sold the best. So this one is a trio of trios. So you're saving £10 and what it means is you'll get one of each of the panels and the instructions. So you'll be able to make three sheds, three sewing rooms and three cottages. And that's £49.99. So you save £10 by doing that if you can't decide. Because we, if you want to see the demo, I showed exactly how to make them on Saturday. So just go onto YouTube. Um, Easy peasy they are. The only thing that you need to purchase that you won't get in here is some, I put wadding in mine. I used H640 because it's a fusible wadding, it's a lot easier to use. You can use any wadding. Well, you will need um, a metre, well you need 56 centimetres, I couldn't get it into half a metre. But if you get our cut metre piece, which is here, like the cut metre piece, that is more than enough. So, if you bought the whole multi-pack, you'd only need to buy two of these metre pieces. So you will only need two of these. You'll need one to make one, but two to make three. Uh, one to, to make all three of them, you'd need a, me a metre, because it works out as about 56 centimetres, and some sewing thread. But honestly, if you've only just started sewing, you haven't done much sewing, this really will work for beginners. Shall I show you the panel? Oh, right, we'll do them one by one, and then I'll show you the panel. So, okay, sewing room. One panel, and you make the large, the medium, and the small. You get the printed panel and instructions. Now, on Saturday, this sold out before we even got on air. Nineteen ninety-nine. you make all three. You'll need some wadding, and that's it, um, and the instructions as well. Shed. Remember, on the panel, there is everything to make the large, the medium, and the small and then the set of instructions, and I'll show you those in a minute. We just need to get the graphics on the screen so you know which is which. And then the thatch cottage. So you get the large, the medium, and the small all on one panel, and the full set of instructions. And if you want to get the trio of trios, so that's nine in total, so all, all of these baskets, you'll get all three, that's a £10 saving and you will get everything to make all three of them. But obviously you need the wadding as well, and it's up to you whether you could use um, foam, that would make them even stiffer, or you could use a heavyweight interfacing. Uh, the wadding works really well, and they stand up. You don't need anything more than that. Um, let me get one of the panels. I'll get the, um, the sewing room one. Let me just show you what it looks like. It's quite a big panel. So on the panel, there are two for each basket. So you've got the handles here, different, obviously different length handles. The, each basket has two outers and two linings. So across the bottom, we've got the big one, the outers and the linings. And then in the middle, we've got the medium one. 
So you can see it's all there. You just have to cut it out. There's no measuring or templates. And then there's the baby one at the top. So everything is printed on there, even the cutout corners. There's also, you can see on the panel, if you can see, um, there's lots of like in the cutout corners, there's lots of little applique pieces. So you can use those in your own makes. You could use them to applique onto it. You could put one on the bottom. There are labels on there. And the handles on this one have all got sewing theme words on them. There's even some cats. So you can use all those. Are, those are just because we like to fill the space in. So that's the size of the panel to make all three. And then you will get the instructions as well, which have got all the pictures and then inside all the photos, walkthrough sections of exactly, they are really easy to make, but we have shown you in detail with all the photos of exactly how to make each of them. So if you buy the single kit, you'll get one set of instructions and one panel. But if you buy the multi one, if you, if you buy the multi one, then you'll get one set, because you only need one set. Same instructions are the same for all of them. They're all made in the same way. This is the guard. This is the potting shed. So across the bottom, we've got the big one. And look, I love the little um, tools that are on there. You've got like clippers and trowels and things. There's so much detail when you look at them, all the little house plants on all of the different parts of them. So everything is on here that you need. And then you've got all these little boxes, veg boxes and plant pots to cut out because they're all in the cut out corners rather than waste the space. So that's the potting shed. I can't see. Can you see? Because yeah. <laughs> I know I can't see what you can see. Okay. <laughs> see, I hold it up and I can't see. And then finally, the thatch cottage. So here's the thatch cottage. So again, you've got the, um, on the bottom there, you've got the big one, that's the inside. So you can see, um, you've got the bed and the sofa. And oh, I'm glad to see there's an ironing board in there already set up, ready for sewing. And then the, um, the room. So there's even um, on the side, because this is sort of country cottage kitchen theme, there's a nice Victoria sandwich and loads of jars of spices and pickles. Really good for, I filled up, I mean, I made the big one, I filled mine with apples. It makes a really nice fruit bowl. I had it in the middle of the kitchen table filled with apples in it. Lovely. Um, you can add as much or little detail as you want. When I made mine, I quilted around some of the elements. That just gives a bit of 3D relief to it. So you can see, like, I quilted around the edge of the boxes, the books, sorry. You don't need to do that, but if you want to add a bit of detail, you can do that. You could add embroidery to them. So if you were making, like, the thatch cottage front, you could embroider around the roses, around the door. I quilted along all the black lines and that makes them stand out. But again, depends how much time you want to spend. You don't have to do that. Now, if you want, if you want all three, if you can't decide which one you like the most, 49.99, so that's a 10 pound saving to buy all three. So you'll get everything to make nine storage boxes. They make brilliant presents. So get them now and then you will be ready when you need to make a present present for somebody you could fill them with a few little gifts like a very personalized hamper there's even labels on there so I made one for John for his birthday so I took one of the labels off the panel and just sewed on it John's shed because he hasn't got a shed so those are all the storage boxes um, please carry on checking out for those um, yes yeah, so okay carry on checking out for those sizes listen Listen to Anna. Um, we have got the lovely Emma coming up next, who is go has got two different kits she's going to show to us. So don't go anywhere. Don't forget to check out on your quilt kit and your storage boxes. And I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes time. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again.
We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere. Browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals. And message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PP all day. heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. For a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. 
You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Ooh. Welcome back to Sewing Street. So we've got the lovely Emma on um, air with us for this second hour of the day. Good morning, Emma. Good morning. Thank you. Lovely to have you back. Thanks a bit. It'll have me here. It's great. <laughs> we've got the um, two, two, yes. two kits today. We've got the Smitey purse. Um, Emma's going to explain why it's called Smitey and what is so lovely and special about it. And we've also got her gorgeous backpack. Really good, isn't it? What I love about this backpack, it's got a really wide, is it called a gusset? Yes. Does a backpack have a gusset? I call it a gusset. But yeah. it's really wide, you can get absolutely loads on this. I always have a backpack instead of a handbag because I find it so much easier. And you've got a pocket on the front, you've got a lovely big zip that goes around here, you've got oodles of pockets inside, and we've got it available in various different colourways. But I just wanted to show you to start with what it looks like. It's a really good size. You could even get everything for a weekend in here, couldn't you? Yes, yeah. yeah, you could. I De like that. Definitely a day out. Day out, yes, nice, nice day out. You get your whole swimming kit in there. Um, so we'll start off with the purse. Now we've got the instructions separately, and we've also got them with fabrics too. So the purse is fab. Let me show you what it, what it does first. So it's called the Smitey purse because it's small and mighty. Emma's going to explain in a minute. It's got um, a zip pocket on the front. It's got an internal pocket here. It's got a place for your cards and then one inside. Now, in, we've got the instructions separately and we've got four kits. They come with the instructions as well. So if you want the instructions on their own, here they are. So you've got instruction booklet, pattern pieces. It's all there. For $9.99, you can have just the instructions. You need two fat quarters of fabric to make this and a clasp and a zip. But that's the instructions on their own. But if you want some fabric bundles, this one is the pink Lewis and Irie. Now you can choose, so you get two fat quarters in here. So in the kit, you get the instructions and two Lewis and Irene fat quarters. And you can, because they're the same amount of fabric, you can choose whether one is external more whether one's internal up to you so 14.99 so if you think you get full instructions and two fat quarters so basically you're only paying a fiver for the two fat quarters got to be worth it so that's lewis and irene beautiful um the next bundle i've got another lewis and irene that's got um the lewis, the lewis and irene peacocks and then it's got a plain um cream is it a cream one deep plain cream so obviously i would use this one for the outside and this one and remember you get the full instructions so 40.19 40.99 that's a really really good price kit because you'll get the full instructions and the two fat quarters for just 14.99 all you have to do is choose which colorway you want it's an amazing price isn't it 14.99 obviously once you've got the instructions you can make oodles more purses um Another choice is, again, it's a Lewis and Irene, but it's a different print. It's like a leafy print. So you get that one as the main fabric, and then you get an ivory as the, um, oh, that one's vanilla, sorry. And then you get vanilla as the, like, the lining fabric. That's a very posh purse, isn't it? And remember, the instructions come as well. That's very classy, isn't it, for a purse? We'll have, a, we'll have a talk about the purse in a minute, but it isn't just a purse. It's more of like a clutch bag, I think. You can get so much stuff in it. <laughs> there we go. I look like a... Is that good? Like a, like a rack. So you get half a fat quarter of vanilla, fat quarter of the Lewis and Iron print, and the instructions for only $14.99. Amazing price. And then the final bundle for the last Mighty. I like this one. 
This one has been extremely, so again, you get the instructions. You get a fat quarter, massively popular on pre-order this one. So this is a really lovely deep navy with sort of hints of coral and teal, lovely print. And then the, um, the lining print, also a Lewis and Irene, but it's got a, it's got a print on it. So if I hold the two together, then they look lovely together. I really like that one. Over half of the stock of this one, $14.99. That's amazing, isn't it? Liberty and, so this one is Liberty. So you've got Liberty and Lewis and Irene purse for $14.99. Now that doesn't make sense actually. I do think there's some. That's an absolute bargain. It is a bargain, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Very nice. Now, when Emma was on last time with us, Mighty Put sold out, just like that. So we're going, um, Emma's going to show us how to make that one first, but I just want to get all of the kits and all the patterns for the backpack through so that you've got time to choose what you want to do before we do it. Now, the, with the backpack, the pattern comes separately with the bundle, so you can get the pattern and you can get the fabric bundles, but the fabric bundles don't have the pattern in it, if that makes sense. So with the pattern, again, you've got everything. You've got a lovely instruction booklet. Emma will be talking us through in a bit how to make it, how it all works, but you also get full-size templates in here as well. So there's no thinking about it. There's no measuring. It's just pin it on, cut it out, easy. The pattern is 10.99. And these are full-size templates, so this is really good value for money. Oh, nice paper as well. Very thick, look at that. Big full-size A3 template. Doesn't your heart sink when it says photocopy 141% and you think, not sure how. But look, because you can see like the backpack has got lots of curves and corners, very difficult to do yourself. But it's all there, easy. So there's three, no, four big sheets with all of the um, pan, all the, the um, patterns and the pattern book for $10.99. So if you want to make it in your own fabric or you want to mix and match, you've got the patterns there to do it yourself. Right, let's go through all the fabrics. Which Can I start with this one? Oh, <laughs> no. We're going to start with Mickey Mouse. This one is really limited. So obviously, you, with the backpack, you've got the main fabric that goes all the way around the front, the print one on here, and then you get the um, line, the, this one that goes around here. And is that used in the lining as well? Yeah, or you can mix and match. Okay. You can use, you know, if you've got some fat quarters or oh, so you, yes, half you a metre. Put a bit else. of your own in as yeah. well. Yeah. So in this bundle, we've got the Mickey Mouse print. This one's very limited. This is official licensed Mickey Mouse. It's got Donald Duck and Goofy and everything on it. So you get a metre of this one and a metre of natural seeded because they go together really well. You will need the pattern separately. This is $17.99 for the two metres of fabric. It doesn't include the pattern. The pattern you have to get separately. $17.99, so, but you're just, we've just given you the fabrics that you need to do it. So that's the Mickey Mouse bundle. This one, I want to do this one because I love this fabric. We've had this on air before and it's always a sellout. Beautiful velvet screen, digitally printed fabric. And the beauty of this is it doesn't fray. It's super wide, you've got way more than you need. And look at it, it's got parrots and macaws and tropical plants. What a classy backpack. If you go to a lot of these designer types um, shops, you see loads of cushions and bags made from this. Absolutely gorgeous. So, it, and I mean, this is an amazing price because not only that, you also get a meter of the plain black cotton fabric. So $24.99, you're getting two meters. So even if you're not going to make the backpack, this is an amazing bundle because this is super wide and it's lovely. It's velvet. It's, um, it's got a lovely power to it. It's extremely soft. It's very easy to sew with and it doesn't fray. And you can press it as well. Doesn't mind being pressed. So it's a velvet feel, plush fabric, absolute loads, because that is extra wide, it's beautiful, and I've made lots of things with it. Honestly, it's gorgeous to sew with. So there's that one. Then I've got another one. This 
This one has a lovely like Dijon mustard background, or is it English mustard maybe? Lovely yellow anyway. And, and it's the lovely velvet feel and it has lots of green foliage all over it. Really stunning. Imagine a back macket in there. I mean, it's 100% polyester, but it has a beautiful pile to it. And the colours are vivid and, oh, it's just gorgeous. And then with that, in the same bundle, you get a metre of teal. Because doesn't that blend beautifully with the, um, the teal in the print here? That's just normal 100% cotton fabric. $24.99 for that. And obviously, that's enough fabric to make the backpack. Or you can do what you like with it. Remember, the backpack instructions don't come with the bundle, you have to buy those separately. Which one next? Should I do this one. This is like a cotton canvas. So it's it's heavier weight than your normal cotton. Lovely dusky blue with sort of whitey cream roses and leaves and foliage. 1999 and also a meter of is that white or ivory? That's ivory. That's just your normal 100% um, cotton. This is a heavier weight canvas. 19.99. So you get a metre of this canvas and it's really wide as well. Wider than normal um, cotton. So super wide. You get a metre of this and a metre of the ivory 100% um, cotton fabric. And that's enough to make the backpack. But remember, you need to buy the instructions separately. Very difficult choice. Very different whether you go for this really sort of um, gentle canvas with roses or whether you go velvet or Mickey Mouse. Um, and then we've got three of our lovely tapestry fabrics because they are beautiful for this. So let's go for this one first. This has, um, what colour is this one? Is it biscuit? Was it beige? Oh, this canvas. Little Glasgow, love the names. These these are really super wide, beautiful to sew with as well, and really nice weight to use in a backpack. So you've got a metre of this. This is only 18.99. This one, and then you get a metre of the plain beigey coloured nude. A metre of nude because that goes together really well. But this is lovely for a backpack. Um, next one. This one is like um, checks, checkerboard. No, this is checkerboard and it has red. Have I got the wrong one? So you've got checkerboard, a metre of, and then it comes with a metre of the red 100% cotton fabric. They go together really well because that does not pick up the, the bright reds in the checkerboard. So that's that bundle. Two metres of fabric in total, metre of this, this very heavyweight upholstery fabric, sort of thing you cover chairs with, but it's brilliant for bags, particularly for that one. And then finally, sorry to rush, but I want to get through all of these so we can get, um, get over to Emma. Finally, we've got this large, these, this one is called Little Harlequins. Little Harlequin. And then you get um, a metre of nude to go with it. Gorgeous. Right, we're going to start with the Smitey purse. Um, now, if you want, if you get confused, you think I can't remember what you're on about, go on to sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live, and scroll down from there. Everything that I've gone through is there, so you can see photos of them. So if you can't remember which one, either send us in a question or have a look on there. No, our photos. I will go back through them afterwards, but I'm just quite keen to get on with the demo. Right. So with the Smitey Purse, remember you can buy the instructions on their own, but the fabric bundles have the instructions with them, so they're full kits. So you choose whether you buy the kit or the instructions on their own. Right. Hello. So Emma, first of all, about the purse, tell me, because yes. I love to know sort of why, why <coughs> did you design that? What was the, per what was the thought process the and why? The thought process was that I wanted a purse for myself. Perfect. <laughs> That's a great thought process. Um, I often design things that are either for myself or for... Um, people I know that are asking for it a, a lot of times in the Facebook community especially I see people asking for certain patterns thank you 
Um, and I make it for my family as well. So uh, just going quickly back to the Lunar Backpack, I actually designed that for my 11-year-old, mm. which is, so, you know, that's a really hard age. It's like the too cool for school age yes, yes. kind of thing. Um, so she had a big input into what she wanted oh, in that design. Okay. And then my five-year-old was like, I want one too. So then I made one for her and then I made one for me. So it really spans the ages. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's per I think it's absolutely brilliant. You see Thank kids you. within school, but yeah. I, would I would use that. Yeah, I've got one that I use for mm. my everyday bag. So that was the, the backpack. But the Smitey, exactly that. And also, um, so I designed it for myself, but also a lot of purse patterns have got a zipper going, you know, a big curved zipper going around they the edge. They do. And that can be really tricky. Um, mm. So I wanted to avoid that. It's just got a simple um, zipper along the top. So you, you have got the ability to have your coins in there. And then, um, like Bex was saying, there are the different um, slip pockets. And then you've got your cards as well. So you can put your receipts in one, your, um, you know, your stamps in another, and your, your notes in another. Um, so that was the thought process behind it, I think really. it's lovely, because I feel like you could get more in there as well, yeah. couldn't you? You could almost fit, a, you could fit a small phone in there. Well, yeah, and you could put your keys in as yeah. well, so it could be just your, that's all you need to yeah. take out you with you. you could even add on a little um, D-ring and, and clip your keys on or clip it yeah, to Yeah, that's bag. true. I think um, it's lovely, and I like, I you. do like the, th the fact that there's not the zip all the way around, because yeah. that is a bit fiddly. <laughs> it, it can be, yeah, if, you're, if you've not done so it So how, how, where do we start with this then? So, I wanted to show you, there's a little little bit um, of difference with this pattern in that there's two kind of inner uh, pattern pieces if you like um, one is slightly smaller than the other and that's going to bring it all in when you turn it out um, so I just wanted to point that out in the pattern it actually says it calls it lining and outer so just when you're going through and deciding which pieces you're going to cut out of which fabric you would just want to think about right this this one's the one with the zipper pocket so that's the one when i open it up have you so got an interfacing on that then yes what, yeah. what sort of interface so is we it? use um the uh, non-woven interfacing throughout and then the um stiff interfacing so is that this like one. a medium weight yeah that you've medium got? yeah just um, any, just any a old fusible one fusible yeah oh, medium okay. weight interfacing is great um, and then, like I say, the stiff interfacing is what gives it the structure. Um, oh, and well, that's on the outer. Oh, it's on the outer, and it's on some of the inner pieces right, as okay. well. Right, okay. So when you're coming to think about which pieces to cut, you just want to bear that in mind that the pattern pieces say lining and outer, but just have a little think, because if you want them different fabrics, like I have here, you just want to bear that in mind, basically. Um, so I just wanted to show you the, the first step is to put the stiffer interfacing onto the back of your pattern pieces. So I just wanted to show you how I've done that so that okay. when you come to do it, um, you can do that as well. And like I say, you want to think about how you're um, choosing your fabrics. Um, so on the back of these ones, we've got, this is the, the pattern piece, I'll just check which one it is, mm -hmm. the pattern piece two, and it says to cut three in lining fabric. So that's just why I wanted to point that out because as you can see, I've chosen the two different fabrics because I want oh. it to be... So you don't have to have one fabric for lining and one no, for outer, you can no, mix and match. No, I've called it that, but, that, mm. but they're all the same weight. Quilting cotton is, right. is great. I wouldn't use uh, vinyl or faux leatherette. It's just going to be a little bit too tricky to yeah, turn Yeah, with all out. the layers. Yeah. yeah, with all the layers. So definitely keep two quilting cottons and then use that interfacing. Or you could use a cotton canvas. If you had right. some leftover from your backpack, you could, okay. you could maybe do a matching one. Um, so yeah, so you want to chew, think about that when you're putting your stiff interfacing on. So um, that was, that's that little bit. So I'll put those out of the way. Also with the, the main pieces that go across the, the whole kind of width So this of stiff interfacing, is it like this Decaville? It's the Decaville, used? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. If you um, have issues with turning things through, maybe you've got some um, hand mobility issues or mm. anything like that, then you can leave out this stiff interfacing and you could double up on your normal medium weight interfacing. It's okay. just going to give a different look. Okay. Yeah, so you, you can go for a, a thinner 
interfacing if you want to, if you're worried about that. It can be a little bit tricky with all the layers. If you haven't got any issues, it's going to be totally fine. It's not super hard. I just mm. wanted to point yeah, that out. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Um, all of my patterns are tested by at least six, seven testers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> so they check. So that's something that came up. Oh, OK. Um, so it's quite interesting to know. Um, Oh, we've know, got a message things. from Becky Alexander Frost. <laughs> Morning, Rebecca, Emma, and crew. Looking forward to seeing Emma again on the channel from Becky. Oh, thanks, thank Becky. You. <laughs> oh, we know Becky. She loves a bag making, so she'll <laughs> she enjoy does. watching this. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. So we're going to start off. I'm going to show you how to do the zipper pocket. On the last show that I was on, um, I think it was May the fourth. I showed you how to do the card slots. Mm. So I thought I'd do something different. Um, if you miss that, then that's obviously on YouTube or yeah, Sewing Yeah, you can Street. watch that back if you want to. Also, all of my patterns come with full video tutorials. So they are actually up live on YouTube now. If you look for Studio 77, you can sew along with me and go step by step if you're more of a visual learner. OK, so we're going to start with the zipper pocket, like I say. And I've fused on the um, uh, Decaville onto the back. And I've got my, um, as you can see, I've got my zipper placement cut out already of the uh, Decaville, but not of the cotton, okay? And that's interfaced. One of the reasons why we interface before using the stiff interfacing uh, with the medium weight um, fusible is that the Decaville will adhere much better to interfacing than it will to regular cotton okay so that's one of the one of the reasons yeah yeah so mm -hmm. I'm going to turn that over because we've got that zipper placement cut out I'm actually going to be sewing from this side but I want to put my pocket lining on obviously on the correct side okay so this right sides together I'm going to use some double-sided tape this is just quilters double-sided tape and I'm going to lay it along the top this is just going to help uh, for placement. Helps to tear the, the double sided tape as well rather than cut it because then it's easier to peel off. Oh, okay, because you've tip. got like a jagged yeah. edge. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've right, just got my tape measure. I want to measure down by one centimetre. Oh, first of all, we want to find the middle. So I'm just going to make a bit of a crease. Might need to use my fusible, my um, friction pen, sorry. Okay, so there's the middle. Mark the middle of the pocket lining. I've done it the wrong end, haven't I? There we go. And of course, I shouldn't have taken the tape off. The, the back of the tape off so quickly, but that's I okay. <laughs> that's okay. It'll still stick. It will still stick. Right, so I'm going to measure down one centimetre and I'm going to mark up those middle lines. Okay, so that keeps it out of the seam allowance because we've got a one centimetre seam allowance throughout. And then that's centred in place. So there's the top. Nice. If we turn it over, we can see our zipper mm. placement. So now I'm going to stitch on the inside of that zipper placement oh, wow. all And around. is that on the pattern for cutting out? Yeah, the little it is, yeah. Oh, okay. So you've got that on the stiff oh, interfacing fab. pattern there, the, the zipper Oh, placement. easy then. Yeah, I've just realised <laughs> my friction pen stayed on my pattern as I was drawing around <laughs> it. <laughs> right, we're going to go over to the machine. Just move those bits out of the way. And because we've got that double-sided on the back, keeping it in place, we should be fine to just go ahead and sew that on. I'm going to start in the middle. Got that on the right. I think we're good to go. And I'm going just a smidge inside. So I'm not going on the Decaville, I'm just inside it because you're going to want to be able to turn it through. Go so backwards and forwards to start, of course. As we come to the corner, I'm going to go down a few um, uh, in length so that I can get it a little bit crisper. It makes it easier for getting right to the corner of that uh, zipper placement. So you have to sew like not on the interfacing, but just... Exactly. Use it as a guide. But nice and easy to follow that then. Yeah. It does make it a bit easier. 
Um, and then I'm going to, so I was doing 1.8, I probably could have gone down to 1.5. I'm going to go back to, where are we, 2.6. Again, I'm just coming to the end, so I'm going to go down to 1.5 this time. And as I say, that means we can get our needle in a little bit close to that corner, make it a bit crisper. And uh, we can do one more, I think. I'm going to hand crank it just so I don't get on that Decaville light. And then I'm going to go up to where we started and cast off. Oh. Cut the thread. Morning, Emma. Good to see you back on Sewing Street from Susan and Five. Aww, I know. It thank is. Thank you, Susan. She's a brilliant <laughs> demonstrator. She knows thank exactly. You. Exactly. She's a really good teach, uh, teaching. You. Do you do a, a lot of teaching? Well, I do on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for about right. two years now. So you're used to yeah, the whole just explaining how it goes. And you are very clear teacher. It's really nice to see. Aww, it all, makes, all makes perfect sense. And I like, it's nice that everyone has different tips. But I think sometimes people forget to share them because they think, oh, yeah. they're not my, everyone knows them. But they don't. Yeah. No, everyone knows no. them. So little things like tear Aww. your quilters tape are really, it's, um, it's lovely when guests share all of their Aww. tips. Good. Well, it helps everybody else, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Got to share all the tips. I'm all about sharing yeah. everything, you know. I think it's really silly when people And it's back. not, it's just I think some people, times people don't think oh, that yeah, everyone yeah, knows totally. that. Yeah, yeah. So they don't say, so but. they just, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I've cut that, oh, I've sewn that, I should say, and I'm about to cut out our, our placement hole, our zipper placement. So I'm just going to draw it on just so you can see, because sometimes it's a bit tricky to see. Um, with my friction pen, you do not need to draw it on like this, but that just shows you a bit better on the camera how we're going to cut that, okay? So then I'm going to cut along those lines, but again, you don't have to, you don't have to draw it on. Um, sometimes it's a bit easier. Um, and then at the corners, we're going to do that triangle or fork so that we go in and we want to make sure we do not cut the stitches because obviously that's not going to be good. Go in as close as you can without cutting the stitches. And then from the right side, we're going to push through our lining, our pocket lining. Oh, we've got that tape on, haven't we? So we're just going to take that tape off. And it, it will remove really easily with the quilter's tape. That's one another reason why you don't use normal double-sided, because it might be a little bit too sticky. So we want to pull it through, and we're just going to give it a bit of a tweak and a pull. And don't be kind of scared to, to show it who's boss. <laughs> Put it in its place. We want to make sure it gets right into the corners. <laughs> but I guess because you've got the thickness of the Decaville, it's almost easier than yeah. without it because yeah. you've got a nice edge. Exactly. So yeah. Good so idea. I've not, not used it. that for that kind of opening. Yeah. So go. I do it with the the backpack as well. It's mm. very similar um, t technique, but you do it against the foam on the on the right, backpack okay. rather than Decaville. And does that work in the same just as well? Yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. it's not, uh, you can't pull against it as much because it's not as um, stiff kind of thing. Yeah, but it gives but a it nice... it helps, yeah. Okay. And then, of course, we want to press it just to really make sure that that's nicely in place. I need to get one of these irons. I know, I've got one, I love it. Yeah, it's really good. <coughs> I'd want for Christmas. <coughs> the other reason why I did the stiff interfacing before I came as well is because it, um, you need to let it cool after you do it, after oh, you place okay. it on. Yeah, because if you don't, I've done it before. And sometimes in demonstrations I have to you know, do yeah. it instantly. Um, and it doesn't adhere as well. <coughs> it can come up, which is annoying when you're bursting the bag or, or what have you. What do you mean? You, you have to let the that, like the glue from the fuse. You know, oh, the so you glue. press it on, yeah. and then you let, and that's and the, what's the cooling process that makes it stick? Yeah, it helps. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So when you think it's stuck, it's not 
it sticks more. It might, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. Oh, that's, so yeah. I've been told. Well, that makes sense though. Yeah, I have found that if I've kind of fused the stiff interfacing on and then immediately used it, it does, you know, and then a bit later you come to birth it and it, and it comes away right. and it's like, oh, it's really oh. annoying. <laughs> so you, you need to let it, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it just helps. It that just does helps. give a really neat edge. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so then we're going to get our zipper. Let's move that out of the way, actually. We'll get our zipper. Um, and <coughs> one thing I'm going to do with the zipper is I'm going to cut off those metal ends because they can be a bit tricky. I'm not going to use those scissors. <laughs> use someone else's scissors. <laughs> I can use my don't, paper scissors. Yeah, don't use your own scissors. Use someone else's. <laughs> I'm not going to use my fabric scissors. Never use your fabric scissors to cut through um, zippers. Never, ever. You can use it on the like the tape bit, but mm. not on the teeth. So I'm just going to cut those metal ends off. And then I'm going to make sure it's the right length. So open it a smidge. And then I'm going to cut it down to the width of the lining. And I'm going to give me a little bit more to play with. So there. And then I'm going to burn the ends. If I'm a lighter. Okay. So you obviously be super careful if you're doing this, um, and you just kind of show it to the flame. That's what I say. You're right. <laughs> you don't. You don't want the whole thing going up. If it if it does, just blow it out. It's not. You know, it won't. It yeah. Won't I always. Well, I've done that fire. a lot with um, <laughs> tape, ribbon, but I've not done it with yeah. a zip. Yeah. Yeah. So it seals it just exactly the same way as ribbon. Exactly the just same. Just stops those for it. Does it seal the yeah. teeth? It doesn't seal the teeth. Just no. the tape. So your pull can definitely still oh, come okay. off. Oh, OK. That's a shame. So, yeah, it's a bit annoying. Be nice <laughs> if you could do that. But I've never done it with a zip. That's such a yeah, good idea. Yeah, so it's, really, it's, just, it's just another thing to help yeah. um, keep it all intact. Right, I'm going to, to do a bar tack over the ends of the zippers just so that there's no way that that pull can come off. Um, that's quite a good habit to get into. If you've got a thicker zip, this is a number three, I think. If you've got a number five, you can actually sort of feed the teeth into each other to keep it. Um, okay. If, if you pull the, if you do yes. the pull, it will still come out, off. But um, it just helps a bit more with um, when you're sewing it all on. So I'm going well in the seam allowance. I know that that's definitely not going to be anywhere near where I need to stitch. So I've got my two little bar tacks there, slip off the threads. Always, I always cut my threads as I go. I was listening to a podcast and they said that they cut all their threads at the end of the project. Oh, but then they all get caught in. Yeah, then you lose them, don't you? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what I mean, you forget about them. Well, yeah, you do. I mean, because if you do it later, it's like really hard. But also, yeah. when you then look on the back, you've got all loose ends that are then being sewn into the next seam. Yeah. So that's very strange. Yeah, yeah I didn't get I that. I mean, I'm sometimes a bit impatient and maybe don't snip them off as much as I oh, well, as yeah. I should. <laughs> but I do like I do try and do it as you go, just because it all gets caught up, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape again. Absolutely love my double-sided quilters tape. Really important that you buy the sewing one and not the other one, like I said. Um, so I'm going to place that on the two edges. Well, it's just a quick way to it to be a bit neater isn't it Super saves the quick. tacking yeah it saves the tacking if you're doing zips you either need to tack them like you say mm. hand tack them or um use the tape i know which method i prefer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, i hate tacking <laughs> oh that bit's coming away especially with bags you know there's it, it really doesn't matter it's not like it's gonna go against your skin or anything like that then we want to place ooh, our zipper inside that hole that we've just made and line it up. So we want to make sure that the edge is lining up with the edge of our lining. Mm. And you can tweak it with the, with the um, double sided as well. So I've kind of placed it on there, just going to make sure on the back, yeah, that's OK. I'm happy with that. It's lined up OK. It's a bit more on that side, but that's no biggie. And that I'm is so neat, 
isn't it? I love <laughs> love that. I mean, that's so satisfying. So when yeah. you open up your purse, and that's the first thing you see. Yeah, exactly. You've got a really Ooh, nice. That's lovely. I um, want to make one of these now. <laughs> and then you can you can tweak it, like I say, just to get it really nice and centralised, um, and get it, you know, looking as neat as you can. Oh, extra thread there. So I think I'm almost happy with that. Just going to do that top one a little bit more. And then we're going to top stitch it. Now I do need to change over to my zipper foot. So I will do that. You can sometimes get away with not using a zipper foot on it, but. Just in case. Just in case, <laughs> I think we'll. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is extremely neat. I like it. Yeah, I think the Decaville, like you said, mm. I think it definitely helps. So we have got the Decaville for sale if you need a piece of that. We do have that. Um, that's on the website. If you go on to sewingstreet.com, click on watch live and um, scroll down, you'll see all of the interfacings on there. Okay, so I'm going to pop back over to the yeah, machine. You can use, um, if, you, yeah, if you have that, you can just use two layers of the interfacing instead if you want. So if you did it with the turning it inside out, you can use that instead. Um, so while Emma does that, I'll just recap the kits and then we'll move on to the backpack. So the pattern on its own, 9.99 over half of the stock of this has gone so if you want this one you need to get it in your basket and checked out that is the pattern on its own no fabric but it has got all of the big full size templates as well even with the bit with the cutout for the um, decorator which is fab Be that makes quite a big difference having that because then once you've made one you can make loads of them only 9.99 for all of that now the pattern comes in each of the following bundles well so all the bundles, this is the bundle that um, Emma's working with at the moment. So this is the one that Emma's working with at the moment. And then it comes obviously with the pattern. So in with all of these kits for the Smitey Purse, the pattern comes with the fabric. Please do, right, please do check out. There are only six remaining of that one. All of the others are listed on the website. So Emma, if you just show us what you've... Yep. So I'm going to do the top stitching now. Okay. So you want to start with a long tail, then you can pull it through from the back. And I'm doing a three stitch length because it's top stitching. And I'm a couple of millimeters away from that edge. Turn the work and then go down the short edge. Oops. Lift the foot with the needle down and turn. And then we're almost back at the start. line it up as best as I can and then I'm going to pull the work off cut the threads and then I can pull the threads through from the back and you get a bit of a neater finish if I might need a pin to pull it through okay and then you can tie the threads from the back so that you don't have to do reverse stitching yeah exactly I know that I haven't matched it up completely, perfectly from the beginning. And the first one did do a locking stitch. So I'm going to have to cut that. <laughs> but on yours, <laughs> when you haven't done a, a locking stitch, you can see that I haven't done it perfectly there. But, you know, mm. when you're not on live TV, you yeah. can do it a lot neater, I'm sure. And you I'm can sure. do it that way. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. Shall we move on to mm. the backpack now? Yeah. So while you mm -hmm. sort those out, get yourself sorted. Okay. So the backpack pattern, now this is available only on its own. So in the pattern you get the full inst pattern instructions and all the templates. There are four A3 sheets on here. The pattern templates are full size, so you've just got to cut them out, pin them onto your fabric or draw around them and that's it, you can make loads of them. 10.99. Tells you on here all the different, um, the fabric quantities and the, um, interfacings or 
foams and all the fabric and the zips and things you need but 10.99 is there a video for this one emma yeah yeah there's a okay. video for both yeah and it's all on YouTube. Um, for my glasses and it's all the details of that are on here as well yeah it's got the youtube channel um, you can just search for studio 77 on youtube it will come up and it'll all come up so yeah. that's brilliant so yeah. you if you know sit down if you love the pattern you really want to make the backpack and you think oh is this going to be a bit difficult for me i've only done this i've only done that watch the whole um, video and do it step by and then watch the whole thing that I always think and then go back and make it as it goes along and keep pressing pause but this does help I think if you watch the whole yeah. thing from beginning to end because you can see yeah. where you're going yeah and there's timestamps in there as well so at the bottom in the description of the YouTube channel of the video sorry um, you can find all the different things so say you just get stuck on the zipper pocket mm. you can click and, and just go straight to that bit oh brilliant yeah. that's great so yeah. I watched the whole thing through but you know if you think I really would love to make a whole backpack don't know whether I'm up to that level watch the U YouTube and learn and Emma will teach you as she goes along so that's the pattern on its own 10.99 we do have lots of different bundles None of the bundles have the pattern in them, just remember that. They are all on the website if you go on to watch live. So what have you used in this backpack, interfacing-wise? So that wise? one's got the foam interfacing, oh, okay. this one. Um, right, so that's the Styleville. The Styleville foam, yeah, fusible okay. foam. That's got, so that's got a nice structure. Mm, it has, it, makes, it does make a difference. You can just use your fusible fleece. No, so has that one got fusible yes, fleece? Yes, that Let one's fusible fleece. Off the shelf so I can feel it. That's yeah. a high shelf, isn't it? <laughs> Who's that made for? Um, and then this, one, right, so this one is with the um, Styleville foam. That one is, oh no, it's in with the Bozal in our form. Same, same thing, just different brand, but yeah. the same thing. <laughs> um, so you can see that sort of stands up. And then this one has got fusible wadding in it. Yeah. So it still has the structure, mm -hmm. 8640. I mean, it's got the same structure. So that would be good if you're going on holiday and you want to put it in your luggage. Oh, okay. You could squish it down, couldn't you? I mean, that other one would squish down as well. Oh, well, I mean, the foam is brilliant because you can squish it down and it comes yeah. back again. Yeah. But it just depends on the structure you've got or what yeah. you've got, and it depends on what you need, doesn't it? Mm. So the um, H640 is in the one that's on the screen at the moment. So it just depends what effect you want. Yeah. But either is good. Either is fine. Totally fine. Just depends yeah. which one you fancy. Okay. Yeah. So cut the fabric out yeah so we're gonna go again with the lining because the lining has got all the pockets in it and there are loads of pockets to, so there's like through that. two slip pockets yeah and a zip pocket yeah yeah so again on the last pocket, show pocket, pocket. I showed um, everybody how to do the zipper pocket on the on the lining so I wanted to move on from there if you watch that one um, again you can watch it watch it back so I've done so exactly the same as I did for the Smitey purse. I've done that zipper pocket. So I'm gonna pull that out the way and I'm just gonna put a pin in the top there so that it doesn't get underneath anything else because <coughs> we do not want to sew through that pocket. Then we're going to be making a pen pocket that you might have seen that goes just underneath it. Mm. And then we've got a large slip pocket that goes underneath that. Now, um, you'll see when we if we have time to come to it, the larger one, as you can see, is way too wide. And that is because this one is actually a cup holder. Well, I noticed that because it doesn't yeah. have a bottom to it, it does it? It doesn't have a bottom, yeah. So you can put your so water bottle. you can bottle, put your hand all the way through your cup, it. Your coffee cup. Oh, that's so If it's good. a large coffee cup or a yeah. pretty normal size water bottle as well. And then there's a slip pocket here that's for your phone or a notebook. So it just keeps that upright, but it doesn't yeah. need the bottom, does it? Stops it stops Oh, I think that's genius. Over, yeah. Genius. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is. Because so, um, I carry that kind of thing all the time <laughs> and then to, and try and keep it upright yeah. when something Especially in. Especially if it's a coffee cup. Absolutely. I'm never completely convinced they're not No, I'm not either. <laughs> So we're going to do the pen pocket first. Um, if you've got a directional fabric, you just want to think about which way up. You want to make sure that the um, print is going from the fold down kind of thing. Obviously, as you cut it, it's going to go one way or the other. So you're just going to be thinking about that in a minute. So we're going to open it up and we're going to put it wrong side, uh, sorry, right sides together, wrong sides out. Okay, and then we're going to sew it around just like you would do um, any other kind of bagging out project and we're going to leave a hole in the bottom of a few inches. Pop some pins in. 
This, uh, so I've used the canvas, we were talking about this mm, earlier, I've yeah. used the canvas on the inside to coordinate with the cotton. Um, if you're doing, if you're using canvas for any of the pockets, in the project it tells you you need to interface all the linings. Right. You don't need to for if canvas. If you're using canvas. So it's a okay. little bit of a cheap way It's quite way nice though well, to use the outer good. fabric for the pockets. Exactly, yeah, because when you open yeah. it in you've got that nice. peak of the outer fabric as well. Okay, so I'm going to stitch around that, like I say, leaving an opening at the bottom. And I want to go down to 2.6. There we go. And I want to make sure it's one centimetre from the edge. This isn't my machine, so I'm... Normally on my machine, I know exactly where the needle mm. needs to be. To ma what I like to do is I like to move the needle over so that it's exactly the right seam allowance from the edge of the foot. So I'm going to move that needle over and then you don't have to think about it. You can just follow the edge of your foot for your guide. Yeah, I have uh, some of them written down. So like on mine, it's minus 1.8. Yeah, that's a Minus good idea. something, and I have them all written down, yeah. so I don't ever have to measure it again. That's a great Because then it doesn't matter whether you're using imperial or metric. If you know what the, yeah. the setting on your machine is. Yeah, exactly. Needle down, foot up and turn, and then we're going to finish about an inch or so in. I do flip between um, inches and centimetres. It's a tricky one, isn't it? I, yeah. I, I do as well. And My machine plate is here set in metric, so I tend to sew in metric. Uh, okay. But I like cutting in imperial, which is really confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's anything other than an inch or half an inch or quarter of an inch, I go to centimetres. <laughs> I like a centimetre though, because it's neither a quarter of an inch nor half an inch. It's just yeah. somewhere lovely in between. Yeah, it's a really nice measurement. <laughs> uh, centimetres are more accurate anyway. Yeah. Oh, push the, uh, the wrong button there. On my machine, that's where the, <laughs> the backwards and forwards is. <laughs> okay, so that's stitched. And then we're going to snip our corners. Our triangles off for turning and then we're going to turn it out the right way and I added this in because again it spans the ages this pattern but everybody needs a pen <laughs> don't they yes bag. yes always and it's a little bit wider than a pen as well so you could put your your lip gloss in there or something like that oh okay you know you do and i've normally got mine lying around the bottom of the bag so that's quite yes. nice i need one of these definitely <laughs> um i've forgotten my pokey tool so i'm just going to use a pen to pull the corners out so you do, do have to be super careful if you're doing this Okay. Then I'm just going to press that turning under so that that's ready for sewing. Ooh. And press out that cor those corners. Okay, nice, nice, neat little pocket. Yeah. And this is when you want to think about your um, direction of your print. You know, it might be, you might need to turn it over basically okay. to make it work. I don't know that this has a direction particularly, so I'm going to go with um, that way. I don't think it does. No. It's, I think it's almost sort of all over. Mm. And because the sort of berry leaves seem to all be facing in different directions. Yeah. I'm going to go with that way. Then we want to find the centre. Now you could have marked this on before, because I like to use friction pens, I didn't because I knew I was going to need to press it. Um, so now is as good a time as any. So I'm going to mark the middle of there. And then on the pattern, you see those dashed lines? I'm going to fold it in half on those dashed lines. 
and then I'm going to fold it on the other two lines as well. Or you could, actually I'm going to do it that way so I can see what I'm doing. Or you could um, put notches in the pattern as well, if you've got a pattern notcher. But this is the, uh, the way to do it if you don't. And then what you can do, again you can do this beforehand with chalk if you want to. You want to line up, sorry, the middle line with that middle dash line and then we can fold it over because we made that fold before and draw a line on with our friction pen and then making sure that that's in the right place because if you, if you just did it to one side of course the pattern piece has got the seam allowance in it so you need to bear that in mind, that's why we're doing it sort of centralised. Okay. Make sure that's centralised fold that back on that line and then we've got that line there for our next stitch line fold that back and we've got our final our third line okay so now our lines are on our fabric it might be difficult for you to see but they're there <laughs> and then we're going to lay it on to our pattern now I do just need to double check how far up down that is because I didn't remember memorize that bit which was a bit silly I don't think you have to mem memorize everything no luckily it's not an exam <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> da, um, da, da. so right, impressed with Emma faster. calm informative and clear Aww. camera worked excellent today too thank you oh Aww. thank you very much Bruce well, thank you, Margaret, for the message. Oh, <laughs> there's Bruce, a little wave for his excellent camera work today. I know it's really good because it's lovely to be able to see. The whole point of having you here is we want to see exactly what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you very much for that message. Um, so I've lined it up. We've still got that central mark that I did, you know, when I put the zipper in because we need to centralise that. Uh, so I'm going to go from that and I've got that central li line there and I'm 11 centimetres down it does say that in the pattern and I've got a mark at the bottom as well again that might be difficult to see because it's in chalk um, but I'm just lining that up so it's really nice and centralised okay then I'm going to put some pins in triple check that we're, that we're good pop some pins in And then we're going to sew around, all the way around the outside first. That's in place. So we're sewing along those two long edges and the bottom edge. And again, I'm top stitching, so I'm going to do it at a three. And I like to, even if it's got a locking stitch, I like to go backwards and forwards at the top of a pocket because that's going to get a lot of wear on it. And I'm a few, a couple of millimetres from the edge, not very far. Taking my pins out. I do often sew over my pins, but when we're going through the canvas and the interfaced, Backing, I don't really want to take my chances. No. <laughs> Machine sometimes just gets a bit cross. Yeah, exactly. I end up talking to it again, oh, all right, sorry. <laughs> right, we've only got 10 minutes. Okay. If that. We have got to run, run over a bit. But we're just running over on all of them. Because <laughs> we want to make sure everyone's got enough time to demo. So we're just going over a little bit on all of that. But once you've learnt this um, technique, you know, to add these pockets in, you could even use these pattern pieces for any bag, really. Well, it's brilliant, isn't it? Because, you know, anything that you think just an extra pocket, even just keep one thing, a packet of chewing gum in place, yeah. really makes a difference <laughs> to really finding does. stuff. Because it's quite a deep bag, which is great, you can put loads in it, the important things you need to be able to find. Yes, exactly. So I've just sewn around the outside, and now I'm going to sew along those two lines, not the central line, okay? It's really important. We're going to do that later. 
or you would do that later in the pattern. I don't think we'll have time to do it, but in this demo. Backwards and forwards again. So I'm just following that friction line really nice and clear to follow. And go backwards and forwards at the end. Oh. Machine says no. And then we go on that other line. Oh. And you can see by having that pocket um, clipped up out of the way or pinned up out of the way, it's not going to. Um, oh, of course, because you've already put your zip pack pocket yeah. on, and you really don't want to stitch through that. It'd be really easy. Yes, to I think that. I. Yeah. Sort of thing I'd forget, and then think, <laughs> oh, yes, <yeah>. so through. <laughs> Okay, so that's the pen pocket in place. That's, you can see it's quite quick to do. Um, how much time do we have? Shall I keep going? Yeah, three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll see how far I can get. On three, minutes. yes. This is no called pressure. fast pocket. <laughs> so we give you just talk us, us through it. So we're, we're doing same thing, uh, right sides together. Um, I'm going to live on the edge and I'm not going to pin it. Go, just go for it. I'm going to go for it. Uh, we're doing exactly the it's same. It's like free sewing. Oh no, we're not doing the same. Sorry, nearly did it wrong. We're just going along the bottom edge. We do not need to go along those two short edges this time. But there is a full video link to this on um, Emma's YouTube. So if once you get the pattern home and you get your fabric bundle, just go on there, watch the whole thing through, because then it gives you an idea of where you're heading. And even though you get, might get to think, oh, I don't know how to do that bit, then when you're making it, you can see which bits you want to watch more closely. But I always think it's quite useful. I know we don't do it, like we don't pre-wash our fabric, we don't read all the instructions, but it is quite useful to see where you're heading to. Particularly things like not sewing through a pocket, because you think, oh yeah, I must remember not to do that and I think that helps so Emma does have her own tube, YouTube video and we'll have the pattern for a video of the purse and the backpack yeah on there it's all on there so you could even watch it before you get the pattern prep yourself you could yeah while you're waiting for it to arrive and um, so I've turned that the right way out now and then we can give that a quick press So this is like a sleeve rather than a pocket. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant, it's a brilliant idea, love it. And then what you need to then do is, uh, I'm not going to check the pattern, I'm just gonna go for it because of time. Um, <laughs> but you'll, you'll have on the pattern how far down it needs to go. I know it's roughly about there. Um, and then you want to baste along those two edges. So you baste that one in place and then you scoot that one over, make sure it's lined up so that it's straight and then you base the other Because that edge. will be in the seams later. Exactly, yeah. So that all gets caught in the seams. And then you, um, once you've basted those in place, you then go along the bottom to seal that pocket so that that then makes a pocket. And then you go up through the middle and you catch that middle Which is that center of one. the center of the pen pocket. Yeah, and that keeps it And in then place. you get a pocket and a sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, then you get your pocket and you get your it's sleeve. It's really good, really good. And keeps Thank everything you. up. I love that, love that. Well, thanks, <laughs> um, Emma, that has been fab. Thank you. Really good. So you'll be back with us in an hour. Yes, yes. To do... Sunny yes, days. so I've just... Yes, yeah, so the little pouch with the sewing scissors. Yes. How did I just, I was just like, yes, gone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we just went through all of that. So we'll, we'll see you back to do another yeah. couple of little bags. But that has been brilliant. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, so I'll just go through the patterns again and I will see you back here in an hour. Mm. So the two patterns, we've got the bag pattern, 10.99. Though you get all of the um, templates. Remember, these are full size A3 templates, four sheets, and the pattern booklet as well. That's for the, um, the backpack. If you want just the pattern for the purse, we do have that as well. The Smitey purse, that's $9.99. And all of the um, kits and all the bundles of fabric are all on the website. Just go onto sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live and scroll down from that. We're going to go for a quick break. And we will be back in a couple of minutes' time with Tracy from the Earl and the Sewing Cat, who's got her fantastic applique and dressmaking patterns. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. 
Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the program guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet. Then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Morning, welcome back to Sewing Street, or welcome back if you've just joined us. Gosh, a busy morning, got so, so much going on. Um, we've got Tracy from the Owl and the Sewing Cat here with me now. We've got so much products, we've just been moving everything off and putting everything back in, so I'm sorry for the slight delay. Um, we have got so many fab products here, so I'm going to run through them first, and then we'll meet Tracy and go through all how it all works. Now, we've got bundles of dressmaking patterns and we've got bundles of applique patterns and you can buy them either as printed paper or you can buy them as a USB stick and we'll talk about that in a minute or you can buy them all singly. Now everything is on the website so if you go onto sewingstreet.com click on watch live and scroll through you can see that I'm not going to we're not going to run through them all singly but it is all on there and if you've got any questions just ask me. So if you buy, I'm going to go through the bundle because if you buy the bundle, you get a free pattern, which is always good. So this is the dressmaking bundle. So this is the dressmaking bundle. Now in this one, this is the paper versions. Now look how lovely they are. Look, really lovely. Come in nice um, brown paper envelopes. So this is what you get in this bundle. Now this is amazing. Look at the price, $49.99 and you are getting all of this. So you get the simple jersey top pattern. And remember, we will go through these again in detail with Tracy so you can see exactly what they look like because she's got all samples here. Um, you get the winter cozy, like kind of a poncho pattern. Then you get the easy fit top pattern. Well, that's a thick one. Um, the size ranges are sizes 10 to 28 for this one. So you get that one. Keep them going. You get the waterfall cardigan pattern. All of this, all of this, and as your freebie, you get the Lucille bag. So it's amazing value for money because you're getting one freebie, and by buying them all together, they're reduced as well. So that's all of them, and they are all printed paper patterns. We will go through them in detail in a minute, but all of those for $49.99, which is fantastic. Now, if you would prefer, prefer to buy the USB, we'll talk about that in a moment, but that's, um, that comes in this little plastic box, and basically you plug it into your computer and you print it out. That's $38.99, so obviously you have to print this yourself, but you get exactly what I've gone through with the other one. You get the bag pattern for free, you get the waterfall cardigan, the easy fit top, um, the winter cosy pattern, and the simple jersey top. That's all on a USB stick that you just pop into your computer and you print it out yourself. All of that for $38.99. That is amazing value for money. Absolutely amazing. Right, those are all the dressmaking patterns. But if you want to do, as well as or instead of, applique instead, we've got the same sort of arrangement. So we've got all of the patterns. Now, these are brand new to us. First time ever on Sewing Street today. So we start off with the Home Sweet Home Cushion. Got all the samples here as well, I'll show you in a minute. Actually, you can see um, the cushion up behind me on the shelf. That's so cute, isn't it? That's really nice. And you think you get all of the templates of these. You could use these for anything. Once you've, Even if you made the cushion, you can use them for loads of different things. So you're getting this pattern. You're getting the applique apron. I don't forget, in this pattern, there's all the um, pieces to make either the sewing apron 
or the gardening well you can make both because you've got basically two aprons in there whether you're a sewer or a garden or both or you can make one apron with all of them on you see I do all that one then you get the caravan applique tote bag that's so cute look at that really like that so you know we've got to all be using reusable bags all the time haven't we make your own I love that one that's perfect for your holidays as well and I'm finished the cat applique tote bag isn't that sweet just think you know all those scraps of fabric you can use up to make this as well bit of calico for the background and loads of scabs um that's directly behind me on the shelf you can see there it is there's the cat applique toe it's gorgeous it's even got a little bell um dogs are more your thing there's the dog i keep going it's, i can't believe we're getting all these patterns 49 49.99 there's the dog he's lovely he's behind me as well really lovely and you get the family tree love this one cushion pattern so that you can make your own family tree um and you can you get the instructions to make the quilt you do so yes. you can make <laughs> we'll show i'll um, show you that in a moment but you get the instructions to make a quilt a family tree quilt instead which we will show tracy will explain in a minute and then you get the free pattern is the applique peg bag so we're getting how many are we getting one two three four five six patterns plus the applique the family tree quilt and the peg bag all for just 49.99 and they are beautiful aren't they they're really you know beautifully printed packaged in these lovely brown paper everything you need is in there where else would you be able to get that 49.99 so lovely to see tracy on sewing street i'm just making my sally shop shopper bag fab prices for patterns from annette okay it is oh that's thank a lovely you. message thank you <laughs> message jojo morning lovely to see tracy back her patterns are great easy make and easy to wear very helpful on an email too if you get stuck thank you jojo it's <laughs> so nice to have your messages and feedback because it's you that make everyone else want to do it because it's your recommendations that are the most important to us so those are the paper patterns obviously the same as the dressmaking if you would rather have the usb stick with all of that on 38.99 so you get all of those patterns that i've just gone through including the free patterns but on a usb stick instead so um anyway morning tracy Good morning, morning. morning. <laughs> Can you, what is a usb so if anyone's watching going what well, i don't know what that is yeah so let me explain the two different ways that we do our patterns so i've always found patterns is pattern storage is a problem if you're like me you end up loads like this you use it once you never want to use it again lost pieces it's really frustrating so we've got the two versions as we we're saying so you can either buy it full scale which comes as we saw in those lovely envelopes with the washer they've got a gusset on the side so they'll take it even when you've cut it all up so if you're buying it as a printed pattern it will come like this on heavy duty paper that you can use time and time again and you're going to get all sizes if you're doing the dressmaking so you're going to get size 10 up to size 28 so whether you're buying it uh, the dressmaking or the applique ones you're going to get full scale on heavy duty paper so that's the printed ones however we've now introduced the usb because again this is great storage people have been collecting these um, and having a nice little set on your shelf so it's got all the designs on the front and what you do is you pop the usb in there they're all engraved with the Alan sewing cat name on there and the collection number so you can make sure you've got the right one back in the right case you pop that in your computer and then there's two files i've separated them out so you've got one file that's got your instructions in and the other file has got your pattern in because some people don't want to print all the instructions our instructions really do take through it step by step so there's a lot of photographs in there as well so some people don't like to be printing those off and that's fine you can keep the instructions on your usb and then you can download it and use it on your ipad have that next to your machine or print them if you want however you want to work and then you've got the file for your patterns and i guess so, you could print them onto different colored papers as well exactly you? yeah any Paper. You have problems you can, with reading on different colours. Yeah, of course. You can recycle your paper as well. So, yeah, however you want to do it. You're going to pop your paper in, cheapest paper you want. It doesn't really matter, whatever paper you want to do it on. Now, they're really simple. They're not shaded, so it's not going to use a lot of ink. As you can see, there's really not much ink goes into those. So when you print it out, what you're going to have, first of all, you're going to have this sheet here, which is your plan. Okay, so it tells me that this pattern is going to take six sheets of paper, 
and then you print it off. It's already going to be printing to scale, so don't worry about that. Um, you just print them out, and then we're going to follow that guide to stick them together. So, for example, these are five and six. So I know, looking at my guide, that I need five and six to go at the bottom. I've put the little triangle marks so that you can line them up. So you simply take those, you're going to fold that edge over, you're going to line those up, and then you're going to tape that together. Okay, And then you just carry on until you've got your printed one here. Obviously, the bigger the pattern, the more pieces you're going to need mm. to tape together to do. There is a little scale on here as well, so if you want to check, if you're a bit unsure whether your printer is printing correct to scale, you can check it on there. But the really nice thing with using them on the USB is that you can print it over and over again. So say you lose this little bit here. Okay. Say your friend says, oh, can I borrow that pattern? You mm. lend it to them, you know you're probably never going to get it back. <laughs> no offence to your friends, but we all have all the best intentions. Of course, now with the USB, it means you can just print them a copy, no problem. Just print them a copy and lend it to them to that way and with the dressmaking it means that you can print all the different sizes so if you're like me and your size varies so you might be a 12 one month you might be a 14 the next it means that you can print off a 10 12 14 mm. it doesn't matter you can print those different sizes and use them as and when you need to so that's the joy of the USB so we're offering them both because some people still want the printed patterns not a problem if that's how you like to work they are all there then you simply cut out along the size and the guide that you that you want and you are ready to go or if you want the USB wow. then you print it yourself onto A4 paper. Brilliant. So if we start with the dressmaking patterns, yes. um, you're going to show us the different examples. So if, if people haven't seen any of your designs, um, talk me through the dressmaking. What in, what's inspired you? What do you like making? Yeah. What's and you are wearing I am one. Wearing one. You <laughs> are wearing, wearing the, the simple jersey top. Yeah, bottom. exactly. So what I like to do is to make really simple projects. Okay, they've got to okay. be quick because we're all short of time these days, and I don't want anything that's difficult to make. So no zips, no darts, no fitting or anything like that. These are simple shapes and styles that are going to suit everyone. So the one I'm wearing now is that simple jersey top that we spoke about. So it's a bat wing style. We'll do a quick demo in a minute. Really easy to make. Of course, you can lengthen it, shorten it's, if you want yeah, it's to. it's beautiful. It's so flattering. Thank you. And I find um, I can just make it in all different fabrics, mm. and it's going to look so different. Size 10 to size 28. And I'm picking styles that are going to suit every, st every shape yes, and style. Yeah. And what I really want, things that I can just throw on I feel like I've made a bit of an effort but mm -hmm. without having to sit pressing and ironing yes, and, yeah. and messing around so this is the um, yeah so the one that I'm wearing is a simple jersey top then we've got here the waterfall cardigan I've brought a capsule collection together today of pieces so we've got mm. some that are going to be really nice and light bright for the summer but also a couple of layered pieces because we know in this weather <laughs> you know one minute we're really hot well next yesterday minute, we needed cardigans exactly. Saturday we needed raincoats yes. I was so actually this exactly. is perfect. So I bought something that hopefully is going to suit this English weather that we're having. So this is our waterfall cardigan. You can let it just waterfall down. You could button it up like this if you want to. You could let it fall oh, like that. Nice. So put a nice brooch there. We even, even put a mm. hack on our website. So if you go to alanandsewingkelp.com, we've done a hack there for free that will print off a little pocket if you want to put a pocket in it too. So that's our lovely waterfall okay. cardigan. And just, it looks different in different fabrics, I guess. Yeah, and it just works as that extra layer. So mm. you're still going to look smart. You could even wear this to a wedding, out to yeah. dinner. Depending on the, the fabric. house as a separate cosy yeah, layer. Beautiful. It's going to go through all those things for you. The stripy one is the one that I'm wearing. So again, just a different version of that mm. bat wing top that I'm wearing. So nice, simple, quick jersey style that we will make up. Don't worry that it's in jersey. We're only using jersey for the stretch. So for the comfort, mm. we're not using it because it's a tight fitting thing. So okay. therefore it's going to be easy to sew. So do not worry. Right. Then we've got our easy fit top. This love one, that, really I love lovely. the fabric on that one. Yeah. It's beautiful, and it isn't just it? Flows it just drapes. And just drops over the shoulder. We've got it on a male mannequin here. So excuse that, but I will try mm. and pop it on later so that you can see. It's got a nice little cuff. So it's a simple one to make. We've done really easy processes, but again, it's one of those styles that suits all shapes. Yes, it's and lovely. I find in the hot weather, I don't want to wear things that are too clingy. So everything I've got it's just got that drape and well that's good for holidays as well isn't it yeah so all these things kind of roll up really well mm. I mean these samples have been rolled up in the back of your <laughs> car you know and, and then, then it's you lovely because you can go with it can be smart or not smart exactly and put the extra layer on it so that's our easy fit like top that. again can suit all shapes and sizes as well this one very mm. flattering and then we've got our cosy top okay like a poncho like you said just a really simple extra layer but it looks elegant doesn't it, it? Does. rather than yeah, a it fluffy does. cardigan mm. or and you know zipped yes. up fleece Oh, it's, it's going to keep you really warm. Just, 
does look very elegant, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the kind of thing that you can just throw on, even when you're sitting in front of the sofa. Yes, you yeah. Know, or you're going out for dinner, you don't know whether it's going to be cold or warm. You can just throw that on, still with a big chunky necklace or scarf Lovely. if you want to jazz it up, or just as that extra layer. Mm. Maybe you're sitting around in a wheelchair, you know, put something Without the sleeves keep. and everything, but yeah. you can then really layer or not layer with it. I really like that. Yeah, I think that's and again, gorgeous. I you know, seems to suit lots of shapes mm. and sizes. Then we've got our freebie bag. So this is a zip top bag. So all our bags are going to be done slightly different methods. So that if you are new to sewing or brushing up on your skills, they're all going to teach you something different. So we've got an adjustable strap here, a zip. It's been one of our really popular bags, a really nice And one. that one's free with the collection? That's free. Wow. So you, if you buy the collection, so you can get them individually, but if you buy the whole collection together, you're going to save money on the individual prices. Plus you're going to get that freebie too. Well, that's your capsule wardrobe, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you save money. I mean, the last time you were on, and we, we sold out? Yes. So that we just make a batons. Yeah. <laughs> they are lovely. So what are you going to demo for us first? So I'm going to demo the, first I'm going to start with the one that I've got on. So okay. the simple jersey top. Just, if you're new to dressmaking, so quick, so easy. So I'll show you how to so do So the pattern tells you how much fabric you need? Yeah, the pattern's going to tell you that. Yeah, all size, tw uh, size 10 to size 28. Yeah, and on the front of the patterns, it's going to tell you what your requirements okay. are. But if you've got any questions, just email us at alanstonecat.com. We're always happy to help as well. So you're going to cut your two pattern pieces out. And I believe it or not, the top that I'm wearing, so you've got the front and the back are exactly the same. Dead easy, okay? So we're going to put those two together. Like with most sewing, we look at the right sides of our fabric and we want the two right sides to go together. If you're cutting stripes like this, the best way to do it is to cut one panel and then to lay the other one on top, line up your stripes, you see what I mean, getting your fabric mm. together and then cut around it, because then you can get your stripes kind of lined up. So I'm going to put one pin down one end and one pin down Oh, and down then the you other. can be sure the stripes are the same. Yeah, so you use one as your template instead of your So could a beginner pattern. do this? Dead easy. We used to do this in classes for complete beginners. Okay. You know, it's easier than some fiddly, you know, projects that we do. Smaller teddy bears and bags and stuff like and that. And you need Sometimes an overlocker because it's jersey. No, because Ooh. most stitches, most machines are going to have an oven cast and stitch. But also, if you buy a good quality jersey, I mean, this one here is just not fraying. Right. At all. You know, okay. we never used to have overlockers. So if you've got an overlocker, great. You'll make this you in like need, half an hour. But you but don't if you need don't one. Don't need to. No. Most machines. I'm using the brother one here, which will be demonstrated straight in on hobby maker later but that's got an overcasting stitch which is great to use um, so I'm just going to line up all our raw edges mm. and what I'm doing is I'm doing the shoulder seam and then I'm doing the underarm seam which runs all the way yeah, down you are going to make this more than once definitely yes <laughs> and that's the nice thing and they look so different in different fabrics well, yes, the, the, the stripey one does, doesn't it? It's very, very nautical. Yeah, so this Lovely is the navy stripe one. So hopefully you can see that. So what I've done there is I've pinned okay. the top here and then I've pinned the underarm and I'm just going to stitch those. I'm not going to stitch across here, obviously, because that's the end of our sleeve. Okay, so I'm just going to stitch those two. So I'll whiz that up now, pop that under the machine. I'm just using a regular straight stitch because we're not relying on the stretch of the fabric. Okay, we're uh, just going okay, so to mean, So the, the fabric doesn't need to be... No. Stretch to get it on, so. No. So I'm just going to whiz down. So we've got one centimetre seam allowance because we don't need any more than that because we've not got any zips in this. We've not got any darts or any fiddling around like that. There's no markings that you need to put on the pattern. It really is the simplest top that you could make. And it's so satisfying when you make your own clothes. It's really therapeutic. Well, this is, a, this is looking really, really easy so far. I'm loving it. I know, where people oh, you make it unclosed, you're so clever. I'm like, no, it's just really, I'm just making yeah. really simple, flattering styles. But also, it's starting styles. with patterns like this that give you confidence. And I know a lot of people who do maybe home sewing or um, quilting, but don't do dressmaking. And this is a really good introduction to give you that confidence to, yeah. to have a go. And hopefully we can tempt you, because it's so lovely. So if it is something that you haven't tried before, but you've done a lot of home decor, mm. or as you say, quilting, Try something different with your machine. It's really exciting. It's a nice journey to go on to learn something different. And with these patterns, because they're so simple, don't be put off by those um, awful sewing lessons that we had when we were at school. <laughs> I don't know if you had the same. The sewing teachers were always really strict, weren't I they? I know, really, really strict, yeah. yeah. And it take like a term to learn how to fit the sewing mm. machine. Well, it's a bit different now. So I've done one side. I'm now going to repeat exactly the same on the other side, OK? And basically, that's going to be the shape of our top made. We will have some finishing, which I'll talk you through, but just bear with me while I just whiz up the other side the okay. same way. A few pins here, 
pop that one in and just along here and then the underarm as well at home you know make sure you put in plenty of pins so that your raw edges are together um, I'm just whizzing this up quickly so I will um, probably put a few less than we should probably ship like that and along so remember it's size 10 to size 28 as well we do put a little guide in there as well so that will help you with the sizing if you're in between oh, okay sizes. so does that give some advice about I'm gonna have measurements a yeah there'll be a little size chart telling you you just measure yourself and then check against there but our sizes we do it almost I mean we call it's almost like small medium if you go to the states they do everything small medium large extra large and but we've done it size 10 to 12 because these aren't styles where it doesn't matter if your weight varies a little bit you know these are big baggy kind of shapes they're not tight fitting right so dresses. there's a little bit of allowance in there exactly and we're doing sizes that are true not you know not small either because and of course when you're making your own clothes you can put whatever size label you want in there as well <laughs> i know i always think that because you think oh well i'm not that size well no it doesn't matter what size because it's not a number, it's not tattooed on your forehead. No. You just cut the size that you need. Yeah, and some of the traditional dressmaking patterns, that sizes, you know, the old fashioned ones, that if you look at the sizes, they're so small oh, that it's quite deflating when you measure yourself. It is actually, it's measure yourself. isn't it? Yeah, you so we've vintage patterns. Yeah, so we've done it true to form. Much, much more. I don't think they even had busts either, did they? <laughs> no. On these vintage patterns, it was just all. Didn't okay. seem to be a lot of bust allowance. Yes. Right, so that's the two sides done. So essentially that's the shape. Okay. Now what you would do is then you'd neaten the edges here. Um, so this is a quality jersey, so actually it's not even going to fray. But you can then use an overcasting stitch just to go along those edges there, just to neaten those. Um, or a zigzag, or if you've got an overlocker, even better, you can just whiz this up. If you had an overlocker, just make it once, try it on, check you're happy with it, and then you can whiz them all up without even doing the sewing. You'll just stitch it straight up. Okay. So if I turn that the right way around, you'll see this is the top that I've got on. Okay, now we've got some hemming to do, so we'll pretend we've done the overlocking. Then the only thing left to do on this is to do the hemming. So you can do it different ways. You could, if you've got an overlock or an overcast and stitch, you can then go along there and you can neaten that edge, turn it under, and then you can straight stitch it, or you can twin needle it. Twin needle is going to give you a little bit of stretch, so pop it on, check you're happy with the size in. If you want to take it in, of course, it's a really simple alteration just to run it in the underarm. So you would start at the sleeve and then you'd run all the way down your underarm and just take that in right the way down to your waist or where you need it. Yes, so sure. pop it on inside mm. out. Most times we don't need to, but if you did, it would be this seam here that you just run that in. If you want to take it in a little bit on your waist, then that's yeah, great. Um, so then you would do the yeah, overcast in here or we can turn it under and under again and just mm. hem that. Okay. And, and this is just one pattern for the bundle. This is just one. You yes. Know. Yeah. So it's you're going to have an amazing a price. Forty nine ninety nine for your capsule wardrobe. Yeah. So just to give you an idea, you just turn it under and under, and then just do your hem like that. And believe it or not, that is actually all you've got to do. It's going to take a little bit of time to get around the hem because you've got the bit around the bottom, nice and straight. So it's going to be quick and easy to do, though. Mm. Then you've got your cuffs. Exactly the same thing on the cuffs straight easy small pieces on there and then you've got your neckline okay so just a slight curve there so just take that nice and easy so overcast that turn it under and the stitch round it's got a wide neck on it so again it's not going to need that stretch so you can just turn okay. it under and just straight stitch mm. and that gives you the style that i'm wearing now it really is that easy so it's one of the simplest projects yes. that we do well it's a confidence builder as well isn't yeah. it make this and then you're ready to move on to the next yeah level. and if you're maybe your teacher which is great if you've got these skills and you want to share it around you know if you mm. we've had people grandma come in and teach her granddaughter how to make yeah, something that's like this lovely. That's and quite of course special, the younger generation make it in all fun funky fabrics yes. and once you've got these styles you will make them over and over again well it's quite fabrics. a nice thing to take someone shopping as they go right let's buy it we only need you know what 1.6 meters of jersey right we'll buy that and then we'll go home and make it exactly and you can make it into a longer dress if you want to have a dress course, style yeah, so could, yeah could so the styles that are going to go across not only all sizes but they're also going to go across all ages and of course they're the type of things that we're seeing on the high street all the time now oh um, definitely this is the kind so of thing got a this is amazing i've never tried dressing making before but it looks so easy can i purchase this pattern separately from lindsay yes you can lindsay so what you need to do is go onto sewingstreet.com click on watch live and scroll down all of the patterns are listed separately so you can buy them individually but remember if you buy the bundle for 49.99 you will make a saving and you get a free pattern as well. 
So in the dressmaking bundle, we'll just recap that before we move yeah. on to applique. Um, you get the jersey top that, that we've just demoed. Fab. Um, that, that's the one that Tracy's wearing. Then you get the waterfall cardigan pattern. Beautiful. The, that, this is the one that you can dress up, dress down, wear open, wear closed. Really lovely for layering. The easy fit top pattern. Again, lovely, easy shape, perfect for beginners, really nice and silky. I like that one. I guess it depends what fabric you use. Um, now, when everyone has checked out, half of the stock of the paper patterns has gone, so you do need to check out all these are going to sell out. Uh, the winter cosy pattern, I love this. It's like just a polar neck um, with no sleeves, but it's something you can throw on, you can use to dress up something, dress down. Perfect for this changeable weather, whether you want, you know, one minute it's warm, the next minute it's cold. That's part of the bundle. And then you get the free bag pattern. So by buying the bundle, you get to save money and you get the free pattern as well. Now, if you don't want paper and you'd rather just go um, print them yourself and make a saving, you can buy the USB stick, 38.99. All you do is pop this into your computer. You can print out the paper patterns. You can print out the instructions, as Tracy was saying. Um, you can just read the Rather than print out the instructions, you could read those and just print out the patterns. That's thirty-eight ninety-nine. Um, so Tracy's made a quick change. Quick, quick change. change. Yeah, very quickly. So, so which one are you on? You're on the um, the easy. This is the easy fit, fit top. Yeah, which is very simple. I like that. I think yeah, that's so it really just really dressy. Yeah, and because it Isn't just falls it? from the shoulders. So again, it's the kind of thing you could tie it up. You can tuck it in if you've got really a nice and waist. I tend though, to leave it, it flowy. But yeah, it's the thing that I would throw on like yesterday when the weather was really hot. I don't know if it was the same here, but it was hot at home. I don't want something that's too clingy. I want something yes, I can just lovely. throw on nice and easy. And so uh, what have you used this? Viscose, jersey or lawn? Yeah, okay, quite yeah, a any, line, any kind of floaty fabric. <coughs> of course, yes. the whole fun now is there's loads on the market so you can go out, have fun choosing your fabrics mm. and then make a style that you, that you like. So this is the kind of thing that I would wear just for jeans if I was going out for a barbecue around someone's house but I would also wear this pair of palazzo pants I'd be happy to go to a wedding and dress like yes, this as well yeah. maybe an but it's all in the fabric isn't it yeah exactly and it's going to flatter because it just falls from the shoulders yes, so yeah. it doesn't matter what build you are it's going to suit every shape or size say the youngsters might want to have a little tie up like that yes. you know they do that thing where they put hair band through it which is great but for me I like to cover my upper arms yes, so yes. I'm gonna let it and I like a little bit of floatiness going around exactly here as well. I love float <laughs> Yes. A bit of looseness. Yeah, so all my clay, all mm. the styles and designs that I bring to you is going to be floaty yes. and free so that we can change shape and style. So yeah, again, it's the same one, oops, this way around that we can see. Now I've swapped it over for the oh, green. Okay. So they can look very, very, very different, different, different yes. in different fabrics, depending on what look you're going for. But it is the kind of thing that you will probably end up with lots in your wardrobe if you're like me. Someone's just messaging, can we see the waterfall cardigan yes. properly? Should I pop that one on? Yes. It's oh, there it is in oh, pink. Oh, there it is in pink. Yes, so Ooh. that's the same top again. Different versions of it. I have it all floral today. So, just to give you an idea, hopefully it won't cover my um, my microphone too much. Um, but you can see then. So, this one here. So you can have it like this mm. and let it just fall as you want, or you can. It's going to cover my microphone, but <laughs> like that. So we'd have it just. So how would you, fat, if you no. wanted to fasten it, what would so you So you can do a button use? and a buttonhole, or oh, you could okay. do a nice brooch. You might have, you know, sometimes you get those really nice toggles. Yes. And we never know yes. what to do with them. We buy them, mm. go to a craft fair, and like, oh, that's so lovely. Or maybe, yeah, say an antique brooch. But I guess if you had a brooch, then it would be fixed or non-fixed, yeah, depending exactly. on what you're but doing you with it. But you could wear it with a belt and just belt mm. it in as well. I've seen it worn in so many different ways. It is one of those things that I just have in the back of my car, and I can just yes. throw it on as an extra layer as the weather changes. Um, so well, yeah, and nice when it's a bit chilly in the house as well, you just yeah, pop it on. Exactly. With, particularly when you're working from home. I always have lots of these kind of yeah. long cardigans that go on. Just yeah. And it's, we probably won't get a chance to, um, to demo all of this today. Um, no. There's so much to show you. But it is really not difficult at all. We've done a set in sleeve, so it's dead, dead simple. And then you've just got binding going around. So you don't even need to do the hem in. Instead, we mm. do it with binding. So that's why I put this contrast on there. So it's up to you what kind of look you want. You might want it matching with the fabric, or you might want to do a contrast like I've pulled it out with a, a black satin binding. So yeah, it's not going to take a lot of fabric, and it's going to suit all shapes again. Oh, it's sizes. Fab. Well, there were less than 20 of the printed pattern bundles left when everyone has checked out. So if you want this, just be aware it is fantastic value for money when you look at the cost of dress patterns and you think what you're getting here and it's a really good learn and build package start with your jersey top yep 
and build from there yep. really the winter well, coast start with any of them to be honest well, but yeah. as you demonstrated it would be a good place to start and then you just build from there yeah and i've added with each of these collections even the applique ones we're doing different techniques within that so because people are using these as though it's a course i would teach this um, if i was teaching it as a course it's probably going to be a 12-week course so imagine yes, how is. much that's going to cost yeah, you yeah exactly here you can do it in your own time the instructions take you through it there's step by steps uh, whether you're doing it on the USB which is a printed version or whether you're buying the paper patterns which are already printed for you the instructions have got photographs taking you through every step of the I way. I think the most difficult thing is choosing the fabric. Yeah. But that's the fun. I know, but you have, you're in the fabric shop going, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. But that's the nice, that's you the know, nice that's, bit. But that's, that's the, the going to be the hardest and, bit. And I find even, you know, before I was dressmaking for myself, even shopping the high street, you just need a few shapes. You just need a few. We all know yes. what styles. You get to an age, we know what styles and shapes suit us. And once mm. you've got those basic blocks, which we're giving you here, once you've got those styles, then you can make them look so different in different fabrics, you know. So they go from floral to stripe yeah, like we yeah, looked at the nautical stripe earlier mm. completely different look that'd be great with jeans out for lunch or the nice floral if you're going to do them um, yes lovely fun. so yeah enjoy that step so that's dressmaking let's move on to applique yes completely different <laughs> same thing sewing but completely different so the applique bundle again we have got all of these patterns one two three four five six seven so you get well the six patterns but two free ones you have the printed one, $49.99. All of these. So the peg bag is the free one. Then we get the family tree cushion. And then you also get a free big version that you can make into a quilt. The Tracy's got here, you'll love it. Absolutely, it's brilliant, gorgeous. You've got the dog tote bag. You've got the cat tote bag. You've got the caravan applique tote bag and the um, apron which can be a sewing apron or a gardening apron templates are in there for both um, then you've got the houses applique cushion and then the peg bag is the free one here so those are the printed patterns if you would rather get the USB stick so that you don't you print them at home and you get a, a saving. It means you can print out just the patterns, you can read the instructions. That was if it's the right way up, isn't it? Um, there we go. If you'd rather have that, that's 38.99. That will be the USB stick with all of the patterns on there. And also, it's kind of easier to store as well. There's less for you to lose. So if you you know if you don't have a big workspace and you don't have a you know a lot of space to keep all of these things, the USB stick is ideal. So, Tracy, what are you going to show us? So I'm just going to show you for those who haven't done a plique before. So I'm if just you're a complete you beginner, complete like beginner, like the idea of it. Yeah, like the idea. A bit nervous. I'm going to show you how to do it. So with all of our patterns, whether you're getting them printed or whether you're buying them on the USB, doesn't matter. You're still going to have all these templates and mix and match those as well. So we've got cushion patterns in here for you. We've got bags. We've got aprons. You might want to put this caravan on the apron instead of on the cushion. Of course, you can do that and, and have fun. So what you need is some bondweb, okay? Which is imagine it's like double-sided glue for fabric. That's what we want because we want these pieces to stay still while we're stitching around them. So take your bondweb. We've got the glue sides. We're going to put that face down. These are our templates here. I'm going to put that face down, and then I'm going to draw around it. So I might want to do say I'm going to do the circle bit here. So this is going to be our inner wheel. So I'm going to draw around that. Very excuse my shaky hand on that. So you're going to draw around that roughly. Then you're going to take your scissors and just cut an area slightly bigger than that all the way around. Okay, so we're not cutting the exact outline. And then you're going to choose your fabrics. This is the fun bit where you choose your fabrics. You might be using your daughter's old summer dresses. You might be using granddad's old shirts. You might be mm. going through your stash of scrap fabrics that we all have at home, I know. Um, so, yeah, it's a really good chance to use up those applique well, fabrics. Well, it's a good stash builder, isn't it? it a really stash is. um, user. Yeah, and the really nice thing is that it doesn't cost a lot of money. And then we can use just regular base fabrics. Sometimes we've done it here just on a linen. Mm. But you can do it just on calico because you're making these little scrap bits of fabric become the yeah. design so actually it's a very cheap way to do it as well so lots of people mm. do this kind of stuff for charity as well because you can do that with the patterns so you're going to take that there so we want the glue side 
onto the wrong side of our fabric. Okay, there are instructions, if it's your first time, step by step, you just wanna make sure that the glue is facing down and on the wrong side of the fabric. If you do it the other way around, you'll only do it once. <laughs> and you iron that on, and then that would stay fixed on there, like that. Okay, so that then is stuck on there, not gonna come off. We're doing this to try and avoid lots of pins. Then you would cut around this, so we're gonna cut all the way around. This time we're going on the exact line. So you can see why we didn't just stick the whole piece down because you'd be wasting too much fabric. And it's all about using those little scraps up that we've got from crafting. So you've got it on there, stuck on still. I now want to take the backing off. So the best way is to score it with a pin, go like that, and you can peel that off. And you might be able to, hopefully in the camera, you can see it's a little bit shiny there. And that's because it's got the glue layer now stuck on it, okay? Bonderweb is on the website, so if you need Bonderweb with this, we do have it on the website. Great, it's something everyone should have in their side. I love Bonderweb. I mean, fix Brilliant. everything. Yeah. So then, because you can do this if you've got something that's a bit worn out, you can do it as a little patch to go over the top. Mm. So you would then build up your design. So you're kind of cut out your main fabric piece, so that will be using your template provided, whether you're doing the aprons or whether you're doing a cushion or even the quilt. You're going to cut out your main template and then you're going to start building it up. So you're going to put all your little pieces on like that and just iron them into place so run an iron over that and this one here I've just stuck on this morning and you'll see that that's not going anywhere so what that means is I can stitch around without those pins getting in the way mm. especially when we're doing the smaller fiddly pieces that there are on some of these designs and then you're going to stitch around it so then the fun bit you can so here we've done this one just in a white thread going all the way around but you might want to do a bright contrast thread you might want to use some of those fancy stitches that you've got on your machine that we've never got around <laughs> to using before <laughs> One that I quite like doing, if you can see it on here, is this blanket stitch. So we've done it alongside these um, cotton reels here. Yeah, that's really effective, isn't it? Yeah. Because it looks like it's hand stitched as yeah, well. Yeah, but my hand stitch is not so great. <laughs> <laughs> But also you so have all those um, stitches on your machine and you do. don't always use them. Exactly. So now's the time to use the stitches. Mm. And if you can do things like personalising on your machine, so if you've got the ability to do writing, you can obviously write someone's grandma's apron. On the home sweet home cushion, you could put little house numbers. If you're making yeah, it, maybe true. you're making it for a neighbour as a gift. You know, we, we can do all of that. So just have fun with your applique. So that would be the same technique that we'd use on all of these patterns. We were saying earlier, we've got the home sweet home cushion, which you can see probably behind oh, so we get me. The cushion down. Yeah. Be nice to see that. Let's grab that one. So this is our home. So, oh, sorry, I was talking about the family. Oh, sorry, tree. Um, family tree the one. The family yes. tree. So this yes. is the family tree cushion. This is one of the patterns that comes in the bundle. Also available. Also available individually, but they're on the website. So this is this is a lovely memory cushion, isn't it? Yeah, really nice thing to do. So whether you're doing it for your children or whether you're doing it for yourself mm. to have at home, you know, it's really going to become a family heirloom. But isn't you it? could use clothes that meant something to you Absolutely, as well. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Just have fun with them. That's the most important thing. So it might be your old daughter's dresses, you know, it might be a bit of granddad's shirt, something that you remember him wearing. And, yeah, mm. and have yeah. fun. So what we've done with that one, so the pattern that's included is for this cushion. Mm. It's got a button back on it, so we can teach you how to do that. If we get a chance in a minute, I'll show you how to do it nice and easily. Um, but what I've done as well is include, we've enlarged the template because we made a, tr a quilt out of it. This is okay. fantastic. So this I absolutely is our big family tree cook. So you can Let see how different they look in different fabrics. So the cushion was done in a lovely pastel colour. With here we've thrown loads, gorgeous, loads of colour at it. it. Yeah. So we have we're not giving <coughs> you the, we're not giving you a pattern to make the whole quilt because that's up to you. You can do it whatever size mm. or shape. What we're going to give you just for free is going to be the template. Oh, that's brilliant. Here, so that so you, you can, can make, make a really it. big and that will be in the USB and the dressmaking yes, bundle. Yeah. So you can make a really big tree with even more people. Yeah, exactly. Put some extra branches so, yeah. in. That's so lovely. What a lovely thing. What a lovely gift for a baby yeah, as well. Yeah, really nice, isn't it? Because it and could have mum and dad and the brothers and sisters. Yeah. And, and we've used an embroidery machine. Again, I'll be, I know we've had the brother embroidery machine yes. on here, um, which is a great one. But you can do that by applique. You could do it oh, by hand. True. You could yes. do it even with sticky back felt and then hand stitch around yeah. it. So it doesn't matter if you haven't got an embroidery machine. You can still do this and just really enjoy the process of doing something that will become a family heirloom, which would be lovely. Oh, absolutely. It's gorgeous, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah, you can leave empty branches, and then you could sew new <laughs> oh, names that'd on. Oh, that would be cute, you, wouldn't it? As they go along, that's <laughs> lovely. So that's one of the free ones. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> love that one. 
Yeah. So I thought I'd show you really quickly, we're, I'm trying to get as much in as we can today, how yes. we do the button back on here. Because okay. these are the kind of, um, it's a very quick demo, but just to give you an idea of the kind of thing that we teach you how to do. So it's just little tricks. So we've taken a, a piece of cardboard, a cereal box, <laughs> and we've drawn on some lines on here. So we've got a one and a half inch, a two inch, three inch. So really simple, make your own templates. We don't need to buy expensive templates. So this is going to be for the back of our cushion. And what we're going to do, this is the line that I want to fold it to. So you simply just lay that under, fold your fabric over, and I've given it a press. So this is to make what we call a placket, where our buttons and buttonholes are going to go on the back of the cushion. Then I want to fold it over again, because we want that double fabric, so it's nice and thick for your buttons and buttonholes. I folded it over again to that line, because the cardboard, you can just keep it under while you're ironing it. It doesn't mm. cost you anything, it's cheap. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch down either side. With all my demos, I am using um, black thread, so, but obviously at home you would use a matching thread. I'm just doing that in the hope but that you can, can actually see, it see what I'm doing, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the same with the dressmaking. So I'm just then can just whiz down. If I just increase that, I'm going to do it in a large stitch so we can show you as much as possible. Okay, I'm just going to whiz down each side. So this is how we make the placket on the back of the cushions. And of course you'll have the templates and the patterns to do this. So any of your designs that you've seen in applique, you will now have a basic cushion pattern, you will have a tote bag pattern, you'll have an, a, an apron pattern, and mix and match those. When it comes to Christmas, we do some lovely Christmas designs as well. So again, you can mix and match them up then. So it's you know giving yourself the resources mm. that you can tap in and out of when you need them. So that would be our placket. Now, I always, do three buttons on the back of my cushions. And the reason is, I can very simply find the middle here where my middle, I'm gonna fold that in half and I'm gonna press it here. Because sometimes when we try and put markings on a pattern, I'm slightly dyslexic, so it, I end up with them in the wrong place or I've <laughs> measured incorrectly and I've got two buttons to one mm. side and one over there. So this way, fold it in half, I can finger press it and I know that is where my center button's gonna go. And what I'm gonna do is fold these edges back over and I'm gonna overlap it by one centimetre, because my seam allowance is gonna be one centimetre, okay? And then I'm gonna press here, that's where my other one's gonna go, and I'm gonna do it there, okay? And this way, I know that Oh, that's all a really good tip, my isn't buttons. it? So you know that's an accurate third. Yep, exactly. Fantastic. If I measured it, I would, might measure it wrong. If I measured it, tried to take off the seam allowance, mm. divided that by three, yeah, there's yeah. too much room for <laughs> error. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Whereas if we actually fold our fabric in half, we can now see straight away there, mm, I've brilliant. got one in the middle and I've got one either side and I've got my seam allowance because I just folded it and I know that that is equal. So that's why I always put three. So these are the kind of tips and techniques that we'll be showing you on the instructions. Mm. So just take the instructions step by step by step. You can stop and start whenever you want to, which is nice. It's not like a video that you watch through and you have to keep pausing and rewinding yeah. it. Just follow the steps. Every one's going to have a, um, a really simple photograph as well to show you. So that's the button back cushion that we could use for the home sweet home or the family tree that we've just seen mm. or any of the applique, even the cat, the dog, the caravan, any of those templates you could then put onto the cushions. Uh, yes, because they don't have to be bags, do they? No, and once you've got the whole pack as well, you can make some as bags, some as, some as cushions, yeah, a bit exactly. of a mix and match. Yeah and the aprons so just have fun with your applique and enjoy it so you're going to learn techniques for making as well as having all those templates as well to hand in Fantastic. that collection that's brilliant well thanks so much tracy i'll just go back through these um yeah. bundles again and then i'll come back to you so for the applique patterns the um, usb is what's in the graphics this is really really popular um, you don't need anything special, do you? Just a normal printer? Normal printer, any, any laptop, just, you just need the USB port that you can mm. put it in or a USB adapter that you can pop it in. Yeah, and just yeah, print so it on. Sometimes on some Macs you need an adapter. I've got one with mine, but it's just a USB. You'll know your computer, you'll know what you need. So if you want the USB, so you get all of these patterns and free, you get the peg bag and also the enlarged patterns so you can make the um, family tree quilt. That's all on here, 38.99 everything you need and you obviously make a saving rather than buying the patterns individually and you get the free ones if however you want them all printed and lovely and in lovely envelopes um, as Tracy said earlier they're nice because they've got oh, they've gussy envelopes because you know what it's like when you cut out a pattern it never goes back in the envelope properly so you've got a little bit of extra space when you cut out patterns normally you can never get it back in can you um, so in this bundle you get the home sweet home cushion pattern you get the um, apron, you've got the templates to make either a gardening apron or a sewing apron 
or you can mix them together. You have both. Um, then you've got the caravan. This is the one that um, Tracy was showing us earlier. Oh, Jonah said, what a fantastic show. Can you show us the caravan tote bag? I can, because it's behind me. Oh, no, that's, we, we'd carefully balanced all of that as well. <laughs> this is the caravan tote bag. Isn't this gorgeous? So it's, you've got, it's, I love the fabrics. And look, Tracy's lined it as well, because you obviously could choose your lining, but doesn't that look lovely? This is the sort of thing you see in one of these lovely little um, boutique shops, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Very expensively. Yes, exactly. And but you can just use up all your stash. Yeah, a cheap base fabric and just jazz it up and have fun you with You could that. even buy a ready-made tote bag. Yes, That of you course. get, and then applique it yeah. even quicker. Yeah, but again, it'd be great on cushions, yeah. hanging organiser. If you know someone who's got a caravan who's going away, what a lovely present oh, to give yes. them. Oh, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? You could use the fabrics as holiday memories that's beautiful that's the caravan one um the applique tote bag this is the cat brilliant present as well and the dog because obviously you've got to cover cats and dogs um the family tree cushion and remember this comes with the free enlarged template so you could make a quilt and a much bigger tree and an even bigger family and then free with this one is and take it off the floor <laughs> since it fell over it is a very clean floor is the peg bag with a washing line on it and that one you get for free all of that 49.99 um the dressmaker bag we've had a change we've had a change <laughs> I've just popped a little cozy top on just so that you can I see like it and get an idea that. so it's just that extra layer that's really nice and warm again you can wear a big necklace with it you can wear a scarf with it but it doesn't it's not like putting a fleece on where it's like oh look you know I in my in my mm. opinion it still looks nice stylish but no, it's just it does extra look very layer. stylish yes it does it's yeah. really really sophisticated yes, but you are you going to show us how to make that I'm going to show you how to make the waterfall cardigan that we looked at okay. earlier we're going to do a start on it anyway we will probably run out of time but just to give you a quick idea so I've got my back panel here I'm going to put it down so you choose your size using the size guide size 10 to size 28 and then we're going to put our two front panels on like this. So we're going to do the shoulder seams. Exactly the same with the back wing top, the simple top that we did earlier, and the easy fit top that I'm wearing underneath this lovely floral one that we looked at. All of those, we're going to start doing our shoulder seams first. Always put our right sides together, so make sure you've got your two right sides facing each other. If you've got any um, worries about cutting out or anything like that, we really do want everyone to be able to use these patterns and feel confident. So there's lots of help. Just look at alansewingcat.com. There's blogs on there that are free to just have a look on how to cut out your okay. fabric or how to use them. So depending on what your stage is and where you are, yeah, what, you would need exactly. help with this all on there. Yeah, because some people might be new, some people might be refreshing mm. the, their skills. Um, so yeah. So what I'm going to do is just pin those shoulder seams and I'm just going to whiz down there. So shoulder seams first. In fact, let me just concentrate on one side because we will run out of time. So I'm just going to stitch the small seam here. Pop that underneath. Again, I'm using jersey, but I'm just using a regular needle. I've not changed the needle at all. And I'm using a regular straight stitch and one centimetre seam allowance. Because although I'm using jersey, that's because I'm using it for comfort. I'm not using it for stretch. We're not making anything that's going to be tight fitting and the stitches aren't going to pop because that's not what this is about. These are all styles that are nice and baggy and floaty because we all like to eat cake and move around and <laughs> do things like that. Definitely. <laughs> so then, so that's my shoulder seam done. You would repeat the same on the other side. This is our sleeve. So I want to find the center of the sleeve. There's so less I than 20, sorry, Tracy, just say there's less than 20 of the printed patterns for the bundle left. And less than 20 of the USB, they're obviously oh, neck wow. and neck at the moment, oh, so please do <laughs> put them in your basket and check out or you're going to miss out like last time. Oh. So what I've done is I've folded the sleeve in half and I've just put a pin to mark the centre of the sleeve. I tend to do that instead of putting lots of notches because sometimes we cut those notches a bit big and in the wrong place, so let's just mark it with a pin. Let's make this really, really simple. Mm. So I'm opening up my top now, so I've got my right side facing up. But again, there's going to be photos to show you. And then I want this sleeve with the right side facing down. Again, right sides together. And I'm lining up that pin with the centre seam that I've just stitched. So I know then it's in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to pin that and pop it all the way around and down. So and again, on the website, there is a hack as well. So if you want to add pockets to the sides of this, then you can do that. Um, and you can wear it, like we were saying earlier, 
different ways you could have it so it overlaps at the front you can have it so it waterfalls down you could tie it up with a belt so that's my sleeve put into place there so I'm going to stitch along here the top of that sleeve that's a nice easy way of putting a sleeve in isn't it it's all about ease because <laughs> you haven't got that sort of in setting a sleeve and yeah exactly so these are all things that we would teach in a class because a lot of it as you was saying earlier is confidence you know I, I appreciate that if you haven't done dressmaking before or you're going back mm. to it it can be a bit scary you know you spent a lot of money on fabric you've chosen it you want to do it and you want to do it right so let's make it as simple as we can and at the end of the day these are all styles that we're seeing everywhere anyway you know these are the kind of things that we wear we don't tend to wear so much those tight fitting shift dresses around the house these days no no not really <laughs> it's not the 1950s remember all these patterns are available separately just go onto the website click on watch live so if you want the bundle obviously you make a saving and you get a free pattern but if you want them separately then they are available on there <laughs> so that's our sleeve set in here so that gives us this t-shape okay now i'm going to refold this so i've got again my right sides together same rule applies right sides back together and this is my sleeve now so i'm going to put a few pins to hold that and we're going to go all the way down the sleeve and down the side seam as well so like that all the way along here we can line up those seams make sure that they're together make sure your raw edges are together if you're using that hack to put the um, pocket in your pocket would go in at this stage I tend to not put pockets too much because I just fill them up with mobile phones and tissues mm -hmm. and bulky things so but if you wish you can okay so then we're going to stitch like we did before our underarm seams we're going to come along here and down to the bottom and this will be the shape done we would obviously repeat the same on the other side but just for time to give you an idea how quick and easy these aren't complicated garments that we're making you would neaten the edges just like we said before which you can do on an overlocker which you can do using an overcasting stitch okay, you're going to pivot there at the underarm seam and continue stitching all the way down so we're doing it in a nice jersey fabric here but you could do this in any fabric that's going to drape you might have a nice crepe you might have a nice wool in your collection of fabrics at home you know yeah, that's true you might be going to a wedding and trying to tie this in with something that you're wearing there or a special meal so you could do it in quite a lightweight crepe then couldn't yeah. you or with something heavier weight as yeah, well yeah because i always find that extra layer is quite hard when we're going to the shops to buy that extra layer without it looking frumpy or yes, without yeah. a fitted jacket whereas something like this you could easily throw on if you're i know a jacket's out. always tricky isn't it yeah, to get can, it to fit, I find that. And you can find the right colour either no. that you want, so make it yourself. Mm. It's dead easy. Make, yeah. Well, that's it's just lovely. So that like is that. one side done, okay? Wow. You would repeat exactly the same on the other side. So that's taken me, what, five minutes mm. to do. And then you would do your binding around the neck and all the way down. Shall I give it a go? Yeah, yeah, let's do yeah, it. Let's yeah, go. Let's, We've got about five I, minutes. I so won't let's... repeat the other bit. Because no, you, but it's nice to see it. So yeah, it's just so to... that's going to be your shape and size. So you would try that one on, check you're happy with everything. Um, on the bottom, what I've done on my one is I've just done a regular hem. So I folded it under by a centimetre, folded it under by another centimetre, and then you would just machine that close to the folded edge. Um, or if you've got an overlocker you might want to overlock it and just turn it under once and stitch it or twin needle it that's entirely up to you but again lots of help at arnestonecat.com if you need it so you'd go all the way around your bottom hem like that so that hides your wool edge by going under and under again so folded it once and folded it again and then just a line of machining along there and then we're going to do our binding around here so I'm using a satin binding. It's a fairly cheap thing to buy. You can, I'm putting a contrast on here so we can get to see that different colour. And what you would do is open it up and we're going to stitch down in that folded edge here. Satin's a great one to use because um, mm. it just looks, obviously, that little bit more luxurious. Um, and it kind of will make the edge fall like the one that I was wearing before. Um, well, oh, is it some... a bit lighter then? Yeah, I mean, if you're using, you just want um, uh, one that's going to drape. So okay. I know sometimes there are these very stiff cotton bindings, and I, so I would avoid that. I um, think they put a special finish on them, don't they? They're yeah. Very, I, 
I mean, they're always pure cotton, the bindings that you buy, but they're very stiff. Yeah. So I, think, so I don't know whether they starch them. Yeah, I mean, it's great if you're doing bunting, but not so good for yes. something like this. <laughs> so I tend to use a poly cotton, so a mix. Right, okay. Yeah. But of course, now you can make your own binding, you can get leather bindings, you've probably got binding makers on the website. We do, we so do have a binding maker. You can make your maker. own, you know, mm. fun binding. Mm. So what I've done is just machined, I'm using this one so that I can machine in that gap. So there was already the crease line, so I know exactly where my needle's gonna go, and you're following that down. Then there's different methods. So this way we want it to fold over and over again onto the back. So you can go like that, and I tend to just hand sew that down very quickly all the way around. It doesn't actually take that long, it's just the front edge and around the neck, and that way I've got it very, very neat. You can even make it, um, yes, because this bit is gonna be reversible, so we're gonna see both sides. Um, or, if you don't want to hand sew, just overlap that seam slightly. Take your pins and on the right side, pin it right in that seam. So we want it now to go right in that gap, okay? The pin, it's really important that it goes in there. And then we can check on the back whether we've caught it. So what I want to do is overlap it. I didn't put the pin quite through. So that way we can see that it's catching the back mm. as well. So the pinning takes a bit of time and care, and then you can sink stitch. So do a line of stitching right in that gap, and then obviously your stitching's gonna go exactly where that pin's gonna go. Therefore, it's then gonna catch it on the back. So you would see that seam, but just on the back here. Okay, so if you don't want to do hand sewn, you can do it that way. Or you could do the traditional way. Sometimes people just wanna fold it in half. So press that, I would press the binding in half first, so you know it's exactly in half. Put that over the edge and then you can machine all the way down. Obviously doing that, you just gotta make sure that your machine is really neat mm. so that it does catch both sides. So three different methods depending. My stitching can be a bit wobbly. <laughs> um, and that's why the, with these designs and shapes that I'm bringing you, it doesn't matter if your stitching's a bit wobbly. So don't worry, you don't have to be 100% accurate with your cutting okay. to make a top like this. You don't have to be 100% accurate with your sewing. It doesn't matter, we all wobble from time to time. But hand sewing gives you that, uh, you know, right. that extra so bit That's to up to you really, yeah, how you do that. You. Yeah, and then that gives you that lovely finished binding lovely. that we have that falls on the Oh brilliant, thank you so much Trace. You have so shown us <laughs> so many things. We've learned absolutely loads this morning. Um, so very quickly, if you want, the one that's on, yeah, on the screen at the moment is the dressmaking, the bundle of dressmaking patterns. So there are more people who've got these in baskets than we have available. So if you want them, you need to check out. Remember, these are available singly on the website, but obviously if you buy them as the bundle, you get one free and you get a saving as well. Um, but if you go onto the website on sewingstreet.com, click on Watch Live, they're on the pre-order section. Just scroll down and you will find them. So if you only want one of them, that's fine. But you will save them. If you're thinking about, right, I love this, brilliant. This looks really easy. I'm going to do this. I want to make the capsule wardrobe, get the whole bundle, but very low in stock. Um, the, this, is the, this is the simple jersey. This is the first one that Tracy was wearing that she demonstrated. Remember, she then changed into the easy fit top. That's what she's got underneath. And then she's just made for us the um, waterfall cardigan. But she's wearing the cozy top, so we've done all of them. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's the paper patterns. If you'd prefer to print them yourself, and it's, um, there we go, I've got it the right way. The USB stick, that has all of those patterns. Remember, you get the free bag pattern on here as well. That has all of them on there, so you just pop the USB into your computer, print them off, or read the instructions, print off the patterns, whichever you prefer, very easy. Um, any questions or issues you have at all, you can just go onto the Alan Sewing Cut website, you can email them, really helpful, they'll be able to sort that out for you. Um, if you want the applique patterns, we have the applique pattern bundle. Remember, with this bundle, you get the pattern, free pattern for the peg bag, and then on top of that, you get the family tree cushion, and you get a free enlarged version, so you can make the family tree quilt. Um, you get the dog applique, which you can use to make a cushion or a tote bag. And same with the cat. Uh, we've also got ooh, an upside down, there we go, that's better. The caravan, that's the one that Tracy showed us right at the beginning. And again, that can be a cushion, that can be a tote bag. Lovely to put, put some few handmade things into your caravan. You can even applique it onto your caravan curtains. Uh, then we've got I don't know how I've got those, those specific ones up, upside down. The aprons, one is sewing, one is gardening, or you can use both, all the templates are in there. And then you've got the house 
um, cushion, home sweet home, that's a lovely for a new home gift. Put the house numbers on, all the names of the family. That's all in there. So those are the paper patterns. Remember, you are getting two free patterns with that. If you would prefer to buy the USB stick with the applique, that's there. Easy peasy to use. Just depends what format you prefer. There we go. Don't forget, all of the patterns are available individually. They're on the pre-order section when you go into Watch Live. If you've got any questions, just message us, studio at sewingstreet.com. We'll be able to help. If you've got any questions about the sort of the printing, or as you go along, loads of help on um, Tracy's website on the Owl and the Sewing Cat. I think I've got it all. <laughs> Thank brilliant. you. Thank you so much Thank for everyone. coming in. Are you, you're on Hobby Maker this I'm afternoon? I'm on Hobby Maker this afternoon with the brand new launch of the Brother Machine, so very excited. Two o'clock and four o'clock. So brilliant. We've got so if you're amazing. thinking about a new machine. Yep. And embroidery, sewing and embroidery machine. Oh, well, that's so. lovely. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I hope to see you back on Sewing Street yes, again you. soon. <laughs> and it's been a pleasure. You've really, really inspired me and I think <laughs> everyone else as well. Thank you, everyone. Um, I will be back with you in a couple of minutes. We've got Emma and she's going to be um, showing us how to make a bag and the, and the zip purse. So um, don't go anywhere. We've got even more fab demos to come. I'll be see you back in a couple of minutes' time. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PNP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about Yarn Lane? 
TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Welcome back to Sewing Street. Gosh, that was a quick change around. We had so many products and then we've got Emma back. Her Hello. Back with us. So we're yes. all about um, snip snips and sunny days. We are, yes. Sunshine so we have got away. two kits because you've been so busy. Yeah. <laughs> you've been so busy. So, oh, let me get off the shelf. So the first one that Emma's going to be showing us how to is this beautiful Susie Duncan design. It's called the Sunny Days Tote Bag. Isn't it lovely? So it's bundled, you've got the, um, all the instructions plus a metre and a half of fabric. Now this one is all Liberty Fabrics, isn't it beautiful? Now this is everything that you will need for the outside of the bag. There will be a bit left over that you can use for the lining. Um, but if you want a solid lining, then you just need to use a plain half a metre of plain fabric. That's all you need if you want to do it. So everything you've got here for the outside will here will do the outside. So this, but to make this arm, the one that I've got here is the Riviera fabric bundle. So in the kit you get full instructions. Then you get half a metre each. Is it half a metre of each? Yeah. yeah. Yes, of um, Liberty Fabric from the Riviera, brand new for Riviera collection as well. Love that one. So that's used on the main body of the bag. I love the little red poppies on that. You get this beautiful, this is real iconic, like vintage Liberty, isn't it? This is quilting weight cotton, by the way. This is not Liberty lawn. This is Liberty quilting weight cotton. And then you have that gorgeous sunshine yellow. This is from Wiltshire Shadows collection, this one. But um, sunshine yellow. You can see that that's used for the, the pinwheel part on there. So that's that collects. We have five different ones, so you can bear with. We'll go through all of them. Now, oh, actually, we've got six. The one that um, Emma's going to be demonstrating with in a moment is this one. So again, you get all the instructions, and then you get your three fabrics. So this is Lewis and Irene, a lovely pink with a print. You get this gorgeous grey feather fabric. This one. 
I was just looking at that's got owls on it. Just look at it. You see the gold bits? They are actually owls. They were flying together. They look like they're about to kiss. They do. Love that one because that's kind of got like a, a gold metallic on it. Well, it's got a bronze metallic. That's beautiful. So that's. I mean, because you get the same amount of all of the fabrics, you can choose where you put which one. Then that comes with the grey the feathers. And you get this lovely, like, cornflower blue fabric as well. So that's what they all look like together. Ooh, that's not very good showing, is it? It's difficult. One day we'll have an overhead camera here. It's on its way, apparently. It got lost in the post. <laughs> There we go. So that's that bundle. Um, the next bundle, I love this one because this is completely different. So you've got, I love, I love, so again, you get the uh, instructions. Love this big check. And I like that because I think it goes really well with the navy. So you've got the, the large sort of mustard check, the navy floral, the, the check is a mode of fabric. You've got this navy floral fabric. And then you have this lovely, they're very contrast, aren't they? So imagine the three of these. This is a very summer holiday bag, quite stylish. I think those three will look gorgeous together. And again, you can choose where you put each of them because you've got the same amount of fabric in each one. Um, then a, a darker version. All, all bases are covered with these three ones, these three ones, these three kits. So this one is called what is it called? Yoka Sato Centenary Days. So you've got this lovely um, navy print fabric. Then you have a green. This is much more traditional look. So although it's the sunny days tote bag, it can be used for any occasion. This one is a lot more traditional. I'll put them all together in a minute. And then you get this lovely, um, like a grey print. This is all from the Yoko Sato collection, all of it. So let me put them together. So you've got the green, the grey and the navy. Half a metre of each and the instructions to make the bag. $29.99. Um, and then finally, because there are six of these, this is lovely. This is your sewing bag, isn't it? I love this one. This one has been massively popular on pre-order and is already in single figures. So don't forget, you get the pattern to make the bag. Then you get half a meter of this one. Look, with all sewing notions and scissors and thread and buttons and thread, um, threaders. Then you get the pink one with buttons on. So this is great to put your stash in, to go on workshops with, when you go to the festivals or the... Um, or any, well, the Festival of Quilts would be great to take it on, wouldn't it? Or just show everyone your love of sewing. Shopping. It's got a nice um, selvage on it, this one. This is Moda, by the way. Beautiful. I love, you can always tell Moda because it's so soft. And this one, I love this one. You've got like little sprays of roses or flowers with buttons in amongst them. And the pattern, obviously. So those are the six bundles for um, the Sunny Days tote bag. Have a look on the website, they are all there. So if you think, I can't remember which one I wanted, have a look, there are photos. If you want me to show any again and go through them, just message into the studio and we can. Um, right, Emma, Hello. so did you have fun making this bag? Yeah, yeah, it's a Was lovely it good? bag, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna um, do the quilted bit in the middle. Fantastic. Today. Um, and then obviously it tells you exactly how to make up the rest of the bag. So, so it has this, so the front and back has this central section mm -hmm. that's patchwork yep. and then you use that to make up into the bag yeah and it's actually really simple it, it may be doesn't look that simple but it is once you get going okay but it's very effective though isn't it yeah okay so where do we start so we need to make up two different blocks and then we piece them all together okay so you want to according to all the instructions you want to cut out all your pieces now um, a little tip that I found super useful when doing this pattern was to just write as you can see um, if you uh, show the top down you can see the um, I've written out block a2 block a3 just so that it makes it really clear as well um, when you're doing it and that just stops you kind of going wrong 
Okay. So I literally laid it out on my desk like I'm doing now. Take all those clips off. And then you can kind of make sure you're on track. So we're going to start with the, the A block and you're literally using the two pieces, A2 and A3. So you want to grab your A3, which is the longer one, the longer in width, and, or the wider, I should say, and your um, A2. Now, what you want to do is you want to draw on the back. Now, I did pre-do these, but I think in the sunshine, my lines have come off. <laughs> oh, really? I think so, because I oh, definitely did so them. annoying. I know, with the friction I suppose pen. it would within the sun if it's yeah, really hot, wouldn't it? I don't know it? what happened there. Anyway, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Good excuse to <laughs> show that you. That is quite funny. Um, maybe some of them are still on it. No, not on the... It must be those ones that are at the top. So we're just going to draw a line on the back of the, um, the smaller squares, diagonally from corner to corner on all those pieces and you're going to need to do that on the uh, B1 and B3 as well so I'll just do that real quick Yeah, so if you're prepping up your fabric with friction pen, don't leave it in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I never car. thought about that. I guess, but it does get, if you're really inside in the sun, it does get very hot, doesn't it? I've got a friend that d did loads of writing with a friction pen on a piece of paper and then photocopied it. <gasps> don't ever do that either. Oh, and it, it the all heat. disappears, yeah. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> so you grab your A3. <laughs> you grab your A3 and then you grab one of your A2 blocks and you place it on the right hand side of the A3 block. Okay, so you line up those short edges and pop a pin in. And then because we've got that line that we drew, we're gonna sew along that line. Actually, while I'm doing it, because this is how you would do it at home, you wanna prep them all up. Okay, so I've prepped up that one. Prep up that one, make sure that they're, all the diagonal lines are all going in the same direction from the top right to the bottom left. And it's of course right sides together. Because then when we sew them, we can chain sew them through. Right. Um, oh, right sides. And this is all in the instructions, you just follow yep. it as you go along. Yep. Okay. And in the instructions, it tells you to do double of this because obviously you're doing the front and the back panel. I'm just going to do one panel, if that makes sense. And I've realised I don't need to do that one, so I'm just going to do these three. So move over to the machine. I'm just doing a regular straight stitch. Find my foot of the machine. I'm holding the threads to start with. Going backwards and forwards, a few stitches, and we're off. Go slowly over that pin. You can take the pin out if you're worried about it. And then go backwards and forwards. If it doesn't get caught under the machine, no, we're okay. Then I'm going to grab my second one, because then the um, thread is being held in that first one. So you're going to find that it doesn't um, nest so much underneath it's going to make it a little bit easier to sew you can hold that back one to pull it through slightly as well you should never pull the piece through the machine because then you might take your uh, timing out of whack but you can ease it through backwards and forwards again take my last one and as I say if you were Making up your bag, you'd be doing your two panels at once, so you'd be making eight of these. But you can see if you batch it like this, it actually goes okay, through yeah, because really it's, it's exactly the same panel on the front and the back. Yeah. Okay. I love it because it looks like one of those. Um, I can't remember what they're called that you windmills. That you like blow. a Catherine. Oh, I was thinking a Catherine you know, wheel. It. Oh, no, I think the ones that you have on sticks that you buy at the seaside and you put on top of your sandcastle yes. and they blow round and round, that's what it looks it like. It does look like that, yes. Okay, then when you've finished, 
can take your pins out and you will have done eight of these like I say and then you cut off your threads you're also saving thread by doing it that way which we like and then we're going to press that triangle down towards itself kind of thing okay So give that a really good press. I don't know if I've got that on high enough. There we go. And I'll do that with the other ones. And this feather fabric has got um, shimmery tones in it as well. It's like got silver. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? It's yeah, really it's pretty, really yeah. pretty. And I like that there isn't, there isn't really a directional to it. I know, which is always very which useful when you're doing things like that, isn't yeah. it? But it's really pretty. So this is the Lewis and Irene um, fabric. This is the one that's got the owls on it, hasn't it? Yeah. And the, it's lovely because that one's got like bronze metallic on it, whereas this feathers has got like silver metallic. So yeah. pretty. Yeah, it goes really nicely together. Okay, so then once we've done that, we're gonna I'm gonna flip my board over, and I'm gonna cut off the excess seam allowance underneath. So grab my rotary cutter and my ruler so we're going to lift up there can you see that i've done that on that one that's the one i prepped before so that's what we're going to do with these ones we're going to get rid of those bottom two triangles we're just going to do quarter seam allowance so lining it up with that stitch line and then cutting that off And we're going to do that with the other two. And you can see once you get into a rhythm of it, mm. it does, um, does go quite smoothly. Okay, so then we've got our four pieces and that is our block A so that is almost halfway there okay. with the, the panel so then we're going to move over to our block B which is really similar let's move those out of the way thank you so we want to get our block B pieces mm. so that we can see what we're doing and that's what this piece is this piece is what's going to look like finished so we grab our again we grab our longer b2 right side up and then hopefully the tr the diagonal lines seem to have stayed <laughs> on these ones <laughs> oh that's quite uh, funny it's quite funny no it's not on that one just that top one I there you go top tip friction to pens that. are brilliant unless you leave them in the sun yeah exactly <laughs> So we're going to lay that on, except we're not going to do it like we did before that way. We're going to do it that way. We're going to twist it. So we've got our line this time going from the top left to the bottom right. And put a pin in. And carry on with all of those. Sometimes you don't necessarily need the pin to keep it there, but it just reminds you which way you're doing it as well. It helps. Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to go from here to the machine and something you falls think you off. You can't remember when you get from one to another. Yeah. I know. I, <laughs> yeah. I do know the feeling. <laughs> Anything that helps with the old memory is a good thing. So the one the um, that Susie's working, oh, Susie Emma is working <laughs> with at the moment. As I just read Susie said the. Um, kit that Emma is working with at the moment is the one that's on screen, the Susie Duncan's Lewis and I are Enchanted Sunny Days. So it's a Sunny Days bag but using the fabric from the Enchanted collection which is features owls and feathers and mushrooms. So we're going to take that over to the machine and we're going to do just like we did before. And then the finished sample bag that I have here 
is all Liberty, all Liberty from the new Liberty Riviera collection. So you get the instructions and a metre and a half of these three Liberty fabrics. Oh yes, so if you want straps on the, um, the bags that we've got here, um, you just need one pack of webbing. So we've got three different colours, you've got a metre. This is the lightest one. That's the one that's been used on this bag. You can melt it because I think you need a metre is enough for both handles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah, because it's only... But if you obviously want really long handles, because these handles, look, they'll go um, over your shoulder like that. If you wanted really long handles, then you would need to buy more. I think that's fine. Depends what you're using it for, but a metre is enough for the bag. So that's the lightest one. And then we've got the medium one, which is more of a um, stone. Depending on what colour your stones are, but that's what it's called. Stone. And then we have the darker one. What's this one called? Tan. Oh, I'd be worried if my tan was looking like that. It's slightly <laughs> green, isn't it? I'd go more light khaki. To be honest, yeah. There's a bit of green and grey in that, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> I'd go like khaki, that's called tan. There we go. And that's all, you, that's what you need. Also, if you want to put wadding in it, which I think has been done with, with this one, um, did you use fusible 8640? Yeah, yeah, it does make it easier, especially if you're going to quilt. I didn't quilt the top, but if but you're going you to did. quilt it, it's going to make it a lot easier if it's fused to it. And you only need half a metre. So there's a half a metre piece. Oh, right. So there's a metre by 90 centimetres. So you've actually got enough to make two bags with this. Because you only need half a metre. So that's good. Well, you can keep that. Use that for all your other projects. Always useful to have. Right. What do we do next? Sorry. We are carrying on. That's all right. I've stitched up those three pieces again don't forget I've already got my fourth one so I don't mm. need to that's why I haven't done four but you will be doing eight <laughs> not to be too confusing I hope and then we're going to press the um, triangle again exactly the same as we did before so you're repeating the steps really you're going to press it towards that corner and then we're going to cut off the excess same as we did before so it's a nice, it's quite a nice sort of concentrated piece of patchwork and then you then that creates the bag, but it's a lovely yeah. technique builder, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's good if you haven't done that much quilting before as well. Or if you just don't want to think too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make a quick project. Well, it's also, I quite like doing small things like this because when it's not very big, mm. you then can take your time to match seams and all of that. Whereas when you're doing yeah. a whole quilt, that the um, novelty of matching seam wears off, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So exactly like I did before, I'm slicing off that excess seam allowance. Then we are going to, let me flip that over again. finish off block B and you may have guessed we're going to do exactly the same don't tell me the lines have come off on those no that's okay <laughs> yeah. that one. they I must be on one. the bottom of the pile then <laughs> yeah uh, and we're going to place it right sides together with the line going from the top left to the bottom right oh and that's what creates the um the three piece pieces yeah And it don't, you don't need to worry too much if there is a direction. So like this blue one, there is a direction to it, um, and the pinky one as well, because the way that the pinwheel goes, it goes around, so... Um, it, but at some patchwork point is supposed to have things upside exactly. down, and that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost impossible yeah, when you do to patchwork get to get everything the right way up, particularly, exactly. you know, when you do things like log cabin and you're moving it round in any way, and that's the, the joy the of joy it. The joy of it, exactly. Mm. But when you come to the next bit that hopefully we'll get to, um, you do need to think about direction. Yes, but for the patchwork bit. But for the patchwork, okay. you don't, yeah. So you just... Well, we've got about five minutes left on this one. Okay. So we're going to sew those lines again. Oh, I didn't 
didn't hold my threads very well. snip them off and take out the pins cut off the, the excess thread okay and then we're just going to press that again and we're going to press that so that it's going again to match up with itself so sort of folding the square in half I mean, if you've done quilting before, this is going to be, you know, really... Yeah, and it's a nice, e nice easy make, isn't it? But yeah. it is quite nice to just concentrate on doing one block. And it's, like, yeah. it's good for beginners, because sometimes you create these quilt blocks, and you well, I don't know what to do with them now. Yes, yeah. But you can make them into a lovely tote bag. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could use another quilt block with it as well, if you wanted to. Well, with the kit, all the kits, you get the instructions, so you can then think, yeah. decide... You've got you can the, do them again and again. You've got the sizes for the sides mm. of the tote and everything, so you can just mi mi mix and match. Okay. Okay, flip that over, cut off the excess. Just double check, I'm cutting off the right bit. <laughs> case of piecing them together matching up those four pieces so then you've got your four block B mm. and you've got your four block A so then you need to align one of block A so let's put them in a pile one of block A and one of block B with the diagonal seams in the opposite directions okay so we're going to go I need to get my head around this. It's like that, isn't it? And then we're going to play, piece them together. Okay. And we're going to make the, the pinwheel pattern. Right. Um, but I also wanted to talk about, if we've got time, quickly. Very quick, yes. I think we need to... Because that's all yeah. in the instructions. Okay. So we're going to move on. I just want to talk about when you're cutting out the side borders, because you do need to make sure that you've got that directional print going right. the right way. Right, so on the bag itself, yeah. these are the bits that go down the, um, the sides here. So you make... You, this is the block that Emma was just going through, and then these are the sides... So they've got to go the right yeah. way. Yeah, exactly. You've got to make sure that your print is at the top. So when you've got your block all together, so your blocks here, you want to make sure that your, your yes, side is okay. at the top. Um, and then the same when you're cutting your borders, top and bottom, if there's a direction to your print. And then you it will all look even. That. So exactly. don't worry about the patchwork, but these bits do need to. Exactly. Okay, yes. that's great. Yes. So the bundles for the other kit that we're going to do. So this is the Lou Orth Applique Pouch. Um, I'm going to start because the one that... Is, I'm going to start with the one that um, Emma's going to demo. So this is what it looks like. It's lovely. It's a little zip pouch which has a, a scissor applique on it. It's ideal if you haven't done any applique before. You want to make something just a little... Um, pouch to keep your small sewing kit in maybe you know just keep your scissors a seam ripper some threads you need a little sewing kit um you can keep a few tools together it needs two fat quarters and a zip really so with this every, all of these kits come with the pattern so you've got the pattern and two fat quarters so with this one it's got this gorgeous rainbow one 
and then a little light rainbow one. They're both Lewis and Irene. Um, I've got a lovely yellow one. I like this one. So again, you get the pattern and you get the two fat quarters. So you get the one with the little sunrises on and that's a Moda one. And then the deep, because you need two, you need sort of a, one shade that stands off the other because one's the applique and one's the background. Um, lovely Moda Pinny scissory one. It's called um, A Stitch in Time. There we go, you get the pattern and you get the um, two fat quarters, so the blue blue with scissors on and pink with pins on. Even better, scissors and scissors. And then finally, this one, which has got, again, two fabrics, two rainbowy fabrics. So you've got the rainbow um, shooting stars and the rainbow flowers. Um, and we have also got the pattern just on its own. Oh, one more bundle. <laughs> pattern on its own. So if you only want the pattern, you need two fat quarters to make it. And you've got your own fabric for your own stash, Seven ninety nine for just the pattern. Okay. Right, Emma, so how, how do we do this? Is it easy? Yes, it is. Um, if you've not done a plique before, is it okay? Yeah, I think it's fine. It, you, you've got to be a bit careful around the handles. Right. That's the only thing I would say if you've not done it before. Um, but it's, it's totally fine. I, I always okay. say, give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? You've got a pattern. Yes, you can cut it out again. You can cut exactly. it out again. Right. Okay, so I just wanted to show um, in the pattern you get the seam rippers or you get the scissors. Now, in the pattern, um, she tells you to trace oh. over. Oh, I didn't realise it was seam. So you can have a seam yeah. ripper on it or scissors or, scissors, or both. Or both, yeah. Okay. Um, or, or anything you want to, really, because you've got the, the pattern instructions to make the zipper pouch as well. Right. Uh, with the measurements and everything. So she tells you to um, trace over the pattern pieces, which is totally great. But I just wanted to show a different yeah, sure, way to sure. do it as well. So what I have done... And obviously, if you're going, because on the, one of the pattern pieces, it's got it on the front and the back. So only do this or photocopy it if you are um, only going to be doing the one size. So obviously, this doesn't work so well if you're wanting to use both sides, unless, like I say, you photocopy it first. So I have actually cut out the um, scissors from the page, as you can see, with a, um, with a blade, with a knife. Okay, and that means then when you come to doing your um, applique, now normally you would, or how uh, it's mentioned in the pattern, is you'd use your bondweb, uh, which you're going to need. And there's like a small pair of scissors, and a, there's yeah. three different size scissors, yeah, and, and seam in here. Yeah, That's yeah. a brilliant pattern. So you can use it over and over yeah. again. And um, so you're going to want to use your, your bondweb, and you can trace through like she says, in that way. Or, like I say, you can cut it out like I've done. And then that means if you cut it out, you can then adhere your bond web to your fabric first, and then you can trace around. So if you're doing quite a few, maybe you want to turn the scissors upside down to get a really good sizing out of your, your piece, or you just want to do it. It's just a different technique, basically. Okay. Um, so that's how I've done it. So I've prepped up my two fabrics. So it, you want to have one for your scissors or your main piece. And then you can see you've got the little screw, the circle in the middle, which she gives you as a separate piece. Now, as you can see, that is quite fiddly if you do it my technique. <laughs> so maybe, maybe not for everyone. But this means you can then trace it through on the back. Okay, and then you want to use, you can use a pen, actually I'm going to use a pen I think, or oh, a pencil. Pencil is really good on the tracing paper of Bondweb. Um, and then you want to trace it through. And trace around it I should say. So that you've got your scissor shape. I mean, it is good that you get all of the... I hadn't realised, I thought it was just like one pair of scissors and the fabric, but you get three pairs of scissors and, um, and it says you can use them to attach to clothing bags or pouches. The large size could obviously be used as the focal point of a mini quilt or cushion. Yeah, True. that would like make a really nice cushion, wouldn't it? Mm. 
And you could add buttons, I thought. You could put a button in the middle for the yes, screw. Yes, that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be nice. So that's all you do. You just trace around. Okay. Or, you know, you do it before. And I'm not being super, super accurate. Obviously, if you can be, then great. But the scissors, I know that with my scissors, I can make it straighter, if you know what I mean. When you're cutting it. Yeah, because you're going to yes, cut it out mean, next. Yes. I wouldn't cut this out with a rotary blade. It's not going to be as uh, accurate. Well, because it's so realistic, it's such a lovely design. It is quite narrow, isn't it, to make it so perfect. Yeah. So. so I've got my shape there. If that's Lovely. hard to see, and then I'm going to cut it out. And then from that, you applique that onto the front of the pouch. Yeah, then you just peel off the backing paper mm. and you fuse it onto the, um, the rectangle that you've cut for the, the bag. The measurements are in the pattern. Okay. And then you can turn, it tells so you, you how to turn it into. you get a lot in here because you get all those, pat all those applique patterns and you get how to do the pouch. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite multi-usable. going a little bit speedy but you know you can be as accurate as you like with this well it's funny with the plique isn't it it's you know you can go really accurate to make it absolutely perfect but then yeah. it is supposed to be it's a hand a home stitched yeah hand stitched because you might do it might be seen but it's handmade yeah exactly right i've only got a couple of minutes left I don't know if time's gone today it's just whoosh by okay it? i'm not going to cut out the handles then okay because <laughs> i haven't got time but you would cut out the handles right. and i wanted to mention yeah. So here's my square that I've prepped up for as if I was making the pouch. And I wanted to mention that um, I have actually interfaced this. It doesn't tell you that in the pattern, but I've just used a regular interlining. Okay. And then when you come to fuse your applique piece on and stitch it on the machine, it's going to make it a little bit more sturdier. Yes, I can see. Yeah. And then you can applique. It's a lot easier to move the piece under the machine and get round those That's corners. That's a really good tip, actually. So yeah, can that's lovely. There, can well, I? thank you so much. Sorry, you've been so rushed. Well, I don't know where the day's <laughs> gone. We've no. just rushed along today. No I mean, that's really useful. And you've shared loads of great tips with us. Oh. Um, when will you be back? Uh, I'm back at the end of July. Fab, fab. With some new patterns. Oh really? Oh, yeah. oh so look forward to that then. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that. Oh those. good. Well, thank you so much. You've been thank brilliant you. today. I know everyone's really enjoyed all the oh. <coughs> the tips and advice that you've given us. Thank you. So we'll see you soon. Oh. <coughs> right, before we finish Sewing Street and move on to Yarn Lane, um, earlier at about half eight, we brought back the um, Amber Makes Trio storage boxes because they sold out on, um, they sold out on John's birthday. Now the sewing room has sold out on its own, but you can get it in the big bundle. And remember that in each kit you get, each kit you get, three baskets, large, medium and small. So the sewing room is sold out on its own. If you want it, then it is only available in the big bundle. Now in the big bundle, you get three panels. You get the sewing room panel, the potting shed panel, and the thatch cottage panel, and you get the instructions. That's the only way to get the sewing room. Remember, each set of storage boxes, there are three in each set. So if you want the sewing room, the only way to get it now is in the multi-pack. Um, the next one is the potting shed. So again, you get a big shed with optional handles. And you can get that in the big bundle as well. And you get the medium basket. All three come on the panel. And you get the baby basket that's got all gardening-y type words on it. 
and the instructions. I'll show you one of the panels in a moment when I've done all of those. So that's the potting shed. Remember, that comes in the multi-bundle or you can buy it singly. Um, and then finally is the thatch cottage. So you get the big cottage, which has got furniture inside and a flagstone floor. But it's got a flagstone floor inside and it's got like sofas. It has got underfloor heating because it would be very cold otherwise. It's a very, um, it's a very old fashioned cottage with a modern inside. <laughs> uh, and then it's a kind of a country cot it's a country kitchen cottage because this one is all the shells that you'd get like on a kitchen dresser. You've got teapots and recipe books and cups and hampers and things. And inside you've even got the flagstone floor. Um, and then the baby one has got recipe books on it. There's the baby one. Um, so I'll just show you one of the panels so you can see what you get. I'll just show you the thatch cottage one. So this is what the panel looks like for one of them. Quite a big panel. You get, so can you see at the bottom you've got the, the, there's two linings and two outers for each one and then you've got handles. Up to you whether you put them on or not, depends what you're going to do with it. So you've got the um, insides and the outsides. So this is the whole panel. So you've got big cottage, medium cottage and little cottage. And that's all on there. And obviously each kit, whether you buy the um, individual ones or we buy the multi, all come with a set of instructions that explain exactly how to make them. Um, you, all you need to make one is just over, just over half a metre. So for one trio, you need just over half a metre. So if you buy the multi-pack, you'll only need two metres of wadding. If you buy the single trio, you will need one metre because you need just over half a metre, unfortunately just the way it was but you'll have left left over so there we go so you just have to choose the sewing room is sold out on its own but it is still available we still have a few kits left of the multi-pack or you can buy the thatch cottage on its own or the potting shed on there but please do check out right don't go anywhere we are going to yarn lane we've got the real live designer in today um jenny who has designed all these beautiful garments from the new Bo peep collection we've got the pattern books and we have some of the garments available as um as yarn packs but we have all the garments here for me to show you so don't go anywhere this is going to be a lovely show It'll be really lovely to meet jenny who's going to show us and inspire us how she designs the garments and how to make them too so i'll see you back in here in just a few minutes time for yarn lane sewing street have our very own app you can now watch and shop from anywhere simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet then log in or create an account and you're done you can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. the live show don't worry we recorded it for you never miss out on your favorite presenters guests and makes ever again head on over to our youtube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again we also have lots of great content exclusive to our youtube pages such as product demonstrations troubleshooting videos and so much more Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7 full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. 
Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! 
Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Welcome to Yarn Lane. What a joy and delight of yarn and loveliness and new patterns I've got today. It's great. We are so lucky today. We've got Jenny Watson um, on air. She's one of the main designers. There are Jenny. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming all this way. Oh, absolutely. To no see problem. Us. So you are one of the main designers, I would say, for West Yorkshire Spinners. I'd take that as a compliment. You Thank do you very much. Of design but yeah, I do do them. a lot of work with of them and I have worked with them for. Mm, probably eight, nine, ten years now. Wow. Knitting yeah. and crochet. I tend not to do crocheting as much. My but daughter's more on that side oh, okay. of it. I'm more on the knitting, but she right. likes the crochet side as well. So that's where the blankets come from. So yeah, yeah. so we have got um, your brand new book, Bo Peep Storybook Four, which we are selling in separately, obviously, with loads and loads of patterns. We're going to go through those with Jenny in a minute. Nine ninety five. That's amazing price. Um, and then we've got bundles to make some of the projects, but we're going to go through the um, the book first. This is so lovely. Thank you. So, what happened when you were asked to design this? How how did it work? Did they give you any ideas or guide? Yeah. Did you have any guidelines? We have a brief, right? And then from that brief, we'll put a collection together of okay. designs, different designs, and then we'll present them. And then from that, the client will select which mm. ones they would like, and then we can tweak them slightly or change and make them more difficult or more easy, depending on what we're trying to get in the book and what we're trying to get over. Okay. Um, so it's a, it's a, it is a joint effort. Right, okay. But the technical side obviously comes so from So I guess myself. they say, right, these are all the colours of yarn yes. we've got. You've got to use all of them. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful, though. It's absolutely stunning yarn. They are. Oh, it is. I mean, I've, I've knitted. I know, actually, I've crocheted with it because I've crocheted one of the there was another blanket and I've crocheted it with it. it's beautiful beautiful to work with isn't it so in the book oh yes we don't have an overhead why can't I remember that um Robo Peep DK is a robust yet gentle delicate yet durable yarn perfect for adventurous children who like to explore that's lovely isn't it yes so this is all double knit, isn't it? It is, yes. It's all standard DK. So all double knit. So if you, so in the book it lists all the colours. Obviously, you know, whenever a pattern is written, it is suggested that you use the yarn make that is used to get the correct tension. But obviously, it's your book. You can do what you like with it. But it's all double knit yarn. So here are, I have got all the samples as well of these. So this is the first one. Let's go through. That's the first one. I love this one. Shall I get it out? Right, you can have them. Let's do it this way. You can have them and tell me what Thank was your you. inspiration behind this one then? Well, this So this one. is leggings and a top, isn't it? Yeah. Is that right? Again, it's just something that the client was wanting to put mm. into the range. Sort of try, almost a little bit vintage -y, but not and tr trying to bring that tradition yeah. back in a little bit with hand knit yarns which is lovely and it's obviously we know where it's all sourced mm. so we've just done a straightforward raglan obviously with shoulder opening so it's easy to get over baby's I like that. head just it's a little bit different a lot a lot of garments come with openings down the back and down the front but this one's a little bit different and then just a little leggings to go with it. it's all in stocking stitch this has been created by using one of the multicolored yarns which, oh right this one which you've got okay. over there that's right so there's nothing else other than stocking stitch and rib here so it's very easy to mm. achieve something that looks very different and again the versatility all of all of this is you know you, you could just do it as a block color if you wanted you could yes. do it the reverse way around you could do the trousers so what's the size range in this then if I'm, well, I'm just going to move to that pattern so we go from naught so zero months up to 36 so yes. that's quite good so newborn to three yes age three yes but obviously we've got to be careful because we can never 
be specific on the no, size I mean, of a child. No, it does give in here. It does yeah. give chest sizes as well, but I guess it's quite useful, it's, isn't it, as a it, guideline? It is, but it is literally a guideline. And what I would say to anybody who's wanting to knit for a child or a baby, mm. you just need to get those measurements, really, because if you, <laughs> if you were to go into any of the high streets, you can just buy the garments, take them home, try them on, and if they're not right, then you just take them back and get the next yeah, size, true. don't you? But obviously knitting something, you don't want to put all that effort in and then discover that oh it's too small it's all right if it's a bit big because obviously they're going to grow into right. it but if it's too so, small I mean, but it does give, so measure the chest um, chest sizes actual sizes yes. full length sleeve length the um inside leg and crotch so all the measurements are in there yes so do measure your child yes and all of them you can you know so like the leg length you literally of just measure you your own child's true. leg length and the same as the crotch up mm. to the tummy so all of these are adjustable it's just having the confidence to do it because as I say the sizes that we put in are of an average, oh, average size yeah um, but at least it gives you some yes. kind of guideline to yeah. to start on right so that's the um is that because I've started on the patterns um then the next one is uh, the hello sunshine hooded jacket oh now this one's lovely and bright Shh. it's just there on the I can just see it over there on the top oh that's why I moved it over here yeah there we go I love this one. Thank you. So that's the so what was what was your remit on this one? Bright well, and cheerful? Yeah, I mean this was just a fun knit, just easy throw on um garment basically that's easy to knit again because it's just Irish moss stitch, little pouch pockets. We've What's done the Irish moss stitch. It's just a four row moss stitch. You've got a single moss stitch where if it's an even number of stitches, it's over two rows. If it's an odd number of stitches, it's over one row and just repeated. Okay. Whereas Irish moss stitch is knit one, pearl one, but yeah. over four rows. So it offsets by two stitches oh, each okay. time. And it's it just gives you slightly different textured effects. I've and never then, heard of that. Yeah. Which so you can see a lot clearer. In yes, that one. That's right. That's exactly the same pattern. That's right. But so you can see great. that a lot clearer. Oh. I so like that. That's yeah. a really nice stitch. So isn't it? it's it's just literally knit one pearl one all the mm. way across. Coming back it's the same, but then on the next row where you had a knit stitch, you've got a pearl stitch. So it's an right. easy, easy stitch to do, but it's very effective and gives a nice textured look. And it's got a nice bobble on it as well. Yeah. And again, this is naught months to thirty-six yes. months. Yes. As a rough guideline. Right, magic tricks, cardigan and jumper. I really like this. But is the hat with this one? Because that's the same pattern, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. It wasn't in that picture. So I love that. For me, that's like a real special occasion. Well, it's for the more why. advanced knitter, because obviously... So it's fair owl. It's fair owl. So switching it inside out, you can just see how intricate the work is. Wow. And the beauty of that? this... No, I didn't. The beauty of this <laughs> and the beauty of any fair hour, what you've got to do is make sure that there's plenty of give. give right, That's okay. where a lot of ladies can go wrong or knitters can go wrong, is that they pull the yarn that they're stranding behind too tight. So what I would always suggest is when you get to the end of a row, give is a just stick. give it a little bit of a tug okay. so it eases the stitches a bit. Right. Okay. Because if again if it's there's no you know, if you've knitted it too tight, there's no Going back it's really. lovely it's though, I like the colours that you've chosen for this because it makes it traditional but a little bit modern as well. Yes, yes, and again this one's in a different, we have this shown in a different colour scheme as well ah, which is just the opposite whereas it's quite them. muted and subtle yeah, so that's, and not as um, obvious. Yeah. I've got a whole box full here, it's brilliant. I think I've got the whole book. So that's it but in um, so this is in Fluffy like, Cloud, Spark yeah. and Seahorse. Um, so it just goes to show how different the look depending on it is, yes. the shades that you use. And I love the hat And it's as so well. soft. Oh, so it can be a cardigan or a jumper, yes. I've got it. Yes, so, so same got pattern, both, but it same can be pattern, a, but yes. It can be a cardigan or a jumper. And you've got a chart in there for the fair isle. Yes, it's all charted out. Full chart, so you don't have to worry too yes, much about... Show you in the, let me show you in the book, so you can see what, what it looks like in the book. See, I mean, I love this book. Most, nearly always, the West Yorkshire Spinners books are ring-bound, which is fab, because when you're knitting from it, you can actually lie it flat on the table rather than trying to hold it open with the remote control. Yeah. Which was my favourite holding opening item. But it's like a bit like a coffee book table book as it? well, isn't it? Beautiful nice. photographs. Yeah. And because this is, they're written for knit, by knitters, for knitters, they're all 
very, very comprehensive. I like to think that that's what we're renowned for. Oh, you know you are, definitely. Yeah, well, definitely. I'd like to think that we try to keep it as simple as we possibly can. Well, I think there's a lot of detail in these books where the photos are beautiful, they're inspirational, but they use their photograph for knitters because when you're knitting the back of this, you want to see what the back looks like. So it's almost like they, well, it isn't almost like they have, they have planned to put photos in so there's detail. Well, it's a working document. Because you need it, don't that's you? That's what you need, yeah, working document. I mean, it's lovely to have pictures to go, oh, that's so cute, but it's nice. So look, there's all the charts, little colour, no symbols, just colour, really simple to use, and sleeves and everything. Oh, hang on, I'll just get onto the last the page, and that's the next one then. So really, really simple to use. It's just adorable, isn't it? Right, so next cute. one. We're going to have done the whole book in a minute. Um, oh, the rompers. This is really, <laughs> really sweet. This makes me think of um, Prince William. Yes, yes. In that first photo, where he was crawling on a blanket. Yes. Look at that. That's too cute. That's too cute. Too cute. But this is the same pattern as the pinafore. Yes. Yeah. So we did you the pinafore. You just need boy and you? girl twins, don't you? <laughs> so we did them in the <laughs> complementary multi yarn and the plain yarn and yeah i mean the little boy in that looks so cute it's I'd, I'd so like sweet so let me i'll show you the um the pattern so this is what it looks this is what it looks like in the book so that's the um the pinafore look how sweet that is and again they all go from newborn to 36 months but look at him in that little romper and again sleep. these are all adjustable so you know if you measure the length of the skirt that you want once you've done all of the decreasings yes. you can continue it if you wanted it longer oh, okay yeah, yeah so uh, you just choose yeah, that, which yeah. is does make it so versatile doesn't the only it? thing that you've got to bear in mind is obviously the yarn amounts that are given in the book are based on these measurements right. okay. so if you were going to make it a lot bigger you may well need an extra ball yes, of yarn which is fair enough yeah. and look Oh, that's with the, the we've got, we'll come on to that one in a minute because it's the same pinnacle. That's really sweet. So what techniques have we got in that one? So then? in this one, so we were talking, uh, so you've got the stocking stitch here at the bottom. Yeah. And earlier we were talking about Irish moss stitch. Yes. So here we've got single moss stitch. Okay. Which, which is, is literally knit one pearl one, knit it? one pearl one all the way across <coughs> and then the row coming back is exactly mm. the same depending on whether or not it's an odd or an even number. So I'll just show you the difference. So probably see there that one's quite tight and looks as though it's got lots of little nobbles in it and then this one is more open but that's class Irish sorry Irish and single okay so again very it's easy a, yes, to do it's the same technique but just yes. slightly different yeah. it does give quite a different yeah. effect doesn't it but I really like the way that you've used all these different stitches in it well again what we've done the yarn to a degree sells itself because yes. you, you're creating pattern without actually any sort of real stress in the respect mm. of it's just stocking stitch so you're not having to really concentrate and introduce lots of yarns because obviously when you're doing a fair aisle which this one is obviously you, you might be working with three or four yarns at the same time so you've got to be quite a competent knitter because your yarns are going to get twisted at right. the back yeah so that is probably the most um experience you need to be whereas the rest of them we've tried to keep quite simple but effective garments quirky garments but mm. again creating something different by using um, the multicolored yarn lovely um, right next I've gone, I'm just going to the index because that's the easiest thing hat helmet and booties this is weird I'm still going this is all in this one book it's only 9.95 and we've still and it's all double knit it's all double knit so there's the hat so yeah so we've got a little helmet here ear, ear warmers oh that's really so that's sweet basically, isn't it yeah um we don't put tend not to put ties on anything anymore just for oh, yeah, safety reasons true. and things so that just like keeps that your ears warm. it does and then just a little pair of matching booties so again oh, this is where the fair isle hat pattern is in here that's what confused ah. me because it wasn't with the jumper but it's it's in this part that's just kind of confused you. Right. Um, now we've gone. We're going on Fair Isle. I love this one. So this is like this is the older children now. Yes. So the Fair Isle cardigan is on. I've actually got it on a whole model. 
can come off the shelf and come and sit beside you. Is that a bit high? That is fine. Okay. So that's the Fair Isle cardigan. So the age for this one is... Um, so this is where it gets big. This is age three up to 12 plus. Yeah. But that 12 plus is a 32 inch bust. So that is a small adult as well. Yes. That it will go all the way up to. Yeah. yeah. Plus there's an allowance on there, don't forget. So True. You've got to allow... Sometimes knitters can be confused mm -hmm. by the size to knit and the actual size. Right. So the size to knit is if you were going into a, a retail outlet to buy a garment and you mm. wanted to buy a six to nine months, yes. then it would automatically have an allowance on it. But we have to put what our allowance is on so you know exactly what size the garment's going to come out when it's finished. Yes, because that's really important, yeah. isn't it? And it does all, all of them say to fit chest and then actual size, yes. which is brilliant. Um, so with this cardigan, how, how is is this um, again advanced, or yeah, you just need uh, yeah. to have done a bit of fair isle? Well, because you've got so many colours coming in at different angles and things, it's not um, it's not what we would call a traditional. Whereas it's just a mixture of two colours coming across at any mm. one time. In some instances, we might have three colours coming in, which makes it a little bit more intricate to a degree. But it's effective again, colourways. You could do anything that you wanted. You don't have to do them in these colours, which is the beauty of this book. Mm. There's so many variations that you could do if you just want to try something different and make it more unique to yourself. Well, I guess, yeah, you could just do it in two colours, couldn't you? You could, so let absolutely. Me, let me show the pictures in the book. I mean, this is obviously the, the star of the show because it features on the front of the book. So you've got... Um, so that's a smaller one. You've got a little boy there with it, but then... You've got a, a teenager. So that's the sort of sizes it goes up to. I love it. It's really cool. It's a bit scandy cool, isn't it? Yes. Um, again, you know, nice shots where you've got the back of it. This is still, you know, we're still in the same book. They can't believe there was so much in here for 9 And um, look, we've got the charts. The charts are all coloured in. So easy to follow. I do like that. Because I've used Fair Isle charts before where it's symbols. And it's really hard. Do you, do you like doing Farrell? I love Farrell. Oh, do you? Yes. Yeah, because a lot of people... Will... No, I love Farrell because you have to really think. Yes. And it's not boring. There's no sort of carry on for 20 inches. Well, you see, you're seeing a result every couple of rows, so aren't you, lovely. as it grows with the and colours. And actually, I find it not quite easy in that you need to follow the chart, but it's so easy to see when you've gone wrong. Yes. Because it, yes. it doesn't match up. Yeah. But it's just interesting to know. The hardest isn't it? thing to do is not to pull the yarn that's stranded behind right. too tight. That that's the main thing about it. Because it, obviously if you do that, you can see that this is nice and flat. You can almost see the rippling coming in if mm. something's being pulled too tight. And that that's the that's the hardest thing really with Fair Isle. Okay. Mm. So you just have to remember that. Um, right, next one. I'm going through my whole book now. Um, is the jumper and dress this one yes so there's a boy's sweater and a little girl dress oh, do I? like a sweater dress yes, i have got this so, so that's the girl's version which yep. can be a sweater or a dress i guess yep. depending on how long you knit for so again easy to knit easy to do right. it's all been created by just solid stripes and plain stripes we've shown it just so you can see it in two colorways um, simple neckline, it's just a slash it's neck. It's very effective, so isn't it's, it? You know, there's no restriction on popping it over your head. And as I say, they've used a plain yarn. And on this one, this is all plain yarns, just the greys and the white. Whereas on this one, we've used the solids, but then we've also used the... Oh, the multi-colour multi one to In do here, that. just to give it a slightly different So effect. let me show you in the pattern book, because we've got a photo. It's nice to see the photos. So this is obviously the... the um, girls one but it can be a jumper or a dress depending on how long you do it quite nice isn't it very effective and then that's what the, it looks on the back but that, I think that's beautiful isn't it really beautiful yeah. um, right next one I can't believe this is never ending there are so many patterns in this it's the most amazing value for money um, this is the Dotty Days jumper so soft Oh, really it's a beautiful yarn. It is a beautiful no, it's yarn. A bit, and it washes really well. does wash really, really well. Well, it's 52% Falkland wool and 48% nylon, so that gives it softness. Yeah. So this is your Dotty Days jumper? Yes. 
So again, we've shown this in a couple of different colourways in the book, just to show sort of a um, yes, yep. and it's that one as well. Thank you. So we've got it in the in the book. It's in the navy and the light blue. So how easy is this one then? Is Again, this is this is simple. This is just a basic feral technique. But as you can see, if I turn it inside out, you can see how it's nicely stranded across the back mm. without pulling the garment too tight. You're going to show us that in a minute. Yeah, I've got when we some finish, with when me. Yes. The book, um, Jenny's going to show us how to do that yeah. one. But again, easy to knit, little set in sleeve, opening, front opening, neck opening. Um, yeah, but again, with this, you could knit the back and the sleeves plain if you wanted and only oh, put yeah, the dots on the front true. because the yarn amounts won't vary that much yeah, um, yeah, that's with true. it just being a dot. So again, you could add your own um, little bit of influence to it. You could change the neckline, uh, the colour on the neck. You could do it in cream and things like that. So it's, if you've got any existing yarn at home that you want to use from your Bopi collection mm. obviously you don't have to stick to these colours then and it's got just such a good up. palette you've got well they keep adding more to oh, it don't do they? It. I'm it's, sure every time I look there's it's another colour in there there's so many different shades it's it is lovely. Um, I like the difficult to choose um, then we've got the hide and seek jumper now have I actually yeah. I know it's like it keeps on going I've never seen so how many patterns are in here Right, so this is the, there we go, that's the hide and seek jumper. So that's sort of your simple yes. polar neck jumper, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like a little type funnel neck type, if you like, back and front both alike, so dead easy to knit, very So simple. this is age 3 to 12 plus yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, that's your standard jumper, yes. you're going to keep making that one. Yes. I don't yeah. think I've got the striped version, I thought I'd... Oh, I oh, have. Um, yeah, can you see. just pass me the stripy jumper? Sorry. I've got trolleys and everything in the way. There we go. Thank you. So again, so this is the identical, except it's in the multi. And I think that, that to me looks as though it's been knitted in stripes. It does. That it makes looks life very simple because it, it looks like it's it knitted does. in stripes. Yeah. Gorgeous. So. Um, and then I think this is the last one, the hula hoop hat and cowl. I have missed that one then. So there's the hula hoop hat and cowl. Thank you. So this was just fun, was this? It's just Well that's just nice in Yeah. And again everybody needs a hat and cowl. Um but it's very easy to do. It's um just obviously the multicoloured yarn with the complementary plain yarn. So there's nothing hard about it, but it gives a nice uh, colourful effect. And again, right. you know, if you wanted, you know, we picked it up with the turquoise you could have done it in the sort of paler colours or a grey mm. you can do whatever you want with it it's just to sort of give you a basic idea of um and that's in how we see um it. again ages three up to 12. yes that's lovely i'll tell you the two that i've got left over is these i've realized were the same as the first ones we did right except the it's a little dress but uh, a little cardigan, cardigan and i love the frill around that yes. so that is let me show you have a look at this one that's this one, which is the same pattern as the furby first one we showed you, but it's just, it's got a cardigan with a little fill. But it's got knitted striped trousers. So Jenny, show that, Jenny will show you that one. I couldn't work out why I had one left over. There we go. So, that's, that, so again, it looks completely different to the boys' version. It does, doesn't it? Um, the same pattern. But it's all on the same pattern. Um, you know, this is, Irish, uh, sorry, moss stitch at the bottom again, which obviously gives a fluted effect and then we've just got a decrease row and then it's up into stocking stitch raglan sleeves which most people like raglan sleeves because it's easier for sewing the sleeves in because you're matching up yes. row for row yeah. the raglans which makes it a lot easier than just doing something like a drop shoulder where they've then got to gauge where to sew the sleeves in in some instances um so yeah easy knit again well if you count up there are 18 patterns in here because all the different variations when yes. you get cardigan and jumper there are 18 yeah. patterns in here for 9.95 that's fantastic so we do also have some of them as yarn packs so i'll do that first and then we'll move on to the kits so these are just yarn packs so the first one is the rompers and in this one you get three balls of dicky bird what a lovely name 
It's the plain one. So it's the plain romper that Jenny's got there. So this is the kit, 10.99. This is um, newborn to age three. Roughly, remember, you do need to measure. But the yarn pack for this, obviously you will need the pattern book. All of these you need the pattern book for. But if you want to make the rompers, um, and I think there's enough there for the biggest size, but let yes. me just check, I think it is. Um, then that's for that one. They are gorgeous, aren't they? Let me, where is the, there okay. we are. So you need, yeah, three balls. But you could make, use the, this if you wanted to make the pinafore dress in just that colour, then there's enough there for up to 18 months because you only need three balls. The other size you need four. So if you wanted to do the pinafore dress in just the dicky bird, you could also do that as well with this yarn pack. That's that one. The next one is this gorgeous yellow hooded jacket which I love. So this is the yarn pack for that. Remember, you do need the pattern as well. But remember, you get 18 patterns for 9.95 in the pattern book. If you want to make that gorgeous one, there's, there are. Um, Jenny's got that one there. Right, so Jenny's got that one there. And in this one, you get one, two, three, four, five, six balls of Starburst, which is your kind of variegated yarn that's got like lemons and greys and whites in it. And then you get three balls of the yellow. Sunshine. Uh, next one is, this is the hat and cowl set. So in this one, you get, no, so this is ages three to 12, you get four bowl, balls of dolphin, which is this gorgeous variegated yarn. So it stripes all by itself without you having to change color. And you get four balls of under the sea. So that's you sort of the top and the bottom. And, um, and you should have sufficient for a pom-pom. And is, well, yeah, yeah, I would have thought there's more than enough there I for mean, a pom-pom. I mean, it pom -pom. depends, because how full you like your pom-poms, but True. you should have sufficient. Okay, yes, yeah, so because you need two for the hat of each and two for the cow, so there's enough there to do both of them. All of that there. Um, then we've got the child's fair isle jumper, the one that we showed you earlier. And then the, um, the kit for that, I just need to grab it. You get one, two, three, it's four. Here, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one that's on the yeah. stand. That's, that's question. What is the smallest finished chest size on the Fair Isle cardigan? There's a question. That's like, an, that's like a test, isn't it? So, Jenny, what's the smallest chest size? The smallest chest size is 22 inch. So it goes from 22 to 32 inches. <coughs> Remember, you need the book separately, but there is enough yarn here for the up to the largest size. So you get three balls of rocket ship which is navy a ball of sunshine two balls of dicky bird two balls of fire engine that's a great name because that is fire it engine, is isn't yeah it? it's great that yeah. is fire no, engine. there's some lovely names and this one is called fluffy clouds that's like that kind of slightly off-white you get four balls of fluffy clouds all in that and that will make that's the yarn pack to make the child's fair isle cardigan right so now i'm going to give you we've also got a different option so behind me I'll bring her forward is now with this one this one comes with a free pattern so you this is the pattern for this isn't even in the pattern book there is a free pattern here to make the ladies fair old jumper it's the same as the children ones it's got plain colored sleeves it's gorgeous it comes in sizes and I looked at this earlier and I can't remember 28 to 54 inch bust and the kit that we've got so it's the pattern and all the yarn that will make the up to the largest size so you get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten balls of the um, rocket ship navy two balls of sunshine yellow four balls of fluffy clouds white three balls of dicky bird and three balls of fire engine red and you get the pattern as well so you've got everything you need. Now remember this is beautiful, it's double knit yarn, it's 52% Falkland wool and 48% nylon, which means it's very washable. Now we've limited number of these, we only bought a few of them, but I love this and honestly you wouldn't believe how soft it is. It's gorgeous, really, really soft. 
Isn't it lovely? What a statement piece. I think it's quite nice. You can spend all your time on the fair and then you can quickly whiz up the sleeves, can't you? Is oh, that yeah, the point absolutely. of it? No, I think we just wanted to do something slightly different to what we'd done on mm. the children's, but we wanted to have that connection that there was an adult's version in it because sometimes we get asked for a crossover. Yeah. You know, I've got this in a child's, can I have it in an adult's? And we just felt it was just something that was of the time and mm. it'd be a good I adult think it's garment. it's beautiful. I would love to own this. Maybe I'll get the kit. Um, so, those are all the the knitting kits. You don't need the book for the adult for this one because it comes with a free pattern. For the others, you need the book. The book is nine ninety five. It has eighteen patterns in it, and it's beautiful. Bow peep. It's double knit yarn. All the patterns use a double knit yarn. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you the crochet blanket kit, and then we'll move on to the demo. So. Again, designed by Jenny, this is the crochet blanket kit. So what was your, do you want to show that? Show and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell us it about It was just blanket. a case of coming up with a, a, a nice, easy crocheted blanket, but to be able to show a good variety of colours. And it, to be honest, it was difficult choosing shades because you could almost do a Christmas one, you could do an Easter version, you could do mm. a summer version, you could do, you know, a blues. Uh, pinks depending on your preference but it was just to show how versatile the yarn was and how it does work together and is so effective in what we've created here but simple enough to do looks lovely on the box on the uh, the picture at the side of the box where it's displayed there. oh it's beautiful isn't it look isn't that gorgeous but that's a lovely gift isn't yeah. it oh absolutely to come packaged like that as well. Yes. If I got that for a Christmas present, I'd be really well, happy. You would, but then you see, I think as well, if, if you crochet this for somebody, you could then give it to them in ah, the box. Ah, good thinking, yes. Yeah, no, I would love to have yes. it, but if you were making it for somebody, what a lovely gift. So if I... Right, there are lots of you who've got this in baskets. You need to check out, otherwise it's going to sell out. Oh, no, you open it. Do you know there's a really Don't simple way to... try while you're... Well, there's probably a really simple way to do it. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be really, really easy, simple. didn't we? <laughs> so in the box, you get all of this yarn. So let's go through the colours because they're going to be fab, aren't they? Um, oh, what's the pink one called? Cheeky Chops, Ball of Cheeky Chops, a Dicky Bird, a Sunshine, an Apple, and um, Five Fluffy Clouds. And that all will create in there. this. And they're all the, uh, the same Falkland Island wool yarn. This is crochet. Oh, remember, it does come with a pattern as well, handily. And the, the joy of putting the nylon in is makes it very machine washable. That's the best thing, because obviously it's children's things. So full pattern is in here. Now, I have crocheted one of these. I made, I can't remember what were the one before this was that using Bo Peep. Had a lovely name. Was it Circus or something like that? Rings a bell, but... And I crocheted that one. It was lovely, really lovely to do. So they're very good patterns. I can personally well, sometimes, show you. Sorry, I spoke over you then. Mm, sorry. sorry. Well, what I was going to say then was sometimes what you'll find with crochet can be quite bawdy, can't it? Yes. Whereas this yarn, because it's so soft. It's really it's, soft. It it's beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. So Carnival Crochet Baby Blanket. So it's thirty nine ninety five. You've got everything you need. All you'll need is a four mil crochet hook to do that. And it comes in this little box. Which is quite nice if you want to um, give the kit to somebody. In fact, if you've got a baby on the way, just buy the kit and give it to someone else. <laughs> but again, you, you know, I know this comes in a kit, but if you've got any of this spare yarn at oh, home... Oh, right, so let's just have a look. They wanted to have a look closer. Sorry. Don't worry. There we go. Can you see it? And then I'll put the box. There you go. Now you can see it. All the lovely colours, beautiful, isn't it? And it's easy stitches to do as well, yes. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's simple, so it doesn't take too long to do. Well, but half of the stock of that has gone when everyone's checked out, so please do, if you've got it in your basket, check out, otherwise it will sell out. Um, so, I think we've gone through everything. What are you going to show us how to do, Jenny? Well, all I was going to do was just show you how I do my uh, little bit of fair owl. I've just done the dot stitch Yeah, no, that'd be really useful. One, just because it's, it's an easy one to show for me to have tried to do the children's cardigan or the ladies' one. I'd have too many balls right. falling all over the place. Excuse me. 
Um, so I've just done this one for you, but what I decided to do, I've done it in a different colour way to the one that is shown in the book. And the reason for that was just so that if you knitted it once and fancied a complete change, I've actually done it with the background and I've done the background in rocket ship. Rocket ship, yeah. yes. But then I've used uh, Starburst. So the beauty oh. of the Starburst, with it being the multicoloured yarn, oh, it's in that yellow yes. So as you're knitting it through, obviously the little pips are going to change colours. They're going to go from the yellow into the cream, yes. into the grey, yes. and then back into the yellow again. Oh, right. So that'll give you like almost a little bit of a vignette type effect on the garment. Um, so I just thought it'd be worth a try and see what you thought. Um, with okay. regards to knitting of it, if you look on the reverse, as I said earlier, the garments are beautifully knit, but we need to make sure that the strands that are on the reverse of the garment mm. give us, there's a lot of stretch there. Right. But again, that's the beauty of this yarn, because it has got so much um, stretch with it it bounces back in. Whereas if oh, you were trying okay. to do it and you were using a cotton yarn, right. there's no give. Um, so it'd be slightly harder to do it in a cotton yarn. So it's best to do it in this sort of wool yeah. nylon mix, yeah. really. Yeah, because you, you do get the elasticity in it. Because I guess it can't sag either, so you've got to be stretchy but not saggy. Yeah, and the, the other lovely thing with this yarn is that it does go back into shape. You know, so like a cotton, if you were working with a cotton yarn, sometimes a cotton yarn's once you've pulled the welt out, this area here, it right. just gets saggier and saggier the more okay. it's worn and more it's washed. But the beauty of the wool uh, fibres, they knit together a lot easier mm. and they hold um, the bottoms firmer so it comes into the body better. But uh, it works very nicely on okay. that. So I was just wanted to show you this just so that you could actually see mm. how by using Multicolored yarn, it can look very different. Yeah, no, it does, doesn't it? Um, and then as for knitting it, as I'm doing it, I always try to keep my ball. I put my balls in baskets. Oh, do you? Um, yeah, just what, to keep the them separate. Yeah, on the floor or in little bags or something. You can buy knitting bags that have got all little compartments in them so you can put them in oh, and they okay. thread through. Um, I don't do enough of it to, um, to warrant me using that, to be honest. And then, so this, all I'm doing here, can you see, am I all right here? So yeah. all we're doing here is bringing in... You probably need to be just maybe a little bit further forward. The it's coloured... It feel a bit odd. Is that better? The coloured yeah. thread from behind. I'm going to make the I see. Okay. So this is your coloured thread that you bring in. And just, re just remember to take it across loosely. And always keep one of the yarn on top and the other yarn on the bottom because if you were to twist them as you're knitting it the balls will also get twisted up and then when you get to the end of the row you've got to untangle them so i hold that to the top i do my solid background color just doing five stitches in that and the other beauty of doing something like this you can easily say um, when you've made a mistake because you can see that it's not sitting directly on top of the previous rows below. So nice and loose behind it. And then we'll go yeah, back so to the what solid. do you do? Just like pull it and then just leave it to hang so it's not the yeah, well when keep I'm, it loose. Yeah, when I've done the number of stitches in between, as it's five here, I tend to just stretch them a little bit like I've done there. Oh, and I then see. pull the right. yarn yeah. level with that as you're making the next stitch. And then as they close back up again, as they go back together, right. you'll see on the back, it's a little bit looser, which so then means... So by sort of stretching them slightly on yes, your needle you, while yes, opening them as out, you're doing it. that gives you the right tension. It does, okay. well, all, all being well. <laughs> it's, it takes a little bit of practice, it's like anything else, um, but it is very effective. And as I say, make sure you keep one yarn on the top and one yarn on the bottom so that they don't uh, twist. Oops. There we go. And obviously you're just doing that all the way across the row. 
And you can pick up some speed with this as well. Don't be frightened of doing that. As I, you just saw me then, pull it and stretch it before I put the coloured thread in. And that's one of the easiest ways I find of achieving the elasticity within the garment. Nearly there. There we go. There we go. So that's that row done. So as you can see <coughs> from behind, when you close it all back up again, mm. it does give you the enough elasticity. It's a little bit like when you um, are doing measuring your garment and pinning it out, or measuring the length of a garment. Yeah. Always pull it out to the width that it needs to be on the instructions on the front cover. So you've got your size to fit, and then underneath that it'll say actual size. Right. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a flush here. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll stretch it out to it's half the size. Here, yeah. If that's any help. Thanks. <laughs> I think it's just my age. Um, so you pull it out to half the size. So if it says it was 30 inches, it came out. So you make sure you pull your back out to 15 inches before you start measuring the lengths. Right. Because a, a, a trick where a lot of people, they'll say the garment's short, and what they've done is they've left it on, if it's like this lady's garment, as you're knitting it, it'll really spread across two needles. If you try to measure it on one needle and, the, and the, it's all pushed yeah, together, okay. yeah. and then you measure it, it's going to measure longer than it is if you actually stretched yeah, it out to the side yes, and then measure it. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. I usually so, like pat it on the sofa and lay yeah. it out a bit. No, it, but I've, I've done it myself so many times mm. and then I, I keep myself at the end of it because I have made it short. So for the sake of it, I'd put two pins where your end of your welt is and I put some pins up the side making sure it was 15 inch all the way across before I measured the length. Yeah, because it is elongating. I'd because it does push that. it in Very good if, it's, if it's not across two needles. So that's That looks easy lo enough. I love it in, those, in that variegated colour. Because, I mean, all of them would work, wouldn't they? There's, uh, know, yes, they would. Um, yeah. I just thought I'd do it on a darker background on this one just well, to make it stand see, out so um, everybody could see it at home. Um, that's fab. Are you going to show us sewing up So, next? the other thing that I just thought may be of interest to people is making up. It's one thing that I'm always getting asked about is how to make up. Whenever we make up, we always make up from the front. Do you block? Always question? block. Absolutely. 100%. And how do you block? Talk to your so because everyone seems to have a slightly different method, so how do you do yeah, yours? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always been that you pin out the garment to the actual size. So like I was just saying about measuring the length, so you need to pin it out either end of your rib to the width that it needs to be. Mm. And you will follow that all the way up till you get to the armhole or the raglan shaping, or if it's to drop shoulder, right the way up, but always checking that you've got that measurement all the way yeah. across. Um, lots of pins, same with the sleeves, give it a good spray down. I I'll just use it. it. Yes, after I've pinned right. it, give it a really good... And what do you pin it damp to? Down. I, well, I've done it to all sorts. I've got a <laughs> pinning out board at home, but believe me, before today, it's been under my dining room table, on the carpet, it's been under the bed. <laughs> Wherever there's a flat surface, okay. that's all you need, a good flat surface. And then you just spray it with a little bit spray of water. Spray it, and then I get a, a tea towel or a sheet, an old sheet, which I will also damp down, so I just rinse mm. that under the tap, put it on, and then when I've put it on, I'll pat it to make sure right. that it's all damp. Leave it overnight, 24 hours, and I, honestly, I swear to you, it will come back, and your stitches, if they're slightly uneven, it will have evened them, evened so them out a lot So you leave the damp better. cloth on top yeah. of it as well, and is it dry yeah. by the next day? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So... That's, no, that's really useful, because I wet mine completely, but this seems, I'm liking this idea better. Yeah, I mean, I don't, the only thing I'd, the only thing that you just need to be careful if it's a yarn that you've not used before because I've been caught out with this is if it's a a blue or a red mm. or a darker colour 
make sure you put something else underneath it because sometimes the dye can come out of some fab on some, your some yarns yeah i'm not saying this yarn but yeah it has but happened to yes. me so just be careful of that because when someone goes what's yeah. that sleeve shape under the dye yeah. i've got no idea yeah um, so where that came from but i've always done it that way and okay. feel as though it's it just finishes the garment off. No, that's off. a really good tip because I know everyone has a slightly different way yeah. of doing it, but I'm sure you block loads and loads yes. of things. Yes, everything that we do. So all after these you've blocked, blocked it, out. then we do this. Is it sewing no, up? No, you sew up first. Right, all the sewing up. Yeah, I do the sewing up first. If I was doing something um, where it had a wavy edge, for example, I may pin the, se I may pin the pieces out individually. Right. because sometimes the ends can roll in and that can make it more difficult for you to make up especially if it's reverse stocking stitch because you you're doing the opposite you've got the reverse stocking stitch side showing to make it up which isn't as easy i don't find as it is if it's a stocking stitch side right. when you make up so on this one just two pieces we've had in the bobby excuse me <coughs> 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 sorry <laughs> you to talk it so much my voice has gone <laughs> <coughs> sorry don't worry we've so, only got a few minutes left you need to do sewing up <coughs> what we've done here <coughs> when you cast on always leave i'm so sorry um, always Kat, leave a good long thread so that you can use this for making up yeah so that you've not got too many ends sewn in and when you're picking up the first stitch to do what you should try always try and do is actually pick up into the cast on edge right so the very first and that way and then go back down the opposite side into the cast on edge and what you'll see here it gives you a very smooth you yeah, see okay. that that yeah, is, no, it's giving nice. you a level piece and what yeah. we're trying to create is the image that it's it's all one piece we haven't joined it together anyway it's all just mm. one piece so then we're going to pick up halfway into the next stitch thanks so much oh thank you oh it's nice and cold out the chiller as well thank you sorry <laughs> excuse me guys sorry <coughs> don't worry that's why i always have a bottle of water i get the same like i can't talk anymore i'm just not talking yeah. i'm not used to talking as well. <laughs> my husband will probably disagree with that but hey ho <laughs> I've asked you a lot of questions to be fair so and all we're doing it's what we call a mattress stitch and when you look at the actual stitch you've got like little ladders mm. on the reverse and what you're going to do is you're picking up in between so you can see you've got so I've got a nice straight edge stitch here and I'm going to have a nice straight edge stitch there so that's just it's in here I just tried to get onto the stocking stitch because that's easier to show you. Yeah, so you're kind of you're <coughs> sewing together both Excuse right me. sides up, not right sides facing at all, just right sides up. Yeah, so I've got the right side mm. of the garment looking at me, and I've just pulled that together. So you can now see that that almost looks the rest like two stitches coming mm. together like the rest of it. And all you're doing is basically picking up the two loops if you can see that two loops behind on one side and then the two loops on the corresponding side and you're literally just going to zigzag all the way up and that will give you a nice closed I'll just do a few so that I can show you how the zigzag works okay that's that's brilliant thank you so much okay? Jenny that's there we go. And then it's just the same all the way up? Yep, so you can see you've got your zigzag there and as you pull that tight, it closes that Perfect. seam. Perfect. That's great. Well, thank you so much. It's been lovely to, well, to see your demonstrations, <laughs> but really to talk through, you know, your inspiration behind thank the you. design and why you do it, because it makes it all come alive. Yeah, it's been so a pleasure. It's, it's been lovely. Well, thank you so no, much. thank you. Um, I'm just going to recap the book one more time. So 9 95 remember you get 18 patterns in here some of them for babies from newborn up to three years and they're the half for three years to 12 years but you've got lots in here they're all using double knit yarn now for 18 pounds for 9.95 that's fantastic value for money and um, you know you've met jenny you've met the design you've seen the inspiration behind them 
behind all of them. They are beautiful. So much in here. And remember, it's a coffee table book. And also, it's really easy to knit from because it opens flat, which is great. But that's, you know, one of the great things about West Yorkshire Spin. It's all about the quality. Um, if you love the this yarn, you love making, you love Jenny's designs, um, but you love crochet, kit for the full blanket, beautiful blanket. This is the best gift ever. Single figures of this here. You need to get this one checked out. Um, that's got everything in it, instructions, yarn, everything. All you need is a four mil crochet hook. Um, and it's machine washable, up to 40 degrees actually. So what a lovely thing to bring your new baby home from hospital with. They'll keep it forever as well, wouldn't they? Gorgeous. Um, right, so thank you for joining me on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane today. It's been a pleasure. Coming up tomorrow on Sewing Street is, who's presenting tomorrow, Hannah? John is in tomorrow. Um, and then he's on holiday, isn't he? Oh, he's on Wednesday, Thursday, and then he's on holiday. Oh, uh, I got confused. I thought he was on holiday on Wednesday. Um, so he's in tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. At 8 o'clock, he'll be in with Summer Sizzlers. Um, a whole selection of Summer Sizzling fabrics and all sorts. Barbecue fabrics as well. It's going to be warm this weekend. Let, let's, well, I think it is. 9 o'clock, fabric bundles. Um, 10 o'clock is Crafter's Companion with Becky. So she'll be in at 10. There'll be some deals, offers, fantastic demonstrations. You're going to love that one. 11 o'clock is Kits You'll Love. And then at 12 o'clock, Becky's back with Crafter's Companion, which is all about bag making, dyes and trims. <coughs> right. Um, very fine thing. And I started today with the most beautiful quilt, and I'm going to finish with it as well. We have just a couple of these left. This is a beautiful quilt. It is perfect for beginners. It will fit a double or a king size bed. Elsewhere, we have found it over 200 pounds. Some kits we found has been 245. When we started it, it was 109.99. Then we took 10 pounds off, 189.99. We've only got a few left. Um, so we just thought for anyone who hadn't watched at eight o'clock, we do have a few left. It features 50, 50 different Tula pink fa fabrics. It's easy. It's just make a pineapple lots of times. Absolutely beautiful. Planes um, and prints, but all from Tula. It is a gorgeous kit. So please, if you do want that, do check out. Right. So thank you so much for joining me today and all my fab guests. I will see you. I'm going to Glastonbury on Wednesday. Have I told you that? Go there on Wednesday. So I won't be here next Monday, well, but I will be here. Um, the Friday after that. So um, have a fab time over the next week. Happy knitting and crocheting. And I'll see you all next week. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day.